Oh, oh my god, I fell. Help. Can someone give me a hand? No. Welcome. Uh, did you lose did you? a leg? Oh, I can't no. help you. Ah. I can't help you. Ladies and oh, gentlemen, man. this is EFAP for when it's just like, wait, what the fuck? Why isn't it live? Nope. Yeah, I bet you'll be wondering that forever. What could possibly have happened? Who knows? It's a mystery. Yeah, but we're this still is here. EFAP oh, episode 270. <laughs> How oh. are you all? Or two eighty. It could be two eighty. Oh, or, yeah, it's episode two hundred and. Or maybe this anyway. is years from now. Maybe this is like a time travel extravaganza oh, adventure. Please yeah. check the video thumbnail for the accurate number. Don't. Yeah. So sometimes that's not even the way you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you hear this, I might be lost in 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 the in the mountains of Austria. Who knows? Please check in a year's time where the na number and name will probably be correct by then. I will have. Yeah. Uh, Noticed it, you know, and put it all right. But yeah, here we are. We're delving into the abyss that is just some Star Wars and Marvel stuff. You know how it is. Boy, hooray. Some, new, oh, oh. The, some of it's not even brand new, but a lot of it's brand new cringe. A lot of it is just updates and stuff in terms of the events, the happenings. And uh, we would like to express our perspectives on some of these things. You're not going to expect True. this adventure. That's why I'm just calling it an abyss because it's kind of hard to summarize. I don't know why we're here. It. Exactly. Rise doesn't even know Nobody what's going knows. on. Doesn't even know who I'm we are. Just, I don't know what's I'm going just on. Staring in the into the darkness and just waiting for something to grab me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I actually I don't know what's what. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I. I <laughs> who are I'm you people? <laughs> Someone help me. I've been kidnapped. I mean, I got into like the van. The though. man, the nice man, said that I would get to pet puppies and he'd have candy. And now he's making me watch Star <laughs> Wars and Marvel pet content. Pet puppies. That's what yeah. you get to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're we're just if our rags has been kidnapped, that means we can do both a John Wick and a Taken. <laughs> he's like, he brings you to the room, rags, and he's passionately arguing about Star Wars. And you're like, Wait, was, was there a puppy? And he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And he grabs the puppy and puts it down. He's like, yeah, but I just want to talk. Can we talk Star Wars? I just <laughs> yeah, like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say candy? And he's like, fuck yes, okay, but well, I need someone doesn't. to listen. I just need someone to listen. <laughs> so fucking greedy and self It's lonely in here. <laughs> <laughs> All I do is talk candy. about Marvel Nobody and Star Wars, and no one will hang out with me. No one likes me. Nobody likes me. They're gay. Anyway, Star Wars, they're not, they're very not gay. <laughs> <laughs> we are missing one person, apparently. Who's who's uh, dropping the ball here? Hmm? Hmm? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, One, two, three, it's four, always five. me. It's probably me. I didn't see wow. it. Wow. Oh, I'm here. Ruining it again. Well, first on the docket into this adventure would be, of course, the Acolyte trailer. It's released. Bum, be the bum, new bum, bum. Disney Plus Star Wars television show, of which I know mm. details, but not really a lot, honestly. I'm so excited to jump right into what's going to be an amazing show, which we will be doing. You'll get your... Uh, coverage on it but like who doesn't love a trailer reaction yes oh boy oh, we will, we'll discover all of the things about this this is the first <laughs> hey look at that fella <laughs> <laughs> look at him yeah, look, look at him. that fella oh my goodness <laughs> look at this guy's skeptical face <laughs> look at that look. face on his skin <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i don't look know at, i don't know about this <laughs> oh my goodness look at that little asian kid <laughs> I, also like the, I also like that alien on the left before you even continue at all, have you looked up Leslie Headler, the lady who makes the? Uh, who's oh yeah, the I know the bits. Oh, about Leslie yeah. Headler. That sounds like a that sounds like a pornographic actress name. Mm. Oh, Leslie like Headler, like the Bachelorette or something. I think like that's the biggest thing she's worked on. So I have no idea oh, why this. Uh, didn't she do this. that show with Natasha Lyonne, Russian Doll? I, I thought that was her big thing. I ain't never uh, seen that. Well, I she was know. also Harvey Weinstein's assistant. That's, that's one of those. Was... Yes, that's one of the bigger <laughs> achievements. Good for him. Oh. Why'd um, they make him such a goober? Why'd they do that? <laughs> Who, Leslie Headley? <laughs> Why did they no, make him no. such a goober? <laughs> This guy on the left. Designed after her in the same second. <laughs> this is an know. interesting opening frame for your yeah, trailer. It had, you know? it had yeah. me la I mean, you, that's a live reaction. I've never seen this before. I laughed out loud. I saw his face. I saw his, I saw his <laughs> sad <laughs> alien yeah, stare against his your black soul. eyes. Like, I, I really <laughs> want to know what you're looking at. Like, I can't wait. <laughs> you know, I like the, when, I like the pepper um, mill in the background as well. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Do you you guys know? Uh, you guys of course know James Cameron's uh, Cam James Cameron. Cameron's Avatar, right? Yeah, James, oh, Cameron, James Cameron's a good friend, bravest yeah. pioneer. James, James no budget so, too steep, no sea too deep. Who's that? It's him, James Cameron. Anyway, continue. I knew someone uh, would bite. <laughs> the Navi were very specifically 
designed to be appealing in their proportions on the face, uh-huh. the fact that they have eyebrows, they mm-hmm. have larger eyes, but the eyes aren't black. We have irises and pupils of different colors. They have a certain body type and a color of their skin. They have particular animal characteristics like a tail, and they got some kind of flumpy ears, and they have the elongated brow of the nose that kind of ends like a feline's on the face. There's a very, very specific way that they're designed to seem appealing to You're people. You're about to make fun of this poor little guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, the guy on the left. I'm going to make fun of the guy on the left now. Um... And I look at this and I'm like, oh wow, you, you went to all this work, you made this you made this little alien guy look at him. Um he's okay, he he's got a he's got really big shoulders that go up high. But I notice like well th- th- we have the black eyes, so we can't tell where he's looking, right? Th- there's no color to the eyes, it's pure black. Uh we have no eyebrows, right? So we're not gonna be able to do anything there. And and like I said, with the the, the huge head with the it just looks uh He's got a brow, know, it, like like not hair. He's got a brow that can... Yeah, he's he's got like uh he like has the, the Wallace and Gromit no, brow, you know, like has it's a brow, but it doesn't he, have the the hair. He on has it. a skeleton under his flesh. That's true. What are you? Um, but that's not, I mean, that's that's not, not what are you, do you? I have no what, idea. What are you talking about? Why? Is you okay? Are you malfunctioning? Do you understand like that you can, that, you can uh, present uh, emotion without eyebrow hair, but with brows? Humans can do that. Brow, yeah. Uh, exactly. you should give him eyebrows. It's like Mike Wazowski. Do yeah. He doesn't have hair on his eyebrow. Do, look, let's, his brow. let's look at the guy on the right. He's got eyebrows, and look at it. Look at his expression. Look at how disdainfully and uninterested he is at what's going on. Trying to, trying to move what is out going of on, talking about the alien bro over to the... What's going on? To the kid, huh? What? Well, no, yeah. what is going on? What are they... Are they in a They're learning about becoming learning? Jedi. Okay. I love Jedi yeah, so right. much. I, I, I want to see so more lightsabers, is, uh, of course. This is the first, like, major production in their new High Republic era, right? Before, uh, like, shortly, well, shortly before the prequels. Yeah. Like, yeah, shorter than the, the Old Republic. Yeah. Is much further, <laughs> it's like a thousand well, it's years like 100, 200, no, I think 100. it's a hundred or two hundred years, whereas the Old Republic is, you know, like, over a thousand years before... It's, I think it's a hundred years so that they can give us baby Palpatine in this uh, this movie. And a slightly younger looking Yoda. Yeah, yeah there's so many yeah. things they can play with. Ugh. Well, it's uh, it's kind of interesting to me because it feels like it's far enough back that you can go, yeah, look, new era, but it's going to be filled with prequel stuff. Whereas if you do the Old Republic, stuff. you're so much further back that you actually do have to start doing new things like wow well, obviously you can look at the uh the games but n- new things at least in terms of the like films and television shows is this Tell gonna me. have yoda in it maybe we don't know if oh, not right away people assume that they will though uh it well, is one yeah, of the I mean, it probably would that is one of the keys key to jangle it's a big old key and it's a it's a kind yeah, of a key that's know. not been jangled as much as the rest so yeah they haven't really touched him too much just in tlj he had that goofy scene where he broke I mean, all the laws like, of the universe but that's it <laughs> what, what is grogu if not a, a yoda key jangle though i mean you say that but that's just yeah, it's he, not he that thought, it's not yoda yeah he he's can't different talk backwards i like this guy already i hope he's a character well, I, I, think, I mean i, I think hope that the we get more they him. introduced him in mandalorian and had him be that species and not literally any other species in that galaxy was so people would be like oh my god baby yoda yeah and that's this, that's fine there, there, there's no not, story or top process behind that's not yoda jangling yoda weird. though that's uh, and of yeah. course if, you, if you're more cynical maybe. the reason why they made him a yoda yeah. uh like baby yoda is because it means he can be a baby basically forever which is exactly what they want because mm-hmm. Baby Yoda best... is like merchandising yeah, gold. Like the best thing about Baby Yoda, Yoda to me. The best mm. thing about Baby Yoda to me is that he does not one thing. Yeah, that's it. Is that he doesn't what? Guy? That he doesn't ruin Yoda. Like he's a separate thing. Like Baby Yoda's existence oh, doesn't yeah, damage yeah. Yoda's character to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, but this show might damage. <laughs> that's <his existence. laughs> that's kind of the Fuck coming him. with the course we'll of actually. <laughs> they might be him, looking yeah. at Yoda. They might be looking at Yoda, like, doing... They, they literally might be looking at Yoda right now. I wouldn't be surprised if they would. Well, I'm thinking, like, oh, gonna... uh, you poor soul. Yeah. <laughs> dragged <laughs> into <laughs> Disney Star Wars. We're, no, getting uh, a lot of, we're getting a lot of mileage out of the first second. Of what, was about what I was going to say is, yeah, we'll do... Frame. Since we're allowed to do literally anything, because they don't let us... They don't stop us with Disney. Do you want to go with, uh, we just let it play, and then we go through again with pausing, and so... Yeah. That seems yeah, like a good that. way to do it. Um, mm-hmm. Alrighty.
Let's enjoy. Oh my god. All right. Close your eyes. Okay. Then I can't see the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> your eyes might be better. Can deceive you. True. Oh, your face. <laughs> we must not trust them. Ah. Uh, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Not a great Tell midline. me what comes into your mind. Jeez. Look, aliens. Life. Look, aliens. Life. Yeah. Life. Life. Ooh. Up, 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 up. I see fire. I see Trinity. Oh, Trinity! Oh my God. <laughs> oh, bro, she's Just Trinity. use the force and kill her instantly. No. Gotta do matrix oh, okay. fighting. <laughs> oh. oh. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> None of this makes sense. That echo here. It's a Wookie. I sense the darkness. I'm always happy to see Wookies. Okay, yeah, this. What? <laughs> is this like a crouching tiger hidden dragon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, can horrible. you guys stop with the. <laughs> Whoa! That this looked bad. That did not look good. And who is allowed to use it? <gasps> Other, what is any... that? Ah, red lightsaber! Oh, red! Oh my god! It's red. Oh, well rip. Oh. All right. Well the credits. Uh. <laughs> Ow. Oh yes. Man. Two episode show... premiere. This show is going wow. to be nothing but we knew cringe. It. We what? Knew it was back to this image. <laughs> this was the best part. This, this guy back to the good was old the days. best part. It, it just was all downhill from skeptical face kid and beard over here. Like, yeah, it was just, I suppose what man. I find interesting about it is like that trailer is just no different than a lot of the trailers that they do for no. the shows that they throw yeah. out on Disney+. Plus. It's just like throw in a bunch of like, oh, look, big sweeping shots and then action and explosions with like the... The sort of generic trailer music. There you go. Are you hyped? Not really. I anyway, I, I, I was hearing though that this plots. one. I was hearing that this one wasn't a volume shoot, and they used all physical sets. But I, I doesn't didn't even. Tell. Yeah, that looks I, like a joke. Like, I, I, well, like they probably. The, I I imagine they definitely used a whole bunch of green screen. Like just because they said they're not using the volume doesn't mean that they aren't just using the green screen again. Maybe but, I can't yeah, believe it's like. Really, it, it's they signaled that they're not using it anymore when it was a big selling point for Mandalorian and a point of praise for Mandalorian of how good the uh, background was. I still remember looked. watching them behind the scenes of showing it off and being like, this is going to change yeah. the movie making forever, but now it's become embarrassing. It took that long. It looks like yeah. shit. It took like three years. It, it looks like shit Insane. when it's not used well. The Batman used the volume and it looked great. Yeah, and if they wanted to use the volume, it looked really good. If they all put that kind of effort in, they would still be able to use it as like a marketing boon, but they can't because they yeah, fucked definitely. it. Fucked if it they up. Completely. All, if they use CGI as a tool, like sparingly properly, how it should be, like they did in the 90s and like early 2000s, like we all talked about this type of shit, um, it wouldn't have the reputation that it has now. Like people just like, it's crazy. When they see a bad puppet, they don't really blame practical effects, but shitty CGI or. Yeah, I've been trying stuff. to. Sort of push uh -huh. back on that on different yeah. streams because it's uh I, I was there the mm. debate well, <laughs> but like that was that was that's actually one of my favorite debates that you've been a part of the um, the one on cgi because i just think it's important it's a really yeah, it important is. subject and to have that distinction there's so i many, remember um... being a I, I remember being a kid and seeing return of the jedi and being like what the fuck is that fucking the dad saying like singing see you know where they added the cgi to it right the well, fucking the... Alien at the end that's like singing at the in Return uh, of the, the Jedi. You mean? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the beginning, it's that Jabba's palace that they're singing. Yeah. They, at the end, they changed the Yub Nub song. Yub Nub <laughs> was crap. So the ending at the end was proper, but the be Yub the song Nub. at the beginning, I just remember. I'll never forget being so shocked seeing CGI for. Like, there will be Star Wars Yub. fans who are very upset for you saying Yub Nub is crap. <laughs> no, no, no. no the, it was the, the most yeah, literally yeah, the most bad. important change was that end music. Like Yub Nub is like ugh. yeah. Know, in any case, like a lot of the best the Ewoks have like an Ewok folk song. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whereas the other one was just kind of generic victory can... music. That wasn't particularly <laughs> Star Warsy. A lot of the Fuck best yep. CG stuff we still celebrate to this day. There's still stuff we're seeing yeah. that sometimes is yeah. so good you can't even tell. And then yep. the crazy stuff is when like almost every shot has it, but you just have no idea because there's touch-ups yeah, happening to constantly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, People don't talk about the CGI that's just, like, supplemental. And then, uh, like, they got away with, like, the, hiding under that umbrella. I bring up Baby Yoda all the fucking time, but some of the, like, the movements <laughs> in his in his animatronics are absolutely <laughs> embarrassing. Like, to the yeah, point where yeah. I feel like we could do better if we had the, like, you know, a figurine that we bought from Remember the local when, uh, It started when with the frog Nando, lady. That was frog uh, and, on wheels. And, uh, and Yoda, yeah. that, uh, when they were walking into the, um, the, the like, New Republic base <laughs> to meet with, uh, that guy, and then Yoda, mm -hmm. Baby Yoda was hovering over the ground with his legs. He was doing the Team the America. <laughs> Yeah. But that's the thing. I remember people saying, like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Just like a reference. Like, no, watch season one. They put effort in and they have given up at this point. They took yeah, it. They they give up. Up. Where, it like, doesn't where... matter. Stop it. So it's okay. They can yeah. do whatever they want. Where's the fobs? Where's the fobs at? They haven't mentioned yeah, those yeah, things whatever. in like but three seasons. That's they were a mistake. Hey, they need to drop that shit. <laughs> that does feel like the the sort of the waves of, I guess, the market versus the customers, so to speak. Like the pushback, the the tug of war of yeah, we'll just shove puppets into things because people don't like CG anymore. But then like they make loads of shit puppets, and then maybe someone does some great CG, and then you're like, oh, CG's not so bad. It like pushes back again. And I I wonder if that's just applicable to all things in filmmaking or media, even yeah, or just everything. Um, I like how it uh, I like how it distracts from the conversation, which is like, yeah, but what about the fucking writing? Yeah, right? <laughs> like, whether or not these yeah. Marvel films have bad CGI, yeah, they do. But if they were written well, it w nobody would care as much. No, M Mala, yeah. remember, you remember how Gendry disappeared for all the seasons <laughs> and they came the rowing, yeah, and, like became a thing. And then when Davos actually made a rowing joke. That's when I was like one of the first times ever getting pulled out of Game of Thrones, seeing like the memes being incorporated into the show. Like that was definitely intentional. You remember oh yeah, uh, a yeah. lot of the things that killed Game of Thrones were bad writing, but like you could definitely argue that they were too aware of what Game of Thrones yep. was to the world, yep. which is just inevitable yep. the more it goes on. Which of course, Star yeah, Wars is very aware of what it is to the world, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. like, or what, what it is to specific portions of uh, people who are interested in well, Star Wars. This rather. trailer's already illustrated that, right? It's like, look at all those lightsabers. Yeah. It's like, oh, for fuck's yeah. sake. Look at them go. Look yeah. at all the yeah. yeah. getting lightsabers. put on the lightsabers. I was like, wow. Oh, that's when you see them now. Like, There'll you be just... so many lightsaber battles when they used to be one a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Roll my eyes every time I see like, them now. They've just ruined that episode of no consequence where they fight and then they just result in a stalemate where nobody gets anywhere when it used to be that if the fight happened that somebody was going to win or lose and it would matter. Yeah, or they, or they oh, get me? stabbed and it doesn't matter it's, because it's they a, just healed in two days. It's a glow yeah. stick now with no consequences and no significance and like... It just sucks that I'm seeing lightsabers and I you feel nothing. I just I legit just roll my eyes. I don't even feel nothing. I feel negative feelings now when I see <laughs> lightsabers. Yeah. Yeah. I feel negative too. I know yeah. that it's going to be used as a as a crutch, and the the force is going to be used extremely inconsistently. The lightsabers are gonna. It's going to be the same thing. You're going to be where it's going to be a show where we constantly wonder why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? How come they're not all mm -hmm. doing this? Why is this fight even happening? One of them has telekinesis and a sword that cuts through anything. Why are we bothering? Uh, that's going to be the show. That's going to be the whole show. Probably, yeah. because obviously this is just a trailer, but um, the I don't know if you guys saw conversations happening before the trailer released, but uh, they released a teaser poster that uh, was like <laughs> the, 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 the lightsaber with blood looking like the, uh, the lightsaber. And I saw people saying things like, oh, ooh, exciting, and then comparisons to Andor. Now, having seen the trailer, I know that we haven't seen a whole bunch of the story play out, but it don't give me Andor production vibes. No. It gives me the production vibes of all the other ones. Yeah, of Ahsoka, other ones. of Mando, of Book of Boba Fett, and of Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's the vibe you get from the production uh, that is present in this trailer. Yes. For the uh, the poster gag, I saw one that was a Shiba Inu's butt and like a, a round streak. And yeah. Someone, like the comment someone posted wow. was, "Damn it, Regs." Oh, oh <laughs> my God. I don't appreciate that. Well, uh, I, I think the they even edited it so it said, "In an age of light, a darkness slides." <laughs> <laughs> you know this uh, this poster would have been much better without the text. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Without any of the text. Um, for me, or the first thing I was struck by was not the jokes everyone's been making. It was more so just, "Good God, you think you're so edgy, don't you? Look yeah. at you." Well, oh, it's gonna, be edgy. but the show's not gonna be edgy. It's gonna, it's gonna be fake edgy. No, it's it'll not, be, it's not gonna it'll be, be like edgy. Echo again. Yeah, it'll be Disney. Oh, edgy. Yeah, it'll be it'll Disney be, edgy. Not Echo, please. And, uh, it won't we're, actually we're, be edgy. We were, were talking about the veneer of edgy at certain angles, maybe in a certain kind of light, but it will never actually be edgy. 
we we were I, I talking about though, um, oh, ahead, the Mark. the blood the blood in the poster though doesn't that kind of step on the whole other oh, the lightsabers they cauterize everything instantly there's no blood i think yeah. it's, you know, uh, probably well um, uh in episode four they cut the guy's arm oh, off I, in the cantina I, there was blood I know, but that's, that's been the line for why why isn't Sabine dead and things like that. It's like, well, it's a lightsaber, it cauterizes the, everything. The, whether or not it cauterized her fucking organs is not really <laughs> relevant. <laughs> I think she's Trust dying me, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, um, believe me, I've had this we, argument. We, we were <laughs> talking a um, lot when Ahsoka came out. We've mentioned how the lightsabers have been ruined, but like another thing was like the forest. And I remember it was Rags. Right, it was something you said like months ago or maybe even a year ago. I just I lose track of this oh. at this point. Oh. Um the last time, like, may the force be with us was meaningful, and like you said, the the Akbar scene in uh, Return of the Jedi, like when the force. Oh be yeah, with us. yeah. Just like I remember that one, like it hits you. Who gives a fuck about that phrase now? The force oh, yeah. is you just now, ruined. Is the uh, lightsaber now? It's just the it's thing you say. Yeah, because yeah. I remember you bringing that up specifically. I'm like, God damn it, he's right. Like I remember because I remember really liking. That's my favorite Akbar scene for a character who doesn't have a lot of moments. Yeah. Just, I, re I just remember like go into a the big battle of that, da, 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 yeah. da, you know, behind the delivery one. of it. It was like just perfect. And in, in in one, of the, uh, one of Han Solo's most important lines that like right before Luke leaves for the Death Star battle, he says, hey, Luke, may the force be with you. And because he's the non-believer, him saying that mm -hmm. was like kind of cool, you know. And Luke yeah. is Catholic, yeah, we said, and also uh, with you. And, yeah. and <laughs> that's, 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 say, let us off the uh, lightsabers. We left them up to the Lord. That's why the I'm saying um, at this point, like yep. it's not even it's mm. it's now just like vague, generic, nebulous, like oh my god, uh, spiritual like stuff that isn't really coherent. <laughs> The very last time you actually guys, this conversation made me um, remind me of it. I think it was Han Solo in TFA. Him saying that's not how the Force works is like I think that's the last like endearing like Force mention. Which is like, a fun line a movie. to use. Yeah, the last time they had. Some, yeah, the the last. <laughs> <laughs> really rich considering what. Was yeah, it's really rich. Exactly. I've like, seen people uh, argue by the way them. that this very like yeah okay fine maybe if it does cauterize but what if you would hit someone with the hilt. You know, then they bleed, and then you drag it across the floor. There you go. <laughs> like, well, why would you do that? Like, well, well the, the funny thing to me is just like we never needed to justify a picture no. on a poster. I, you know, it's supposed to be evocative, or whatever. I just to be able to just can't get past the cringiness of it because because people will say like, oh, Kenobi, remember he hit Vader in the face with his uh. hilt in uh, the Kenobi show, and it's like that's not canon. <laughs> <laughs> that's not canon. <laughs> we yeah, can't fucking no count that. <laughs> the stupid hill thing. Oh, Columbia everything about that fight me. is insane. The anime moment. So we, All right, back to the trailer. To the <laughs> yeah. Fine. So yeah, now we're in the mode of uh, pause at will. If you have a comment. Yeah. yeah. Close your eyes. Mm hmm. <laughs> your this eyes. This guy shitty advice. Can deceive you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means that this show is going to be full of, I have Lies. a feeling, and then something plot important happens, or mm. I sense something, and then a thing There's going to well, be a, a good I, guy I who turns out to be a bad guess, guy. I was going to say, Maybe. my guess at the most good faith interpretation of what this would mean in terms of theme is, see, the galaxy may seem peaceful when you look at it, but, but there's it actually... Ain't. A tension, a darkness rising, a Ooh. dark night rising, if you will. Oh my goodness. Someone fired oh, my baby space. Darth Maul, let's go. No. <laughs> He's got okay, gag goo goo, but he has like a little double edged lightsaber. Double edged fucking pass. I wonder, how the, I wonder how the adult <laughs> aliens look like. Is that, is that a young separatist in the back left? <laughs> like, what I hope so. <laughs> no, that's uh that's uh the guy from the 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 fella in the first frame. Yeah, that's the guy from Frame One. He can one. also be oh, a young separatist, yeah, though. Okay, I saw the. He could thing. be. That's yeah. true. But I, I, I thought you were saying it because the silhouette. No, the thing at the top of his head. I forgot. I didn't realize. I can see it now. I didn't realize. No, that's that's a head pepper head. grinder from. Uh, from that's right. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, pepper. Oh, oh, that was uh, Tony Stark's. Uh, well, uh, yeah. So that line is stupid. We must, we must not, not trust, trust our him. eyes. No, you know yeah, what? I think I will, down. honestly. Yeah, yeah. I don't. That's where he my lost eyes, me. Like, bro. My eyes are pretty good. <laughs> they, they get me around pretty well. Yeah, like, how do you think I got well, here, dude? It, it is like, funny, too, if they were like, eyes. trust what you feel. It's like, more than what I see? I don't know. More like, than what I see? Man. I don't know that bad. I mean, <laughs> hey, look, all right? Like, Anakin trusted what he thought he felt, and look at where that got him. <laughs> <laughs> we must not trust them. Yeah, that's a stupid line. Uh, let's Location. see. Looks pretty. Yeah, that, yeah. Pretty, looks doesn't pretty look very tangible. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks very fake. Look like it's totally horseshit. Uh, 
there's a lady. She's I'm sure she's quite a badass. The pip well, you can tell head. here that the set doesn't extend beyond that wire fence there. Right. That's as yeah. far as it goes. You that sometimes wonder if they can walk more than ten steps at any time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Star Wars. Star Wars. I, uh, I don't know about this color grading either. It reminds me of Ahsoka, either. where the color grading was pretty Ugh. flat a lot of the time. Yeah. That's what I assume you meant okay. about how it looks like the other shows. doesn't look like it's got Andor. Level and or um, no. I saw people sharing. I think the first minute, and I was like, "Oh man, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's the, beautiful. Um, it, it the, looks great." The the the, uh, the escape scene was the last time I've had an exciting like escape ship proper like ship scene in Star Wars. Like the, uh, the Eye of Aldani sequence. Oh man, it was fantastic. Like compared to just seeing yeah, stormtroopers bump into shit and the Tie Fighter bullshit, I'm, I've been so sick of that through all the shows. But that was refreshing. Wow. <laughs> and from the very first disarm, when Andor like lured those guys closer to him and like acted like he's just gonna take it in my pocket, and then actually took the time to disarm them properly. It just yeah. Well, yeah and let's not forget as well, like the on. shipment moving inside the ship, they hadn't been able to strap down. It like fucking paralyzes someone because it hits them against mm -hmm. the wall. It's yeah, like, that's still yeah, some realistic shit right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know what I was mean, happening as I was watching Andor. I'm like, this kept like, what is this? The, Disney made us? I'm, I'm still confused by Andor. <laughs> we it's, still uh, have to wait for it is a stunning, stunning thing that actually managed to get created under the, uh, I, just, under the I don't Disney get it. Star Wars paradigm. <laughs> and this one will not be that. This will well, be dude, what no, I wanted. This is shit. If Andor Season 2 <laughs> does eventually come out, it'll be a little different this time because of the discussion about Andor Season 1 yep. having become a thing the of, influence. like, all of the fuckers, like, all the Andor fans keep telling everyone to watch it that it's good. Like, when we get around to a new set of Andor episodes, like, that'll be an interesting time because... Everyone will be yes. it'll be into the story. Everyone will be paying a little more attention, possibly, because of the reputation mm -hmm. of the first season and the fact that it's gonna come to an end, line up with Rogue One. Got mm -hmm. all like you know, it's probably gonna have some big scenes in it. Might just imagine the trailer has Vader in it. Imagine. Oh my god, oh, it's gonna be it's yeah. gonna be red yeah. and it's gonna Vader. Someone, oh yeah, someone will have a vision. They'll have a vision well, of the future and they'll hear Darth <laughs> Vader's breathing and No, I'm not memeing about oh, this. I'm talking god. about how Vader is relevant to the story of Andor, yeah, that he could yeah, very actually, well be in the story. Right. He would probably be utilized in a way that's not cringe, and if people enjoy it, it'll be really weird because that's it. Season two's done. That's yep, it, yeah. the team that made more, it are complete. A, like I was, I was talking about what's going to be. Like. We were talking about Andor this whole time. God, I, mean, I, mean, I was doing my thing. And I was it's a bit of inside. In, Andor's like insight into what we should have got in Star Wars. A real like seeing the Empire like not be complete useless morons. Like seeing yeah, the, the scary the Empire. World. Good. In a it broader just, sense, what I would say about Andor is that. Andor is like the only one of these shows that justifies its existence as a television show because it makes use of being long form. Yeah. Whereas when you look at stuff like Mando, a lot of the episodes don't amount to anything. They're just nothing little side happened. missions that uh, accomplish nothing. Yeah, uh, there's a lot filler. of bad pacing generous. generally in all the other ones. Most seasons, like there's like nothing has happened in like three seasons of that show. I think it's being generous. Uh, like, well, it's, it's just we've had like a season worth of content in, in in three seasons. It's it's I the only episodes that, that the only... matter are the um the open the you know the premiere and the finale. Whereas with something yeah, like yeah. Uh, Andor, there's a clear structure that plays out over the course of multiple episodes that justifies yeah. its existence as a long form show. And my guess would be that this show will be yet another one of them that fucks that one up. Mm -hmm. I'm just it's even worth, justifying um, being a television show. It's worth saying, because I think a lot of people would be like, nothing happens, don't they, like, rescue Mandalore or whatever? And it's like, oh yeah, so it's it's like the worst of both worlds, as in, there's huge stretches of nothing where they have no story to tell, and then there's just bursts of hyper story, and it's like, wow, we just did that mm -hmm. in two episodes, okay. There's maybe a season worth of content in three seasons of Mando. Like, it's, it's a three, average, three and a half yeah. seasons. Yeah, three um, and a half seasons if you include well, Boba Fett. These shows <laughs> often that. seem annoyed with themselves that they have to tell like three times or four times the story that they have the length for. Like like Boba Fett, Which right? That, funny when that was embarrassing. The seasons are short. They're short. You know, eight episode season, that's fucking short. Shows mm. used to be twenty two episode seasons, Nothing all right? <laughs> I can't figure out what to do with eight episodes. That's crazy. I mean, we saw, I saw what Guy Ritchie did with eight episodes over the past weekend, and yeah, it's that's a you good can make amount something. Of you can do a whole eight episodes. Well, it, it can. Can. I mean, unforgettable. The key and is just like, do you have a story to tell? <laughs> and yeah. a lot of these people don't. They're handed the opportunity that they're like, fuck, uh, uh, I don't know, a bunch a Vespa gang comes to town and they're stealing no. water. And that—that's actually what I'm going to say. Funny enough, I think the filler episode problem is 
it seems like it should be the reasons for it should be reversed because I think it's actually because things like the Boba Fett show was apparently adapted from being a Boba Fett movie and then they decided to rework it, it into was a TV show. So yeah, was exactly. Yeah. So I think that the filler episode problem isn't necessarily that it's like, well, they don't really know what story they're telling, so they throw in filler. <laughs> I think it's they had two, two hours of story that they wanted to tell and then they couldn't think of any way to support or strengthen that story with a longer format. So they're just like... Uh, fucking filler episodes. Just treat it like it's Naruto or something. You know? I suppose it's oh, weird too God. because what I think Give is the PTSD. best episode of Doctor Who, yeah. which is a huge selection of episodes, is what would be considered a filler. It's uh, self-contained. Wow. And so it's like, wait, so what does that mean then? It's just like, it just, just means that... Is it the girl in the fireplace? No, Midnight. And it's... Uh... The... Okay, fair enough. The show Mark mentioned has probably some of the worst, longest, most worthless seasons of fillers. Like in mm -hmm. all of humanity <laughs> it's pretty bad so just everyone who knows the concept of fillers that show in particular well and that's the thing though like if we were dealing with a show that was in its 27th season i'd be like oh, i mean yeah <laughs> but like <laughs> a lot of these are supposed to be flagships that are going to bring all new viewers to into the world of star wars as opposed to slowly killing it in its sleep it's just like jeez but hey maybe this one will be different maybe um sure. I, I pulled it back a bit just to sort of get a look at this our little Look at our little town sequence, and I'm like, oh, th this looks like every this like this looks looks that looks like all the others. There's just no identity to anything. It's all just people kind of randomly talking, people in a town walking on their unpaved dirt gravelly road. I'm like, oh, that okay, man's right. wearing a bathrobe. All right, Boba this here, <laughs> costume. It's like, yeah. it's you do wonder if they have a um, a set of three costume stations, and they like pick one random item from each of the three, and then put them on. <laughs> They're like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> kind of. Oh, sorry, not many aliens here. Or men. Yeah. You have the yeah, one guy, guy in the straight in the middle. Yeah. Go. Is there a guy yeah. in the middle? Could also be a mask. I don't know. Woman, man, woman, it could be a mask. woman. Yeah, we, we don't know about that one. Woman, woman. Yeah, that could be some kind of demon. Who knows? <laughs> 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 I just want to see more aliens. Yeah. Tell me what comes into your mind. Ah, oh, this guy again. There's, There's aliens. aliens. Yeah, There's those some aliens. Well. I enjoyed them for yeah. a few seconds there. Yeah. And having them the noodles. Look at him. Look at that guy in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, He's having a... his noodles. He's having a, a grand machine. old day. Yeah. <laughs> Life. It's yeah, they have access to droids and aliens, and they still can't tell a fucking interesting story. When those things are just like you get, just they're free. Like everybody loves them. There's so many. There, I wish so many we you can do with them. Had, man, I wish we had. Like, do we even have one like Star Wars film or television show where the main character is an alien? I don't know uh, and and I mean, so. I mean, like alien, alien. Like, I'll grant. Like, I I'm cool with you know when you have like Ahsoka or the Twi'leks and stuff like that. But I mean, like a really sort of like non-humanoid looking. Yeah, alien. with the goober language and everything. They don't exactly. commit. Exactly. They don't commit ever. We talked about this in the Commando yeah, season three coverage. Scene. We want to see that guy yeah. on the train and his story. The big guy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Let's see what he's up to. The, big Yeti, man. the guy in the I, elevator. I think... The that closest Mando... you get to an alien protagonist, though, are Hera from uh, Rebels and Ahsoka. That's what I'm saying. Is you, like you get humanoids, humanoids. Stuff, basically. They never come like Arrival is a stupid movie, but I respect the shit out of it for just the concept of the aliens, like keeping me intrigued. You know, they look like, weird. They, they look like weird it. and they don't speak English. Yeah, they're not just humans wearing just hats. Yes. <laughs> That's officially what Ahsoka is to me. Balance. <laughs> balance. I see fire. Oh, you know what? Oh, no, she sees just... bad things. You know, he said, "Close wolf. your eyes." Look at this poor fucker over here. <laughs> I don't have eyelids. <laughs> he's got wow. he's got black eyes too. <laughs> he can't do nothing. <laughs> he also <laughs> he oh also God. has completely black eyeballs, like the other alien did. Are humans <laughs> the weird ones? He should have put his hands in front of his eyes. <laughs> 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 Look at him. Oh, I hope nobody notices. <laughs> That's his body language right now. Dude, yeah, I, so I love I love the body language because it is just like yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna sit, I guess. I can't do this. <laughs> like, he's the only one uh, who looks tense and that's why. He, he doesn't look he doesn't look tense. He doesn't look like anything. He does. Oh, I can I'm, I'm sensing does. a sense of tension. I oh, know. you can see so your eyes and you can sense it. Exactly. Because oh, you know the guy on the back on the left, he's full asleep, you can tell. Yeah, he's like oh, he's yeah. all in on this. <laughs> He's nodding over. <laughs> like, uh, I think we gotta close our eyes again. 
I think <laughs> he's he's smug about the fact he's like hey, a teacher told me to close my eyes and I'm not doing it, but he knows I can't do it, so he's not gonna say shit. <laughs> but you know the alien on the left was like, I actually have eyelids, you don't. <laughs> he's you like, know, oh, yeah, that's like, that that great. That makes fun of him for his fun of him having no eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> I see fire. Wow. Uh-huh. So yeah, so what, what, when 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 did, when was Jedi Fu invented? Like why know. why is that a thing now? Kasi? Well, because what's interesting is that you don't see that in any of the Star Wars or the prequels before. You usually just see a brawl type thing if ever they come yeah. to blows. It's usually just like wild punching and nothing crazy. You'll get some people who are much better at it. But the thing about this as uh, Rags highlighted is like so where's the force? And you could try and get away with being like they're both force users, so it cancels out. But then she uses the force on it. And you're like, oh, well, yeah, it's like, okay. Oh, okay. Mm, they also, if um, this is going to be another show with incredibly incompetent assassins who oh, uh, are sure. going to use the most ridiculous, stupid methods possible for killing Jedi. Probably. Are you going to lie in wait in an ambush? Maybe set up a bomb, some kind of a trap, poison food. Are you going to do whatever? Are you going to have multiple people shooting at the same time from different locations? Because you know it's a Jedi, right? You know this person means business. Or are you going to try and get really close and stab them with a knife and engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with this telekinetic lightsaber wielder? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You're the, you're the assassin here. Are you going to wear also, these, yeah, uh, It looks like she has a lightsaber, too. Yeah, so. Are you yeah, going to wear these right, right. right. I would say... Of the two who are going to win, it's probably going to be Trinity because she's got her hair tied back. Meanwhile, the lady on the <laughs> left has her hair over the place getting in her eyes. Well, what you yep. don't stand for is that this lady can whip her hair back and forth and whip it into <laughs> Trinity's eyes, blinding her. So. Oh, it's a weapon. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's right. That yeah. I just want one of those assassins to roll up with a shotgun and just fucking blast him in the face. <laughs> yeah, the one shotgun we saw, Michael Bean in Mando Season 2, remember? We were like, oh my That's god, true, yeah. a live-action yeah. shotgun. Yeah, exactly, yeah, we've talked about it. We have the, the tri-shot blasters that the, uh, mm -hmm. that the the super battle droids have. Yep. I've always assumed that was for killing Jedi. Yeah, the technology. You shoot three at once, so you, you can't are, block man. it with a, bla uh, with a lightsaber. But what about just, with just normal projectile weapons at all or just what about you shotguns in Star Wars, projectile weapons if you like, want to kill I a mean, jedi yeah, there are weapons that will do a very good job yeah all these things are i don't know about i don't know about this choreography either like no. there's like, something about it like the big know, spin that she, does, she turns around there's a lot of is look really long are they in a different spot there's this a lot of variables right. that we don't have, and I feel like this is going to get a lot worse when we get them. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. going to be really well, weird. Do we get a different a, scene? I think it's a result of we want this to kind of look like a Matrix fight, but we only have this much space. So you got to do some spins. Ultra is way older. <laughs> it is funny how it evokes that immediately. It's like, well, yeah, you got Trinity, so like, yeah. what, what do you think yeah. we're going to think? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, she was really great in the, you know, the last thing. What was the last yeah, thing she was in? Now. I forget. Uh, uh, the world was, you mentioned Trinity, and she was, yeah, she was, there was very a prominent Matrix, in uh, Matrix, uh, Matrix, Matrix Resurrections. Oh, for fuck's what, what was it called? Regurgitation, <laughs> son. Totally forget about that uh, movie, huh? Yeah, yeah I was really peaceful bad. for a moment there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where they, where, they, where they showed that Trinity is the one, even though the entire point point of Matrix was that she wasn't the one she let's was not, gonna fall in let's love just with not the one. That, yeah, that's, good god that fucking movie man yeah. I think I did a forge on that on my own <laughs> whoa <laughs> man this uh, uh, I don't know what this distorted like this weird uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. you're showing yeah. me don't clown trust your eyes with, don't you can't show me that. a clown lady with knives and be like no one would fight with their dreads though it's stupid like, what's it's supposed just, to be it's <laughs> seemingly what the the like oh that's impressive thing about this seems to be the force push part it's like oh we've seen that yeah <laughs> like, this, this, is is you learn, this is what you learn on the first day there's like hi everyone welcome to jedi school <laughs> yeah today we're going to be teaching you force push force push, push. <laughs> it's really really easy force yeah. push 
You have really some kids. You have some force kids. Push before you learn force pull. <laughs> yeah, where we're teaching yep, you yep. push in case you fuck up. At least you're pushing things away from you. We'll mm. do pull tomorrow once you've mastered the basics. But yeah, this some trailer is like, eh, eh, the, eh, the force, yep. eh, how about that? Look at that. We've got yeah. some kids in the class that already like practiced at home. Light? Like, they already know. So like, yeah, I know it works. Yeah, I figured right. this out on my own. He's like, well, we'll let all yeah, the people who can't easy. close their eyes, we'll let them catch up. <sighs> <laughs> the one alien in the back's like, hey, come on, man. <laughs> eyes are so dry. Someone is killing Jedi. Oh no. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, not again. <laughs> Man. <laughs> not again. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Wait, can you go? Oh, was that that same that lady trying to stab on. another one? And did. Yeah, it looked like, like it, she, she's probably getting around killing a bunch of people, I guess. Hang, hang, hang on, I want to see something. The Killmonger. It just stopped. I think I think there was like a force thing happening. Yeah, the guy is probably using the force on her. Yeah. Or he's got a force field around him. Because for a second I was like, did she just stab nothing and just went to the floor? Oh, I'll be honest, <laughs> his stab motion is not looking great in general. Like, if there was no. nothing stopping her, does she, is she reaching yeah. him? Didn't look like it. It didn't look like she was. No. no they do that a lot in like these. Like, yeah, I yeah. get stopped, so it doesn't really matter where I'm headed. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, that is girl from um, Logan. That's uh, yeah. Oh. No. And, oh. Oh, uh, I didn't recognize her. Okay. I, I saw like a her. quote that said the reason is they wanted to see. Is it X twenty three? Is the code name? X twenty three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. It could have been Leslie Hamilton. It was just like I just want to see X twenty three holding a lightsaber. Oh like, fuck wow. you. Yeah, uh, okay. it's just I don't wow. know why you wouldn't take the opportunity to say like, oh, she was a fantastic actress and I saw a lot of potential. <laughs> yeah. Instead, you're like, I just want to see her with a lightsaber. <laughs> I want my, I want to my fan I want to take... fiction to be in my movie. Wait, who is my watching one, one of the writers or directors? Like that. I can try and find Hedlund. it. I assume it was Leslie Hedlund. Yeah, she's such a. Is that that's all you have to say about one of your own characters? And cost. Like, imagine how okay. she feels about that. Like, oh, that's how you feel about me? Like, not my performance or my, anything I'm bringing to the table for this. No, role. you are a lightsaber no, receptacle. This Shut fetish you have to see me with a lightsaber. Like, like, what the fuck is this? Well, doesn't even call her by my name. The, the like, Madam Web writer had a similar thing about why they cast the movie as like being a, a prequel, like a period piece in 2003. And the writer's <laughs> first answer was, well, we wanted to have Dakota Johnson in the movie. And I was like, uh -huh. why did you say Dakota? Dakota, sorry, I, I yeah, messed up. Brain flism. Brain flism. Yeah, cool. uh, uh, the quote is from Leslie Hanland, uh, and then someone like Daphne Keene, I'd love so much in Logan that I wrote this character and I was like, you know what would be great? I'd love to see X-23 with a lightsaber. How do we make that happen? Mm -hmm. Man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, call, her, call her agent. I mean, mm -hmm. so, all right. Best yeah. of luck with this show, yeah. Gotta cast it doesn't somebody. make sense. He's so right. Gosh. It doesn't make sense. None of this makes None sense. None of it. It's all, it's all insane all madness. Apart. All of this. Oh, is this Loki? Or is... We're going to make sense. <laughs> yeah, I they promise. did this already. Loki trust me. Yeah, yeah, trust me. This will all make sense. Yeah. <laughs> this will all make sense. <laughs> 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 that doesn't look real at all. That no, it looks really bad. Real. Why? They're all the lined up to exists. the kind of forest. That forest looks exists. Exists. But not a space not, forest. Not a space forest, no. Yeah. No, that's true. Not a space forest with the space trees. Look at those space trees. Look at this that... frame. Oh, is that? Look at this frame. Is that Plo Koon or whatever his name is? Po Kloon? Is it Po Kloon oh, or Plo Koon? Maybe. I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Wait, how old Kloon is he then? They don't, they I, don't, yeah, I don't know they don't call him Master Koon in the, uh, <laughs> in the movies. Oh, no. Yeah. But, uh... Coon with a K. I'm a little struck. Maybe maybe this will be a hot take. A I'm a little oh, struck no. with it how is, boring with everyone dresses. Yeah, it's K. Yeah, K, K, mm -hmm. K. Yeah, the costume. Well, <laughs> shit, that's what I was saying. This reminds me of like. If someone said, like, this is how Jedi dress, I'd be like, uh, I mean, fine. I don't know, man. It would be nice if one of them, before. just fucking one of them, was like, nah, I want to wear my own shit. Yeah. This would have been the time to actually experiment with that, you know? Like, this would be an opportunity to see, like, renegade Jedis and different, different like, interpretations of what a Jedi is. This would be the time to yeah, do it. Like, I, I want to see, like, ten Quagons. You know, where's all the gray boys? I'm all like, for unifying all because... aspects of culture. It's just that this is a little, this is a little too unified. <laughs> like, it's a point. Yeah. So, yeah. are, I noticed yeah. that we don't have many aliens on our team of heroes. We got Fuck two. No. Got, like, yeah, you know. Well, and one of them is, like, alien and one of them is just... Well, just, One yeah, of them is human, basically uh, human asterisk. So. Basically the same mm -hmm. as Ahsoka or, uh, or Hera. 
I it's like it's all because um, where's, the, where's the little like Yoda equivalent guy? Not necessarily a Yoda guy. Where's he? Yeah, where's the arrival? The where's, where's Dexter Jetster? Let's get him <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. That's a we General Grievous the without the bionics. Yeah, the Jedi are not as uh, the Covenant. Hmm? Is the only is reason that they wear like the brown robes is because Obi Wan wore them on Tatooine, and we that, have to harken that, back? Well, that's that the that theory. Yeah, that, that it's all it's that's all that. sprouted from that. Because no. Luke Skywalker never wore that stuff. Really, I mean, he I wore mean, he, he wore the black suit. He wore the black suit. The black George robe, made black. it so the prequels made it so that this is what you wear when you're a Jedi. And now, yeah, that yeah. sort of became unfortunately just. The Jedi, what you just sort of wear, and it's like, oh, it's so. Like I guess it just struck me, as, it, it's, particularly in this image, it just struck me as a bit boring. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, when you put They've so many of them together them in the time. same place. Yeah. Oh, look at the Wookiee. I like the braid on the Wookiee. Like, is he a Jedi? Though. I'm always happy to see a Wookiee. It would be no, cool if he was a Jedi. He's an alien. Yeah. He's an alien, be so he's not going to be a Jedi. Will they actually do something with a Wookiee character this time? Like, oh, maybe. Uh, Don't hold out hope, though. He's mind tricking him. Or something. Oh. What happens? That's, that's, not that's a oh, Squid Game God. guy, right? It, oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Squid Game. Is that him? Squid it's Game. John, yeah. John Squid Game. John Squid Game. <laughs> no, no John Squid Game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, he was fucking great in that show, so I'm a lot for one hour. Fair enough. You know. I sensed darkness. Kill now. Oh, no. You know, I if Freaky darkness. was making his trailer, and I was like, what dialogue lines you put in? He's like, I'm going to keep I sensed darkness. I'd be like, maybe Why? go, I'll though. Go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, it's so fucking so boring. I, I Listen, guys, I don't think you... Trailers, I think I can make a better one than this. Like, this I... is trash. I think you guys need to remember, we all know this, in an age of light, a darkness rises. This Ooh, is all in line. With, it's all consistent, you know? <sighs> There's going to be a bad thing that's going to happen. Mm. Look at the flippy do that's coming up, though. Yeah, flippy do. Cool. Whoa. Oh, wow. Whoa. Why did you do that? Yeah. Are you trying to kick a Jedi? Are you retarded? Yeah, yeah so this, this lady is just going around trying to kill everybody, huh? Why She's just throwing head kicks like right. throughout this whole trailer. Like, what is this? Is, is, is that this? supposed to be the force? Is she using Maybe. the force there to kick upwards, or is this a weird stylistic kung fu? He's an alien thing? that can do this. Oh, oh they do. When ah. he blocked it. Oh, you know, oh, an in an age of light. Of light. Yeah, I'm bringing that shit up on Sunday, Metal. <laughs> Which, by the way, I haven't gotten a sense of this being an age of light. I'll take your word for it. The fuck is all this crouching tiger fuckery? Like, <laughs> So off putting. Ooh, she opened the door with the force. Open the door with the force. <laughs> that seems right. strange. Is it, Isn't that the lady the door? door that's automatic. Yeah. Oh, they're not automatic. Oh, is, she doing, is she doing the thing we all did when we were five in supermarkets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what, <wait. laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She pressed the button and then she did the thing. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's not actually a Jedi. Cool. She's just. She's it. Oh, she's, she's yeah. not actually a Jedi. No, she's oh, a janitor. The they're like, Janice, you don't have the force. Stop trying to convince people. <laughs> oh, my God. I can, yeah, what I can do with the door. That is Clean up that puke. What are we paying you for? <laughs> well, here, I'll open the door for you as well. Ooh, see? And this is why you pause, because I couldn't have possibly noticed that the first time around. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, look, he is a Jedi. Look, hey, he is. He's maybe. He, he, but he could just be some guide or whatever, temporarily. Wait a second. Uh, I, 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 have a, a robe. I have an issue here. Um, oh. If this Wookiee is wearing clothes, then the implication <laughs> is all the other Wookiees are naked, yeah. Is that... Uh, it's like culture. Rag, is this this is indicative of the fucking problem. How are we gonna know he's a Jedi? Well, he wears exactly the same thing as every oh other Jedi. Yeah, Even look at the colors. Yeah. Than every other if, and it, I would, if he was, if there's ever gonna be someone to like make it, uh, like have a different style in terms of a different. You're fucking Wookiee, you think? Jedi. Yeah. Look, yeah, he would be the guy. Back, like, look this, at the. Why not only the cloak and not the gi? I was about to say, Switch why not a cloak? <laughs> yeah. Look at the three black-robed people in the back. They have bows. They have arrows. The guards and bows. Have clearly have brought these fellas in. This is, I don't know. This is Star I don't know Wars. What it is, they have like, bows and why arrows. Why does the ground not look real in this shot? Because, because it's, it's all gravel. gravel. <laughs> they don't. They don't have paved roads in any city. It reminds me of that. It's I'm all like shitty like, gravel. Reminds me of that story in uh, Quantum Mania where they held. said they needed to deliver like sand or whatever, and they got poo. <laughs> the whole set, <laughs> just pour all out and the whole set stank. <laughs> Special delivery from the Kenobi show. We got a lot of poop for you. Guys you guys gotta pretend as though they say poop. 
<laughs> it's like a lot of pe it's like the 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 paid shills. It's like, can you pretend this isn't shit? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, you're really asking a lot this time. Yeah, what are we'll you gonna do you with this? Some exposure. Yes, we're still doing the ground grapple scene today. Imagine it's at one point the shill think... types were like, can you just make something good? That would be so much easier for us because we would, you know, just they... saying. They wave like, their no. hand, but it's all good. <laughs> you know, us Anakin hard carried the Ahsoka show, just like all in terms of like key jangling. The fucking show was oh, yeah. garbage. But what are they gonna do mm. with this? Like, there's just I'm just looking at this is fuck like every uh, frame is just dry and boring. Like we're looking, we're discussing the shoot the fucking the poop flow. Uh, Wookiees, no, the Wookiee's cloak and his outfit choice because there's nothing else to discuss. The Skyrim I, I, in the back. It's just I it is going to be Yoda, or or maybe it would be that they'll do they'll visit a location that we've seen in Star Wars before, but that we've never they'll seen. They'll definitely be on. playing with going to be Mr. Keanu Reeves. Reeves. I would have thought the um <laughs> the final trailer would have a Yoda line at the end of it. That would be the thing to do, I right? Thought, maybe, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This would be the time. Watch the show, you will. Just no, the fact that they make you think they're not. Like they'll usually they're usually uh, pretty open with that, so it makes me think that they're not going to do to it. Disney I would. <laughs> How can we think the chances are that? Whoa, oh, oh, darkness, darkness rises. rises. Oh no! Did you know oh, darkness is a bad thing? Whoa! Whoa. Uh, wow! <laughs> More of this. Once again, yeah. can we clearly see her arm is as extended as it's going to get? <laughs> she yeah, didn't I'm stop shit. It was she would have just missed. She would have just completely. Like, yeah. Why did they do that? Like they don't I understand they're, physics. I, I think they're hoping that the shallow focus and the long lens will make it look like it's much closer than it is. But they messed it up by leaving daylight between the knife and the palm. That's what. Yeah. That's actually the blessing that they give before they write a show. They <laughs> say, "May your lens be long and your focus be shallow." You know, I was thinking about um, that little what looked like a mind trick at one point. Wouldn't it be funny? I guess it's being like a parody, but you wave your hand with the command doesn't work, then you wave it again, but there's money in your hand this time, and then they take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that works. What about old Benjamin over here? Master Benjamin. This is so oh, exciting. Her head was so excited. Oh no, that's Wakanda. Wakanada. Wakanda. That, that looks, looks terrible. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure what's that going on there. Really, it's not just the really um, bad. not just the it's it's Definitely the animation on it's it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it looks like it doesn't look too right. Stiff. Look, yeah. the, did you see the way it skid? Really like, what weird. was that? Yeah, yeah. That ain't oh, right. Geez. This I don't is about right. power. And who is allowed to um, use it? I, 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 I don't know, man. I don't know about like. Like this could be a set from Ahsoka. Because if right. she's meant to be the the assassin that's going around, it's like, why are you dressing so conspicuously? <laughs> yeah, you why should dress you like a Jedi. Why don't you tie your hair back? Like, this is just stupid. Because man. it looks cool, okay? Because Like, Mahler, imagine going from the killer to fucking this <laughs> stupid idiot here. <laughs> can't her, tie your fucking hair. Like, I can't, like, I can't take this character seriously Oh, dude, all. how cool would it be to have someone who was, like, hyper-competent in the Star Wars universe as a bounty hunter? I say that... Like, you know, we well, don't have... Yeah, like, like, what do you mean, bro, Mando? They had Mando <laughs> and Boba Fett to do that with. You're never going to see that. Yeah, yeah they, if they it's gone to the point... Opportunities, it's fucked. It's gone to the point where back in the day, people would have arguments about, like, how obviously Boba's cooler than Django. But these days, like, it's embarrassing to pick Boba. It's like, no, it's got to be Django now. You have to resurrect right. Django imagine. and then make a show with We him. have to imagine now, because it got cancelled, and, and maybe it wouldn't have even been this game... But just the bounty hunter game where you're playing as a Mandalorian and, you know, you get, like, the file and it's your target is a Force user. And then you have a whole bunch of options that you can choose between of how you're going to deal with a Force user compared to if they were, like, a battle droid or if they were a Wookiee or what kind of weapons they may or may not have or what kind of environment you're going to be in. Like, are you yep. looking for them in a city like Coruscant? Uh, or are you looking for them in like a more rural area and then having to incorporate all of the and you could obviously like show that in game. a TV show as well Bounty pretty much week. yeah but but it would so never happen it's never game. gonna happen Mando was meant to be that and it fucking wasn't and that makes me really sad it was a lot oh my god damn Bounty Hunter <laughs> game oh my space Bounty Hunter game because it. people know the world building and all the creatures please. and like the potential droids and things that they could do with it they have all these elements to play with and it's such a simple premise Bounty Hunting just Figure, there's so many different templates they could work with yeah. from all the different shows in the years. From uh, it's just it's just and there's it's no easy to throw in variables if they're yes. different aliens mm -hmm. or whether they need to be yes. dead or alive or if there's some other thing How like they... intel or gold or something that you need to acquire on the mission as well. 
Uh, oh man, and revealing how the, these aliens like work, like how you actually killed them because they have different anatomy. Like I remember um, when Ahsoka spent like twelve hours underwater talking to Anakin. I was thinking, <laughs> man, this this could have been such a good opportunity to re, re, be, like learn something about her species that she can breathe underwater. That's like the one save that would have made that scene like one percent less stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they could have yeah, done if something. You, I'll give one percent. Well, like if, yeah. if you had to, when choosing between equipment that will be useful in the terrain or not, whether that. That yeah. opens up options to you or closes them off. Or, and you could also do the cool thing that Thief did, where you have incomplete information about the location that you're going to, mm -hmm. where it's like actually hand drawn and, and, and there's an in universe explanation of they weren't able to scope out this area. So I got to go in there in the dark and kind of figure it out for myself. Those sorts of things. But nope. I'd watch, I'd watch all those, but we get. Mm -hmm. Watch or play those, but instead we got this. Here we ah! go. Yeah, this is really cool. Uh, it's the helmet is popped. Nah, I don't oh, know what it is. Look at so... these frames. Like, look at the color grading. What? What's the deal? It's so muddy. I feel like it's dimmed down, so the lights are already... even brighter. It, it, it's a lack it of contrast. Like the I don't know what the, the deal, or a lack there. of saturation. Well, why didn't they go into just like the woods at night and then light it really no, neat and have it no, spooky? Because I can no tell by generous. the ground. You could look at the ground. Yeah, I shouldn't be able indoors. to look at the ground and know that it's not actually the woods. You know what? Um, this this kind yeah. of like nighttime shooting is actually worse than um. In presuming this is at night, this is worse than when they just color correct it to blue, but it's really bright. It's clearly yeah. not dark. <laughs> it's very bright, but Those yet just, uh, uh, desaturated. It's disappointing that they're still playing with this shit as though the audience, this is all we need sort of thing. And it's just like, this just feels yeah. confirmation from Ahsoka, right? That's what the video yeah. I made was all about. Mm -hmm. This is what this is what Star Wars is. They save yeah, this up. for the big hook of the season. A yeah. fucking flying a lightsaber. lightsaber. A red oh, lightsaber. Wow. A lightsaber. Oh, I saw the so lightsaber annoying. and it was red. Ooh, There's already so people, red. I guarantee it, who are like, well, this looks more interesting than Andor. That didn't even have a lightsaber in it. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100% of those people today. exist. And what, what frustrates it. me about Andor too, for all the people who say it's boring, like it, it, it Andor has so, lit by far the best action scenes of any of the Disney Star Wars shows. Any yes, of them. if you yeah. call them that, yeah. Just him, just disarming the guy, like I mentioned, the fight out, the shootout in Episode Three, the whole heist with the 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 the, um, the, the eye of the whatever I can't even remember. The eye of Aldani. Um, yeah, and ev just the the crazy um, the, the all the tension of the the jail escape. All of those are way better than watching Ahsoka like fucking just tap droids with her lightsaber and Sabine just. Well, be on one top. of the big things, it's not just that the sequences themselves are well crafted. It's also that when you have two episodes of build up, two and a half episodes yes. of build up to these yes. climaxes, the, when the, the action people... actually does start and when mm -hmm. the consequences of that fighting start to materialize, it feels yes. way more impactful. The uh, the big they reveal of the it. scary it's enemy for them at the end of Ahsoka, zombies, literally the possibly yeah. worst enemy for a lightsaber ever. I, like, it, it, you just. Mm -hmm. The they were already not zombies. A problem to lightsabers <laughs> at just, all. And that was already this, after this, this, an immense amount of stupid action scenes. Just yeah. act, two action scenes per episode seems to be the mandate. Yeah, and my guess mm -hmm. would be that this show will be no different. The bait with this seems to be that they're like, yeah, but this ain't just a Sith. This is a really powerful one. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. what, more pow okay, more powerful this than This isn't one of the lame ones. So it's, <laughs> it's just boring, isn't it? Because like, this is all they know how to do. This is all they ever know how to do. Yeah. Can't tell any and other and stories. Been, and, and maybe they're right because Andor was a story that was not that, and people were like, "eh." <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's it's not fair at all. Like Andor did two episodes of build up, so you actually like. Well, one of the more common there. things I get seen from people who even admit that it's good say, "Yeah, but it's not Star Wars." Ugh. What yeah, does that mean? That. What is Star well, Wars? Well, this, to you? as you can see, is Star it's... Wars because yeah. ah. <sighs> that's go. Star yeah. Wars. No, that's a lightsaber. That's it. Fuck everyone who says that. have a lightsaber, it's not Star Wars. That, uh, that no. is a common, common no. thing I've run into on, on the Twitters. Yep. There's barely any I'll lightsabers ask. in A New Hope. Like, you see Luke flicking around one time, you have the one fight with, like, Vader and, and, yeah, and I was one. Like, it's I was about to say, people are, you know, insane about lightsabers. And I'm like, well, man, remember happened, in the original it? trilogy when we had the four minutes of lightsaber? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You count it up, it's like a couple seconds. It's crazy. People, trilogy. people get fucked up with that type of, sh type of shit. Like, another example is uh, Lecter. Lecter, everyone thinks of Lecter when they think of Silence of the Lambs. He's in, like, like 20 minutes or something. Yeah, but like, that's like because his performance short. is amazing. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it, it doesn't take a lot 
for something to be significant, like whether it's like just performance or like the impact of the lightsaber. But to say that this is all that Star Wars is, like what the fuck, you're ruining it. Well, I'm sure you're they wouldn't it. say it's okay, all, so, but they would say it's know? certainly. Uh, or this is like the essential. pinnacle of Star Wars. No, I, it's I, essential. I mean, it's it's that that they would say it's out. essential. Yeah. Maybe Clone when, Wars was the thing that that did it. To, well, to I'm willing to Star agree Wars that it's fans. the prequels that kind of did it. Remember the, yeah. the the big first battle on Geonosis? You have like what fifty lightsabers against mm. an army of droids, or something like that. And it's like shit. That's a lot of lightsabers. I think Plinkett said something like that. He was like, they've they've like power leveled and overstocked the shit out of lightsabers to the point where people are gonna think that that's what Star Wars is. Which you know, there, there's compliments I would pay to the execution in the prequels, but that. There's character stuff in the prequels. They're actually trying to tell yeah. a story in the prequels. It's, Here, I, you know, I, it's hard. yet to be seen. We'll have to find out. Maybe this character is holding the the red. It's red, by the way. Red. Uh, maybe they'll be a great character. Nah. Mm. Nah. Wouldn't it, <laughs> I mean, wouldn't it be neat it... if, uh, if in this Jedi show we had a lot of... It's not going to happen. They're going to be used. It's gonna, they're going to be everywhere all the time. They're going to be used frivolously and extensively. But... If you had a show about Jedi and lightsabers were actually treated with a great deal of reverence and respect and discretion, where they would not pull out their lightsabers unless it was absolutely necessary, mm -hmm. they wouldn't just light them so that, oh, look at the glow. Yes. They wouldn't just bring them out and pull them out. But it was actually like, yeah, sure, they're Jedi. Yeah. But it's not like, like police don't go around just pulling their guns out all the time for every issue. You know, it's like when the gun comes out, it's a serious, uh, it's a serious deal. When you said so that, a Jedi uses it as a light it. in Rise of Skywalker. The sheriff in No Country for Old Men, the, the sheriff in No Country for Old Men, like how he doesn't even want to pull his gun out. That's how Jedi should approach the matter. Even more yeah. so because they uh, had the force. Uh, lost resort, you know? you know? like, yeah, lost it should resort. be treated that way. But instead, yeah, like it's this how many issues? It's just this like, oh, look at me. It's they've they've ruined this weapon, which is probably the most iconic weapon in all of fiction. But it's just yeah, imagine if. Destroyed. Imagine if modern police officers each had like, okay, you're a police officer now. You pass a test, uh, all right. Uh, you fuck those donuts up. So now you can use telekinesis. That's just the thing. You can use telekinesis yeah. pretty much with with, with yeah. not really that much restrictions, really, because uh, modern Star Wars. So uh, it, I guess you have a lightsaber if you really need it. But we just have telekinesis. You can go around and protect peace of the galaxy with just using that. Um, and and that would that would be such a huge tool that you have at your arsenal and in that that you could employ in all these ways. They're gonna be whipping those things out every time, so we could see the glow, so we could see the noise. Oh look, that one's yellow. Ooh, like, oh, uh, mm. There's not gonna be any reverence or any sort of um, like tension when they come out. Remember the stormtroopers? It's just gonna be lightsabers everywhere all the time. Where people do the claim of like, yeah, we can't portray soldiers as competent now because it's been too long of not that. And it's in the same vein with the lightsabers. It's like you can, and if you do, no, people no, no, will no. notice and be happy. <laughs> And or prove that you can. Yeah, they, you can. They, they suddenly portrayed the empire as competent. It's like, oh, there we go. That's how it always should be. You, you forget all of about it. Correct. If they do well, the same I, thing with stormtroopers, nobody would mind. We would just Star forget. Wars having, that stupid Star Wars era. having so many different branches and canons over the years, like with the EU and everything, I think it's trained people to once they get something good, they're okay with just ignoring anything that was bad. And I think that, like, yeah, there's there's a degree to that that's pretty cool. I mean. You know, like, like if a new Star Wars video game came out that was awesome, I, I'd probably be pretty up for playing it. What yeah, would it course. take? Like, a, a, like in terms of the yeah. the movies, like, what would it take? Like, a, a proper trilogy, like proper, re like the kind of. I need a few really good. That's the theory, yeah, it would be between two and three, and they have to be, you know, between good and great. I don't think they can sell it good. Yeah. It has to be a substantial, yeah, improvement. It has to be something that appeals to a to hell of a lot of people and different groups of people. You need to get the OT people being like, wow, that was pretty good. And the prequel people and the Disney people and the random spatterings of people who are vaguely interested in film. The people who are interested in the Clone Wars, people who are interested in fucking Acolyte. <laughs> if you can get all of them. That's the thing. You, you, yeah, need, you need more so normies because um, at the, the Star Wars can't sustain itself with these massive $200 million productions with you can't sustain that without like normie film goers, TV watchers. You have to create this, this stuff isn't going to work they, they, for. They pay the bills. You can't just throw this bills. stuff in and then it will work. Well, the you're not establishing for want. yourself any kind of legacy. You're not. You're not building up something for later. You're just. It's well, all just kind of fast attrition, food. right? You. They've lost a lot of people gradually over the years to the point that. Star Wars is not a massive cultural, like a major culturally significant event. A new Star Wars movie comes out, and it's not going to be like that important compared yeah. to 
when no Phantom way. Menace came out and TFA came out. Those were mm-hmm. fucking huge. Yeah. They had uh, the Rogue One like um, dealership sponsorship thing with um, the cars. I can't remember, but I just remember like, wow, you're really confident that you're going to actually be have a brand of car that's named after your movie, like uh, the Rogue One with the Nissan. And, oh, um, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. I just remember like, so, wow, like you the, must be um, really confident. The Madam Copter, I think I right? Remember, I think I remember saying <laughs> that. You're going to say it's like the Modern Warfare 3 Jeeps. Oh, how, yeah. I how is Madam Copter not funnier than that, though? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Madam Copter is the Madam Copter is what she uses yeah. to get to the crime scenes or whatever. They're like, but we can just swing around through the city on our webs. And she's like, no. And get she's in, just insisting get they get on there that she's the pilot, even though she's blind. They're like, can you? I don't know. <laughs> like, I can feel it. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. I was in Halo. And then they drive off in the Madam Copter and it has that big, awkward picture of her on the side with her hand up. <laughs> <That'd be laughs> great. The craziest thing about Madam Web, like just to follow out of that, is like the other two girls just did they even get like a single like Twitter follower? Like I saw Sw- Sydney Sweetie's like tits okay. and Dakota just took up all the attention. Like the other two girls, <laughs> they yeah, turned a loss into a win, let's be honest. Like. Yeah, those two, yeah, legendary <laughs> comeback. Legendary. Like this should be studied how she handled this situation. But those other two girls must be pissed, like, hello. Like <laughs> we were in two, we were in the oh, shit I movie. Think, uh, too. I guess because yeah. they they figured that their strategy is just like just move on. We got other yeah, things. They fucked up. up. They fucked Don't up. Don't pretend the movie was actually awesome and that people are just mean. No. Yeah. People are mean. Say they hate women. The tit strategy is like well. most glorious PR. The greatest PR I've ever. Well, let me see. Let me see the other lightsabers. Let's oh. see them all. Yeah, yeah let's oh. look at there's them. There's one, a blue one, and oh, a green one, blue. and the yellow one. Yeah, ones. green and yellow. Oh, look at them go. He used a mega force power and yeah. pushed them all back. Wow. <laughs> yeah. He's so oh, wow. powerful. Just, wow. another, just another power. This, this kind of um, the this screenshot I've got, it may be different for you guys, but because the blur kind of is perfect for me. It's just this blur of force powers, lightsabers, and Jedi. Yeah. That's yeah. what Star Wars <laughs> is. It's smoke, robes, yeah. and lightsabers. Yeah, and it's like, so fucked yeah. up. Big blender of iconography that is dampened completely and just substanceless. Like, yay. Mm-hmm. This brought me right Look back to the Kenobi. Lights. The, Ken- the Kenobi vs. Vader fight in, in the yeah, show. Just the whole anime yeah. influence. Definitely is a, dude, um, like... a which way Western man, right? And this, this, and then the other one is Luthen's speech. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that shit is so good. Uh, or Kino's. Yeah, Prison well, break. And it, like I, I like I've actually used this response when people are like, "Yeah, Andor is actually not good. It sucks too." And I'm just like, I don't believe that you've watched Andor through the end of the prison arc and that you think it's the same as all of Disney Star Wars. No way. I don't even know how you can get to the end of Episode One and think that it's the same as all yeah, the, uh, even, the rest even, of Disney Star Wars. Even if you don't like it, I feel like you should have you should be able to understand why other people like it. Like it shouldn't mm-hmm. be. You can clearly see the difference in quality there. Yeah, and the then they say, and you should understand why people like Ahsoka. You should understand. I do, but I do. I, yeah, I <laughs> do. Vader, he made her. Yeah, what no, do you yeah. mean? I know exactly why. He made her. That's was in true. It. You did Vader. Yeah. I know exactly yeah. why. He made her. <laughs> Didn't you see Sabine on the motorcycle? That's why. I mean, come on. Yeah, pretty, pretty high. Oh, oh, look. Halo. Oh, my God. Uh, the ring. What they is it supposed to be? What's why is the O like that? I don't know. Uh, I'm sure it's we'll cool. Out. Is it because are they? Oh, is that going to be a reference to the weird doohickey thingamajiggy that they're trying to find? Is there like a, a plot device object? Uh, that's a good point. That they they need to get to find something or do something that the will let someone win. Ring. The ring. Yeah, force circle. ring. Yeah. Oh. Disney, what oh, are you doing, wow. man? <laughs> Little sounds being like, go get him in there. That's what they're doing. The like the chances sound. are the Trinity is going to be Palpatine's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Not zero. Not zero. <laughs> Trinity Palpatine. Maybe Keanu Anything Reeves is a Sith. That. He's Anything the Sith that's attacking them. See, the, so, the uh, crazy thing, though, is that means it's Ray's great, great, great grandmother. Oh, is this the picture Ooh. they chose for the thumbnail? Oh. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's the fucking Just boring. remind me of this stupid character, thank you. Yep. And now we can bring in this, as is relevant. What's the point of hiding your face if you wear your hair like that? The Acolyte trailer <laughs> currently has more dislikes than likes, which, uh, just not, so, it's I, just the I state of Star Wars fans. Surprising. I don't yeah. find that even surprising. What, yeah, what about this would, like, motivate any degree of excitement, especially in the context of all the disappointment? 
it's just it's just sludge. It's just Jedi lightsaber it's sludge. sludge. I think everybody it's can see sludge. that now. It looks it's terrible. It's the Disney sludge. Remember, um, it reminds people of the other terrible Star Wars projects and Marvel. This might be the worst one. Remember the attitude of uh, give it time and people will appreciate the sequels. Like we've it's Where been are those time. People at? It's been, time. It's, well, been I mean, time. it's been a lot of time, right? Like, they're, they're living in it's caves nearly somewhere. a decade. We're, we're coming up to a decade for TFA. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> well, I mean, it's Fucking not hell. just the the sequel trilogy movies. It's it's every show and all that stuff that's happened in between. Nothing has stuck. Nothing has had oh, any lasting impact. Well, it's it's just all just relentless diarrhea, and like everybody has noticed. Well, well, maybe this. You, well, maybe this show will be explosive diarrhea, so that'll be exciting. What are you saying, Mark? Even when something does stick, it seems like they drive it into the ground immediately. Like if it, if it seems like like mm -hmm. they've got a bit of momentum towards fixing Star Wars, quote quote, or like whatever you want to call it, they they don't utilize that that positive good uh, the positive will, like the goodwill towards those projects correctly, and then they end up just having those go to shit and piling a bunch of new ones on top of it. You it's, just described it's a bizarre strategy. You just described Mandal season one, which brought them a break for a second with the fan yeah. base because there was potential and there. It. And then they butchered and they it. And like it. Yeah. we have to milk every fucking thing out of this show right yeah. now. Yeah, Don't even go um, the you no is. Fuck the about the two fuck everything. forms of Bring coke. Soap in. Uh, the comparison to the OT where they say, yeah, I mean, Empire was received badly at first, or the comparison to the prequels where, yeah, they, they, they were hated for a while, but then they were loved. Like, that's the fate for the sequels, as opposed to the reality is, it's like, it killed the fan base, it's splitting it all up, it's destroying their ability to make money. The OT basically created that situation, and the prequels continued it. You can't deny that about either era. Yep. Star Wars mm. toys well, yeah, sales were doing you're just point. fine during the prequels. Like there were Star Wars toys everywhere, and they were the, constantly being sold out. The there were prequels, people them down and stuff. I don't hear about that ever happening for the. The sequels. prequels was massive for Star Wars. A whole like my whole neighborhood. I remember like being introduced to it. Everyone's playing with lightsabers. I had the Darth Maul one. Every like it just it was a wave. It was a whole it, it, like nobody could say that that did not happen. There's no Kylo's running around. Like it's just it's not it's not the same thing. It's bullshit. <laughs> And so, yeah, <laughs> I just see this as just evidence of the coming doom. And, I, and you know, I just, I want to see him put out a movie. Do it, cowards. Put out a Star Wars movie. That would be... Yeah, that's, that's terrifying. Are, are, they, are, they still, are they still doing the, the Mando movie thingy? Yeah, I think they have two. Yeah, Mando and Grogu? Mando and Rey. And Rey. Oh, well, yeah. than that, Mando, Mando and Grogu one is well. one movie, and then Rey is the other one. And the uh, the the origin of the Jedi uh, one, James Mangold. But we'll see about that one. No, I gotta say, they must be uh, they must be like really nervous if they're starting to get like more dislikes and likes on the trailers for their new stuff. Oh yeah, it never bodes well. Okay. It never bodes well. Well, the Marvels had a lot more dislikes and likes. Look at how that turned well, I mean, out. For um, I'm gonna put it out there. I don't know if you guys would agree, but if this trailer had come out exactly the same after Rogue One came out, I feel like people would be fine with it. They'd be like, yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll see. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, I think so. They would make all the excuses in the world to be optimistic, but there's no reason to be optimistic now. We're all just like, this really looks... That's why I was saying with Ahsoka, at least you have Ahsoka fans and people who liked Rebels or whatever the hell that shit was. And the Anakin key jangling. There's that. But this as... So, what is this? Like, there's like genuinely nothing here. And to be clear like, about it... I was gonna say, like, not everyone will be happy with it, but the vast majority, like, the Star Wars fandom would be generally fine. Like, it, it would be no controversy surrounding the trailer for Acolyte, which there already is. It's just a mm -hmm. teaser. Mm -hmm. um, this is also shared as well, which I think is fascinating. The uh, Leslie Hedlund explains why one writer in the writers' room for the Acolyte had never watched Star Wars. Quote, I was like, I want you to be questioning narrative. I don't want myself, who's a lifelong fan, to just be relaying on, uh, relying on particular references in order to create emotional beats. I want those emotional beats to be earned and checked by someone that isn't super familiar with it. As much as like, there's a logic that's kind yeah. of there, it's like, do you really think this is the time to hire people who don't even know what Star Wars is? No. I, mm -hmm. No, not at all. So maybe hire people this. who like, know Star Wars, but also know their it's just, shit. It's been tested... Panel. So many times, and and the thing is, it's like, what you think it could never work? It's like, no, it probably could, but like we've tried this so, too many times. <laughs> like, stop. Let's try. Let's try fans. Like, you know, people who are familiar. And it's, it's funny, right? Because we covered that video once where it was it was said as a criticism to Tony Gilroy that he was using Wikipedia when he was making Andor, uh, Wikipedia, sorry, which was to me just like 
really strong evidence of someone who gives a shit to get things right. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. I'd be I mean, using Wikipedia as well, more than likely. We said it a lot of times. Make sure if, any of a, if any of us would get, like, here, make this movie about this franchise, it's like, oh, can you give me, like, seven <laughs> months so I can read up on everything that exists? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to hire someone All the who... rewatches. Like, you need yeah. to To hire someone who doesn't even know what Star Wars is, or rather has never seen it, that means they obviously don't like it, because and watched it so just like you yeah. want someone to be invested in the care of, of the franchise right and it's like yeah but i want i want someone there to know whether or not the stories are working irrelevant of mm -hmm. star wars and i should be like since when was that even a requirement for writing scripts like i need you to be writing this irrelevant of like the ip and the continuity i need to know what work like could you not yeah, tell because anyway if you, because if you have someone in there that that doesn't know anything about star wars and there's like a story beat that does only makes sense if you have any like some kind of basic background information they're probably going to ask a lot of things and <clears throat> if you got those things wrong and they probably can't check that there's like what, what's the point even like you can't even well that's the thing also, it's a complete gamble whether actually... or not they're even a good writer obviously yeah, we don't obviously. usually win in that department with these things no and, and they're not actually gonna be like, oh yeah, that's a good point, we'll change our story and our choreography to reflect with this uh, issue that you raised regarding telekinesis yeah. and force and stuff like that. It's oh. not gonna happen. No. It's all just, it's, it's all horseshit. They're not gonna change anything. As far it's, as like the, the... it's like the historical um, the history advisors they bring on a show, and it's just for, it, it, it doesn't mean anything, they won't do anything. And they're not it's gonna gonna sometimes you wonder if it's just so that they could say that. Like, we had a yeah, historical advisor. Just, we had an we, advisor. We did this so that we can make a tweet, and that was it. We're not actually going to listen to them, because the... Yeah, it's a good aesthetic, but they don't really care. Anything. As far as the outsider perspective thing goes in the writing room, like, do, do they really assume that this is going to be anybody's first Star Wars experience? That, like, this is going to be the thing that gets them into Star Wars? And that they're going to be confused if they don't understand what a Jedi is, so they have to make sure that they explain it properly? Like, I just, I feel like marketing this to new fans who don't like Star Wars now is strange. Like, because, I mean, really, the only people that are going to watch this are people who are already watching Disney Star Wars shows and enjoying them, I'm imagining, right? They need to capture people who like Star Wars. They don't need to try and cast their net so wide that they get the non-Star Wars fans. They need to desperately try and yeah, claw back say... all of the people who really liked Star Wars. It's like a trust issue point. right now. It's not even, like, qual it would, quality would help, but it's just, like, they just don't trust you to make things well. Uh, yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. And can you blame them? Can no. you fucking blame them after the last decade? Yeah, you somehow just consistently made shitty TV shows and movies. It's just uh, how how do you keep making terrible shows? What's the process yeah. over there that keeps leading to this? So the next uh, the next thing I want to show you guys now because that's that's like that's all the context for the acolyte trailer, and we will obviously delve back into it when it arrives. But I wanted to uh, make you aware. I've spoken to, I think, Fringin' Rags before about this. Something I've noticed on Twitter. It's a, it's the return of an old friend of ours. We once covered uh -oh. a channel on, on EFAP who, I can't remember if he was reviewing, like, Rise of Skywalker or something, but he was pointing. Do you remember this? He was quite the pointer. I do. Oh, I do remember I, the pointing man. I remember I the pointing rem man. <laughs> I only know the meme. I don't think I was on that EFAP. My he goodness. He would boy. just, he would point. He was just, he was He'd relentless point in pointing. He'd and, point uh, up. He'd point down. Yo, He'd look point at left. chat. They're pointing He'd everywhere point right. right now. I can feel it in my scrot. Yeah. What, what he They're said. Pointing. The um, scrot, scrot poke, yeah. The that's, how, poke. That's, that's how we'll never forget Brock. He's got, he's like, uh, that's his influence on yeah. Mel right there. But I'm going to bring up, um, <laughs> I'd see his, his tweets every once in a while, and I would be like, oh, wow, that, that, that tweet's managed to go far and wide. And I know that guy, because I remember the, the name Suggs, and I was like, that's, uh, but but I'd read the tweets and be like, I don't remember. Do, do people talk like that? I just, whatever. And then I see another one, and I'd be like, again, and another one. And I think it was once I saw a third one, I, I highlighted this. Like I said, it was, it was to one of you guys at some point, possibly both, as being like, I don't think he's real anymore. <laughs> like I'm not even <laughs> sure he's a person. Well, you remember he he raised quite a he had a lot of problems. To, he, he raised a stink on Twitter because I suggested that he take his jacket off while indoors. And he <laughs> took it as this well, horrific, so terrible thing that was said about him. Recently, he uh, people were like making period jokes about that poster, and I think he put funny, out yeah. a rage farming tweet, but it backfired. He His tweet says, um, if your first thought after seeing the poster for the Acolyte is to make jokes at the expense of women, 
then you should have thought oh, you have course. much more deep rooted issues than just disliking Star Wars projects. Cringe. The pointy guy posted that I, I, because I saw that tweet and I was like, "Wow, that's cringe." Yeah, that was him. He says, "Absolute cringe and outright sickening." <laughs> I want to ask crazy sickening. people like that sometimes. Like, <laughs> it's I a fucking ask joke. Them. Like, are you not allowed to criticize a woman or, like, have an issue with something? Oh, well, so this... Well, what, the what, what are their rules? Like, I'm actually curious. This evolved when quickly. It's, the... it's only got 550 likes and it's got 520 comments so there loads of retweets because everyone's just like, you do know that many of the people who made these comments were women. Yeah. <laughs> like, <you> fucking moron. <laughs> and I think what he was well, yeah. gunning for, and this lines up with the rest I'm going to show you, is that I think he was just going for a viral tweet. He, he wasn't expected. Like, he doesn't care. Uh, None of these people actually care about these positions. They're just like, mm -hmm. this should work out because it's quite a good virtue signal. But all the responses are just making fun of him. It's like, shut the fuck up. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's like, I didn't, I didn't consider it. I, I didn't understand the whole period blood joke. And then I watched the trailer, and it's like 96% women. And I'm like, oh, that's kind of, that's actually kind of quite conspicuous. Uh, okay. Well, so in the first right, two I people that. I saw make this joke were women. Uh, on my feed, which is kind of funny, right? Like, it, mm -hmm. in terms of just how it works out. But he was like, How dare you? I'm going to defend women on behalf of all women. It's like, Shut I up. Was stop. Just get and, uh, slapped. It's like, Stop it. Just to give an example, is one of the, the memes he's very stop. upset with. Prove, man. Yeah, that's, that's the one I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I saw the one That's with the perfect. lightsabers, the tampon. Yeah, so. I, 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 I saw that shit as well, but that, this was the one we were mentioning earlier. Uh, it's like rags just messing around, I guess. Bag of shite. That's not me. That's <laughs> not me. <laughs> Bag of shite. Bag of shite. How big is that? Oh, it's, it's not really right. of light, the darkness slides. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, he uh, he's a he's oh, like a oh, full-on yeah. farmer, and I've seen people uh, speculate, irrelevant of me noticing it, that he might be paid to do it. As in, like it's <laughs> there's a formatting and there's there's viral tweets that you repeat over and over again. So I was gonna give you examples, right? And I think at first these will seem normal, but then you'll probably start to understand what I'm getting at. You got like the alternate ending to the Revenge of the Sith Time video game is still absolutely insane. LucasArts was wild for this one back in 2005. <laughs> a really fun what if for the Star Wars universe that isn't talked about enough. And it's a clip of an alternate ending where Anakin kills Obi-Wan. It's like, okay, yeah. Okay. It's like, mm -hmm. damn, 27k likes. Okay. Fair, I guess. Two million views. That's a lot of people like that game. And it's like, I still love how George Lucas randomly gave Obi-Wan a dinosaur buddy who knows uncharted cloning planets and owns a 1950s dino with no setup whatsoever. It's like, okay, okay. yeah. Why do those all get right, so much right. engagement? I don't even you get it. Still love that? It's like, okay, all right. These are these are very innocuous, but Two then um, million. The more they go on, you start to notice some patterns. Like, still hilarious to me that if you pushed 1138 on your TV remote while looking at Revenge of the Sith DVD menu, you'd be greeted with a video of Yoda breakdancing. Still one of the greatest Easter eggs I've ever seen. Uh-huh. Okay. Ooh. 37k. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> alright, yeah. People are really into it, I guess. I mean, I guess there's information in there that you might not have known. Well, so that's the thing. I've seen these before. Um... Not that the, that wouldn't be interesting, but I was like, I think he's getting these from somewhere. It's like, no lightsaber and all of Star Wars will ever be able to match the significance and emotional impact of these toy ones from 2000s. Everyone I knew growing up had one, and imaginations ran wild. Many great battles were fought with these, and the memories will last forever. Okay. Do you, do you get it? Are you sensing what I'm getting? It's like an atmosphere that's like, wait a minute. I feel like you're a robot. <laughs> like, <laughs> And a phony, a buddy. Bit. Were those scheduled a long phony. time ago? I still can't believe that MTV used the files for Revenge of the Sith game to make Anakin yeah, Skywalker okay. saying, Take me this out by okay. Franz Frank Ferdinand to a crowd of clone troopers is real and aired on live TV. But I'm Why so can't glad you it exists. still believe anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's what's starting to get me now. It's yeah. just like, oh, it's so crazy to me. It's it, uh, it's still so interesting, man. I can't believe it. Like, it's all right, the format's I sure do remember this heavy, thing. Yeah. <laughs> this is well, and some of these fun facts you guys will know. Forever thinking about how the first thing Lando did after escaping from Cloud City was put on Han Solo's clothes for some reason. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like a bunch of little Star Wars facts that just yeah. get thrown up. 
with the context of, oh, I'm still thinking about it. Man, I can't believe that. They're oh, all above so one million. How many fo uh, subscribe followers does he have? I, think I just don't, don't believe that's we'll, we'll Just follow the narrative for now, okay? So, okay <laughs> Revenge of the Sith will forever be the saddest Star Wars film. Everyone always remembers the memes and the action, but I rarely hear people discuss just how tragic it really is. Oh. What? <laughs> People talk about that all the time. I know. What would the other one be? I guess Empire Strikes Back would be the sad. I mean, Force Awakens, not really, but uh, I, I think TLJ. Uh, <laughs> the TLJ thing is famously thing. known for as being the darkest, sad one, darkest, saddest one. Uh, that's what Thinking it's about for. how the Revenge of the Sith Nintendo DS game wouldn't let you play on the Tom. master difficulty as Anakin Skywalker. No, these are just so like specific and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like he, this I, is I not this is calculated just, bait. Doesn't feel like, real yeah, at all, does it? It's well, not something he's actually uh, genuinely thinking, thinking about. I don't think you were thinking about facts. this specific fact. <laughs> I think that you sat down one day and we're going through all of these things. Yeah, going just, through yeah. like a book or a list of a thousand facts you didn't know about Star Wars or something. He's got a list. <laughs> he's got an algorithm. He's got a whole rhythm to this shit. Well, yeah, the, I mean, when we first covered him, he wasn't doing this and he's been spamming them now and he's getting loads of engagement posts. And it's like, hmm. Yeah, we got this. Uh, He's this is still peak Star Wars. I don't care what anyone <laughs> says. No, that's uh, peak acting <laughs> from Ewan McGregor. That's it. Stop showing me lightsabers and faces and uh, saying it's fucking Star Wars. This keep trying to make it happen. Well, at least putting all the, the, uh, the, the new terms in there. It's peak Star Wars. Peak fire, I, bro. Mm -hmm. I think that scene actually made me angry because we waited a whole fucking season and like for, he, yeah. he waited to the end to act. It's crazy. Nothing terrifies me more than how fast this door shuts in the Phantom Menace. What? Okay. I think <laughs> <we'll shut. laughs> okay. Like, all right. Uh, it's like 30k I likes. It's like, oh, all that's, right. That's like, that's getting towards not being even a little bit interesting. It's, yeah, that's it, like, it, guy, the it door closes fast. Right. It sure does. He's all the right. door totally right. and Phantom okay. Menace. Okay. Yeah. January. This is 27th. one of the coolest moments in Revenge of the Sith, and nobody talks about it. How do you know? When the oh, clone right. kills right. the spider I, I can't drone tell from this tiny picture. Hang on. What's, what's, what's... It's just in the middle of... Oh, uh... when he jumps up on the spider yeah, drone. But... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. okay. He, he I, all right. Blank. He, you know, he does kind of the same thing Rico does to the tanker bug in Starship Troopers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like, you know, all right. Um, I like or just tank Troopers. bug. Sorry. Tank. Well, Not tanker. Uh... Thinking about how in the original Lego Star Wars game, oh, Vader stop. could use the Force to choke every single character except for Padme. What are you thinking about this? <laughs> He's a liar. Why? He's a dirty liar, bro. <laughs> what was your methodology for figuring that one out? <laughs> Do it. Does anyone call him out in the section for this? Oh, type like of I said, shit? I'm like, not the really, first dude? person to notice this. Uh, Other people have. It, it's like he he's an account people are familiar okay, with okay, to the okay. point of assuming he's like been he's like designed to just farm and stimulate like Star Wars fans, churn them on social media. Can't believe they teased us with a subplot about Darth Maul leading various crime syndicates, only to never really follow up on it again. You can. I can believe that. Yeah, I can believe I, that. I can. They've done it a lot. But can you see the way that he speaks in all of these? Just don't. Oh yeah. Like, pattern. Like I think that's confirmation yeah. right there. The pattern. Like it, this is a, this is an AI. Yeah. That's that right. AI vibes what was it. weird though is like I know he's real. We covered him before. It's like what happened to you? Did you sell your soul? Like what's, I got what's him. going on? <laughs> Skynet. <laughs> just. And oh, now this is where it's getting funny. There are failed yeah. attempts at making viral tweets. Check this one out. Oh, okay. the upcoming Star Wars movie starring Daisy Ridley is set to begin filming on April 7th, 2024, just some news. And he's like, absolutely surreal, exciting headline. Can't oh, believe God. one of the best Star Wars characters is finally coming back. What an amazing time to be a fan. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> OK, all right. Oh, you, you played your hand a bit too strong. You yeah, played you, uh, your hand a bit far. I, uh, <laughs> mask you slipping. All right. The mask is slipping. The wait a minute. Just, just like, <laughs> wait a second. You're not uh, real. Uh, finally is the word that screwed him there. <laughs> it's funny because it's it's always with a picture or a gif or anything because that's that, that gives yeah, you more engagement and all the time. It's no. just it's just so it's it's so deliberate. I was looking at some of his later like latest yep, stuff and it's like these feel like the more real ones. I don't read my replies anymore. It's still easy to be distracted by the worst people in this community. If anything, it's just annoying. Once again, extremely thankful for the friends and great mutuals that I've made through talking about Star Wars on this app. Like, that's yeah, probably him. Yeah, like a normalish person, yeah. yeah. And then it's like 200 yeah, likes. Yeah. You know? Uh, I know it's been three <laughs> hours, but still. Uh, his, 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 uh, his engagement reached as much as like 60k. Up, you know? Yeah. 
Like the, <laughs> actual, the actual tweets where he's giving his opinions and stuff, it's like nobody gives a shit. It's only his the exactly. robot viral ones that are proven by algorithm to work. Yeah, he needed to type it out like, I still don't really read my replies anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> Check this one out, right? It's like, okay. I'll forever be baffled by people who say the Rise of Skywalker is by far the worst Star Wars movie. It's easy to argue that. When this scene, a lot of those <laughs> yeah, exist. Like, then he's like, there's something really the profound and special about this moment calling back to Anakin saying the biggest problem in this universe oh, is that nobody helps each God. other. But beyond that, I love how the saga essentially ends with the entire galaxy standing up against tyranny. Don't need to read the rest. You get it. This is like, yeah, oh no, a hundred yeah, likes. Oh, this one didn't work. Damn it. Oh, that one. This one didn't. This one wasn't pig fire. No, it didn't, uh, they it didn't yeah. go know which way is up. You just can't defend that movie. There's <laughs> just too many hard counters. It's over. It's just it's such it's a such funny, a, such funny bullshit. It's an over. analogy for modern Star Wars fans. They just don't just, know which way is up. <laughs> just fucking hell. One day they'll figure it out. That's it's I, gotta be sad curious, realizing though, that that's your life. Oh well, so right, <laughs> this is where we actually I wanted to get to that point. So oh, <laughs> this is oh. him. Think about the engagement levels he's had, right? And, and what he has to yeah. do. He has to point out obscure fun facts that appeal to nostalgia and your love of the actual stuff. Yeah, worded like an AI. Yeah. And word it, yeah, worded like an AI. That he had, he then, hasn't discovered. He just read about it somewhere or heard it from something. You know, or... the newest Star Wars content that's actually releasing. Thinking about doing Bad Batch episodes reviews of shorts with a longer video on the entire series and series as a whole, uh, season series. Mad. What about thoughts? 19 Ouch. likes. Oh, wow. Dang. Wow. <laughs> 19. To be fair, it's only, been five, it's only been five hours, though, to be fair. Well, so th that was kind of the point of showing the one from three hours ago had 200 likes. <laughs> and that one was just him saying, I don't like engaging with negative comments and that you're all great. Mm. Uh this is a, this is an account rise that has this tweets with multiple tens of thousands of likes on tweets. Nineteen on this one. I feel like this happens a lot though, where you have some content creator on YouTube and they're like, "Man, I thanks for sticking by me, guys." I'm or, or I'm feeling down, and they want to get their little sympathy up votes. You know, I'm, I'm feeling down lately, and I'm not going to talk about the haters, and they get a decent amount of likes. But then once they actually make a tweet that's about something substantive regarding their content, nobody gives a shit. I think you're right, though. This one I think is one of the best at accentuating how he's like pushed himself into becoming an algorithm for Star Wars tweets doing well, but that he has to bite the bullet and understand like that doesn't do anything for yourself. Self. That's There's only... no room for him now. Well, so it's, here's another uh, example, right? It's the Tony Stark thing with uh, the suit, except it's it's him and the algorithm instead of Peter and the the spider suit. If you're nothing without this algorithm, you shouldn't have it. <laughs> Here we have, uh, this is two days ago, new video. We all know of Palpatine's Ooh. rise to power and the eventual fall of the Republic, but what happened to Valorum after he was voted out of Chancellorship? The answer is quite possibly one of the biggest mysteries in Star Wars canon. Don't forget to share and subscribe and stay updated. It's got under eight, under kind of, 80 likes. <laughs> Dude, like are How do you go from... That he, he just retired, well, right? Like Valorum? Oh, do I don't go care about that. I'm just talking about this. 18k, 18K <laughs> like 28k, 60k. Like, how does that... I was like, damn. Tell me how. Does well, it and so this is the uh, the thing that gets talked about with Twitter. You can't convert Twitter likes into YouTube views, but you can barely convert Twitter likes into Twitter likes. Yeah, it's weird. No, yeah, it I'm... doesn't seem like it. No, YouTube's got a little bit of that too, in some ways, where it's like it's just not every. There's a there's a whole rhythm to this shit that's just hard to grasp, and like this guy. YouTube is way me. better though than like yeah, YouTube's Twitter much more in terms of the yeah. tangibility of uh of like, I, which I guess I don't even think it's really surprising because if you have a tweet that goes viral, what does that that doesn't necessarily mean anything about whether or not they're interested in yes. what you have to say in general. Yeah. Or just, because you could just yeah. do one really funny, things. really funny tweet where I was like, oh look, I did a really funny. Yeah, thing. I was they like, go. Oh. That was yeah, great. Yeah, compared to if you, you make a really else. good video. If you yeah. make a really good video, then yeah. it's like, oh, well, shit, maybe he's made some other really good videos. Mm -hmm. So the, it's, and it's more organic. Yeah, yeah if yeah. you see a funny post on Twitter, you're like, ha, oh, that was funny. And then you keep scrolling to the 78 exactly. others that are next to it behind it. But that's what YouTube, would have happened here. Is... People see a little fun factoid and they're like, oh, cool. Yeah, I like that factoid. Anyway, moving on with my life. <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's like at no on, transfer at yeah, all. On YouTube, the, uh, the 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 subscribing to the content, and even for all of its problems, the recommendeds they often work out to sort of give you similar things that you've watched. So yeah, recommended. There's, there, there's something there. There's something there. Well structured. Most people just use recommended ninety percent of the time. So how often do you go? Kind of. That's me. That's me. Yeah. Ninety percent. 
yeah. you type something specific, like if it's like, oh, what was that thing? Like you're trying to narrow it down, but generally it's recommended carrying you through your week. Yeah, um, kind of phases and stuff. Yeah. He's at 154 views on his Valorum video on YouTube. 154. Uh, it could, didn't quite work out with the. Like I said, it's just getting. You can farm Twitter likes. Like I said, they're just so yeah. they're so hollow. Like in terms of being able to do anything. This is a pretty small channel. I guess from what I, I feel. From what I stand, so. Yeah. Almost bad for him that he has to be like a robot and search through factoids and find all the best language to properly phrase tweets to best cycle through the algorithm, and it means nothing. He was going to say, it means nothing. It's just... Oh, wow. Yeah. He's embarrassing he tiny... himself for anything. Yeah, he's got a, uh, many thoughts about Star Wars Q&A. It is four days... Oh, wait, is that him? Light speed? No, it isn't. That's something else. Mm. Um, <clears throat> let's see. No, it is him. It is him. He just has a... Star Wars channel called he has a channel called Lightspeed and it has 242 views after four days. He's trying to sort of boost it with the with the Twitter stuff, but I said it's just not working. But we'll give him a chance. I'm always interested in new opinions. He's got a video on um, the Acolyte trailer. It's only four minutes. We'll uh, give it a oh, look. See, right. oh, yeah, he's sure. called it a I breakdown. Almost... So maybe he's got some stuff in here that we missed. That'd be cool. Oh, for some reason I didn't. For some for some reason I didn't connect that the video was gonna be on this guy. I don't know why I didn't connect that. I'm so excited now. <laughs> oh, this is his channel, Lightspeed. Here we go. So he's gonna tell us what's to be excited about with the acolyte because he's one of the people who's All more right. so you know in favor of it compared to us. So it'll be interesting Kinda to check out. Oh, I can tell by those tweets. Yeah. Wow, that's Lightspeed. Punch it! I'm Jacob, and welcome to Lightspeed. Oh fuck! He's already oh, pointing. Oh. Pointer! <laughs> the pointer! Oh, the, he's oh, got the man. Last Jedi poster right there, as prominent as pop. He's got a fucking Funko, Funko. Pop Funko of that pop. Goober. Yeah. He's what's her name? Dizzy. He's Rose dual wielding. He's got Funko Pop for R Rose Tico. Funko he did that on purpose. Rose Tico. <laughs> yeah. Who would buy a Funko a Pop of Rose Look Tico? At his face. <laughs> Wait, is, is is that? Chris Gore? Like, who's the one on the left? Look, look, I, <laughs> Chris Gore. <laughs> look, I don't want to. I don't want to do the. Like I don't want to do the thing, but I'm gonna. Like oh, this no. face with how he looks, the Rose Tico Funko Pop, the Last Jedi poster. Finish uh, it. It's it's a vibe. It's a vibe. <laughs> I thought I thought you would say he's well groomed, Rags. Look at him. He's he not is like he's... well. He's he's. I mean, there's all the side stuff on the sides on the face, but maybe that's just a just a preference thing. He's got he's yeah, got interesting eyebrows. Beard. He's got I was about to say yeah, yeah. Kirby K pop. They're very expressive. Eyebrows. Yes, yes. There's no yeah, yeah. Which to be honest with you is perfect because there's not much emotion in the Acolyte trailer, but he can bring it. And to say that the trailer for Point the it out, if you will. anticipated is honestly kind of an understatement. Aside from a trailer shown at some point, anybody anticipating it much at all? Down. Editing, editing, editing. <laughs> It's it's it was an understatement. Like, we, we knew it. We knew it was coming for years. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, but, we, yeah, but did it you shock us? We did you expect coming. the uh, the red lightsaber though? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the I didn't didn't multiple, that actually. shocked me. That's when I pressed the like button and subscribed to that Disney Plus because that the red lightsaber. Oof. Yeah. I Serious figure. question: What do you what do you think is the worst name? The Acolyte that just like is like nothing, or the Rise of Skywalker that sounds like shit, but at least references like you know the Skywalker. I, I think the Acolyte's a better title than the Rise of Skywalker. I think I prefer the Acolyte. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I prefer, prefer the Acolyte. Though I, I would go with the neutrality of it. The, the Acolyte would be weird in in the format of like a the Skywalker saga film titles. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the Rise of Skywalker as a TV show name would be pretty weird. I guess, you know what I mean? Like, there's contexts that work better for both, but I think I would go with Acolyte, yeah. Things were kept pretty secret from pretty much everybody involved with this series. With the very few details that we were told being... What, what are these, like, <laughs> what are these edits with all the yeah, swiping in? Well, also the hand, right. the blaster because noise. He's doing all it's, these motions with his hands, but then all the images hands. go on top of the hands. Like, it's it's he's just expressive. So distractions. He just there's loves so to gesticulate. He's so many distractions. Italian. He's he's high energy. He needs to express like crazy, and he's gonna do it by gum. Which is really funny, considering like all of the leaks with all of these other recent Star Wars projects. 
pew, 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 what a really pew. good that is a really good uh that's the, the, the high quality <laughs> high quality images you found of these big movies just, if you're gonna do this put the oh, but yeah, saying, i don't want to rag out the guy they're the leaked right? images right yeah came out uh ahead of time so that's why they look bad oh that's true. oh okay ah, fair yeah. makes sense Fair, fair, totally. We fair. retract our insults. We were. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, strange. I was distracted. Why his main channel, Jacob Suggs, uh, is lowercase, but he uppercase is on and the. So it, it was distracting <laughs> me. Oh yeah, that's uh, huh? that's not correct. <laughs> that's not correct. Yeah. You fuck, I, you I like the uh, both up. the future Maybe Suggs the... coming in on the past Suggs here. It's a huge blurry mess, but it's like. It's so urgent what future Suggs has to say. The past Suggs is out at this point as our presenter. I'm just create this well, artistic image. Title though, so the 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 capitalized T on on T H E might be appropriate because <laughs> oh, the, the title of the show the is the. the I, yes, oh yes, right. for the, the for the is yes. Okay, yeah, for the not, is good. Here. But the on, yeah, right, the on yeah. is that's incorrect. Right. That being said, after weird. dropping one of the hardest teaser posters I think I've ever. Hardest. <laughs> oh come on. That's why everyone hot, loves really? it. Another, there's another word that's been ruined and fire and all Hardest. that stuff. Just yeah, you just say yeah, it for everything. Hardest. And Ghost Hard has life. been ruined. Yeah. In your entire really? life, this is one of the really? hardest teasers in okay. your entire to, life. Really? I don't believe. Be I don't believe you. To be fair, his his life is only like twenty years. So yeah. it could be twenty two. <laughs> you never know what would have happened. Yeah, even then, no. no. Somehow, I'm even more hyped than before. Because of all the lightsabers. He shows lightsabers. He shows lightsabers. Oh, oh, oh no, perfect. another future oh. sub's coming out of the past. Gun. Right off the bat, <laughs> the vibes that the trailer gives. The vibes, <laughs> the vibes, the vibes. and it just shows him sitting there. <laughs> <You're in bed. laughs> Bored. I like, how we went I like how we went full circle to the little alien guy. I like that. Yeah. yeah I, I can't believe that the arc you've had. Yeah, he's the Asian he's guy's right. like, eh, the alien's about to fall yeah, asleep. Yeah. <laughs> that one alien yeah, just hoping no one notices he can't close his eyes. Like, <laughs> God. How come I, how come we're the only two aliens in here and both of our eyes are pure black with no life for expression? <laughs> you also have a question, they're just like, like Bruh. Even though we're joking okay. about this, even though we're joking around about this, I st it still highlights the potential of how much you can get just by having alien characters. Like, we're just, this discussion just from their features. Just aliens being in the room in this stupid scene is getting more than, like, you know, whatever characterization we're going to get out of this show. I just wish they would commit. Is it a coincidence that they both have Funko Pop pies? <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't even think about that. Ugh. Dang it. I only thought about it because of the. That's another thing Funko I hate about the Funko Pops, <laughs> the dead ass eyes. Yeah, they look like shit. Like <laughs> From the every time I've looked, of the, yeah, the yeah. High Republic and the prequel trilogy itself, in all the best possible ways, if you're asking me. Like, what was that? The this pointing. What the, f the way the, this what? is edited what? is fucking nuts. So what is the zoomer <laughs> editing? Switching back and forth his angles that could be. He like. like He'll actively interrupt himself to just say the end of the sentences. <laughs> be like, hang on right there, buddy. I gotta finish this myself. People can't te people can't keep attention for more than sixteen nanoseconds. I have to have some sound effect or some sort of a video slide, or I have to turn my body, or I have to wave my yeah. hands. Pew! This is throw cocaine at the screen. I think he's evolved. Like the pointing wasn't enough. Goes it's just not enough. <laughs> people were like, the pointing's cool, man, but I need more. I need some slides. I need no, there's a difference between there's a difference between like pacing and like just distractions because this to me just screams like insecurity either for himself he's not confident that he can entertain his audience or he's not like he, he, confident that he has an audience with a proper attention span you know just like, wait this isn't what you should be doing if he's figured yeah. out uh, how to get algorithmically successful tweets maybe he'll do oh it with God. videos someday no oh my God. gotta point the fingers in the right direction this of both the high <laughs> republic and the prequel trilogy itself in all the best possible ways yeah like what was that like from the opening <laughs> alone it looks like something that's happening stop i can't f i'm having a hard time just following the sentence ah, <laughs> you know what it's, it's, it's edited like a short like a YouTube <laughs> short or a short i'm getting it is I'm actually hyper distracting to pay attention yeah, to what man. he's saying because it's yeah. just like <laughs> <laughs> and then in the back you have the you have a cantina music that's like remixed to be this lo-fi jazzy mm. thing it's all it's, it's all distractions. distractions. There's no purpose. Yeah. From the opening alone, it looks like something that you would just see released around the time of the prequel trilogy. It looks well, how, like something you'd see released oh, around the time why? of the prequel trilogy. Uh, okay. In what way do you mean? Explain, explain yourself. Wait, it takes place right, around the time of the prequel trilogy in Coruscant? Is that why? 
I am, I'm like stunned. So he, he was talking, then he puts a visual on screen. And then we have like for two seconds, the frame of, I guess, the end of that sentence with the new frame coming in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is that? It's, it's, He's already outdated. I, I New know. Sugs, let's go. Which makes sense considering that it aligns perfectly with the synopsis that they dropped for the series. Do we get a flash frame there? Well. It makes Same sense time. that this, well, the, the trailer aligns with the, the synopsis. <laughs> Dude, there's something yeah, hilarious about you're the fact that like, him. my brain is fried. Just, it makes sense that <laughs> it evokes the prequels words. considering it's set a hundred years before the sequel. Uh, prequels. It's just like, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Snuggle a puppy metal, it helped. This guy hey, is... It's weird that this the is Acolyte credited as the Acolyte synopsis Lucasfilm. <laughs> that's not something a human does. <laughs> that's very weird. An investigation into a shocking crime spray pits a respected Jedi master against a dangerous warrior from his past. Oh my goodness! I can't wait to see what wow. happens. I hope he. I, I don't. I hope they all die. I don't know. A lot of people have been highlighting that um, if it's a Sith, it'll fuck up the line from the prequels about how the Sith haven't been spotted for like a thousand years. They don't um, give a shit. They don't give a shit. I was. I was. See, that's kind of my opinion straight away. Was like, yeah, they'll fuck that up. Why wouldn't they? They fuck yeah. everything up. Yeah, of course. Of Unless everyone who the, sees the Sith dies or they become Sith. Well, so the, I was gonna, gonna, gonna say, there's there's a lot of ways lines. around it. Not that I would assume they would want to work toward that, but like you could have all kinds of things that would explain a line like that still happening, even if there's a Sith here that gets killed, everyone could die, or it's not a Sith, or the, the lightsaber is actually from a Jedi. He's just made it red because he's all mad. He was Whoa. the first to discover the red uh, flavoring that you could sprinkle on your <laughs> dilithium crystal. Ooh. Follows an investigation into a shocking crime spree, pitting a respected Jedi master against a dangerous warrior from his past. So it looks like we're gonna have like a murder mystery or detective story set within the Star Wars universe, which again yes, feels very maybe cool, considering that it was what it said. Oh, what's gonna feels happen is it's gonna be prequel. Why? Here's what's gonna happen. It's going to, the first episode is going to mildly uh, be be about an investigation. And then the plot will happen, and that will never be revisited. Only the par part of the first episode will have anything approaching that kind of a concept for the show. Well, yeah, because by episode two, it'll all be revealed, like, who it is and yeah. what their motivation is, yep, yep, We'll be going into space, we'll be doing something, we'll be tracking someone across the stars. And then begins the, the adventure of the galaxy spanning consequences of the story. Yeah, yeah we'll learn yeah. about why the O and Acolyte is a, f a weird glowing Yeah, exactly. Blue she's o. looking for, like, a portal to another dimension or something, and that's why she's killing the Jedi. Not yep. because of any personal grudge or something. She needs their blood to open the doorway to the different dimension or some shit. Yeah, it, wow. yeah, because there's an old force temple on an old planet, and they have yeah. to put the thing yeah. on the pedestal so that mm -hmm. it opens up the something to show. I'm also thing. amused by, like, it'll be something to find out, much like in episode two, which is why it <laughs> well, evokes the prequels. something out. Like, yeah, okay. There's Remember tenuous connections here. <laughs> well, to be to be fair, whenever people ask me, as they often do, Rags, what's your favorite part about Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones? I say, well, you, I love, I love it in this movie. It's really about trying to find out something. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we always. Say. I think that's really the core of Star Wars. Yeah, trying, there's no mystery. Trying to find stuff, stuff out. The, the zero mystery box stuff in the J.J. Abrams Star Wars. Remember films. Master Sifo Dyas. I don't. Bring your rags. You don't ever get to see him. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, crazy. It's set over time. Turn. Master Cypher Dias. Ordered the clones. No, shut the fuck up. I wanted to see if they say it. Oh, oh shit. You said it. Well, you, you did say it like Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, <laughs> yeah, he says a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, so you're the whole fucking Obi -Wan movie. Ken you're referencing when Obi Wan Kenobi talks about Master Cypher Dias. Yeah. I yeah. still can't get over the fact that we've never heard about Sifo Diaz again. <laughs> that's right. That's kind of what I was getting at. Was just the the Tiger Close is a funny movie. <laughs> yeah. They're all a, funny. It is the a prequels. weird movie. I love just trying to figure out the whole clone plot thing. It's just bizarre and mm -hmm. weird. Darth Tyrannus. Anyway, go on. Attack of the Clones. It's very influenced by the prequels, as you can tell. And if there's one thing that I love I about can't. the Republic era, that it's also I don't know that I care. <laughs> I I don't give yeah, it. it I don't. Mean anything to me. Doesn't. Yeah, I know what was really influenced by the prequels. The fucking Obi Wan well. Kenobi show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, plenty of prequels in that. So and it isn't even the prequel era. It's the High Republic era, as you've just pointed out, which is a different era than the prequels. So, well, you know. His primary praise, because by the way, for those at home, we're like 
fucking a third of the way through. His primary praise so far is it's connected to the prequels, not really in story, but sort of in aesthetic. Yeah. That's okay, about it. that I means guess. nothing yeah. in terms of quality, but I mean, okay. Yeah, could have, could have it doesn't that. mean that like, much in just... terms of Star Wars. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. A, like you've been I mean, using if... the same robes and lightsabers. And there will be robes, <laughs> gray hallways. Well, if he's saying that the acolyte cross guards in that picture, mm -hmm. though, to be fair. Well, if he's if he's saying that the acolyte is going to be a CGI monstrosity, then yeah, it's going to evoke the prequels really well. There was some practical stuff there, Rags. You got to say that these <laughs> days, otherwise you're going to make everyone mad. There are some yeah. practical stuff, whatever, I don't, I don't know. I will say, it's funny to pause this video, because most of the time it's him in motion. <laughs> like, yeah, jeez, the, yeah. the amount of cuts he has of the few... I like that he's animated, yeah, he's really excited to nice. talk yeah. about stuff. Pointing the little things out. I are essentially Texas Rangers, kind of like, traveling around the oh. galaxy. What? Huh? I'm <laughs> Texas Rangers do not travel around the, the galaxy. galaxy. <laughs> no, no, come on. He's the Texas galaxy. The, the Jedi travel around Texas, and it's very big. It's like, it's basically the universe. Texas is the galaxy. And they stop crime, and they investigate things, and they have some extra ju judicial power, and then the lightsaber comes out, and they say stuff, and then force happens. And then they go, what? oh dear, a Sith. And then they go... Would we, would we have not understood the sentence? They <laughs> roam around the galaxy like space rangers? Anything. No, you have to, you have to relate them to the Texas rangers. I mean, you have to remember, this guy is, like, he's AI. Which, like, it's all buzzing. Fine, <laughs> I, like, I guess. I guess it's fine. He's not gonna, I don't think he's gonna, like, elaborate on any of these thoughts. It's just gonna be buzzwords and, like, these just, I just, like, the, tweets. Yeah, I'll give it to him. This is a better point of something than the previous point he had, the prequel. So, like, just saying, wouldn't it be fun to see a, a group of Jedi that travel the galaxy searching for answers to a case related to some conspiracy that may be happening? If, I'm Maybe. not even sure if I like, just made that up as opposed to that's what he's saying. But even mm -hmm. still, it's uh, it's a lot to draw from a trailer that doesn't really show you that at all, other than like like it, it shows you the the Disney no, this version is all, of that. No, this is all yeah. just the meta refer like meta information about the High Republic that is High basically Republic, being yeah. stated. I feel like this is actually something that's just been stated by writers on that project that that's what they are. Because the trailer uh, that's just what said they are in that world. The tra the trailer just said someone's killing Jedi. A darkness is rising. That's it. And Don't yeah, use your eyes. Pretty much. Like, can't trust your eyes for well, kids. Well, I have a feeling that all the <laughs> investigative portions of it are going to be very fucking lackluster. Like, yeah, probably. They're going to be shit. Based on Ahsoka, yeah, look at her Ugh. stupid little investigations. Well, hey, this isn't written it, by Filoni, so there's a chance it'll be okay. Is it, um, is it kind of ironic that a that a, that a the TV show trailer essentially begins with the line "Don't trust your eyes." <laughs> it's just, yeah. Well, it's what Fring was bringing up, right? That it's probably going to be thematically relevant, at least as far as maybe we're giving them too much to say that. It's going to be the I, same. My way. guess would be it is like, ah, uh, see, the galaxy looks peaceful, but it ain't. And that's your eyes deceiving you. The force will guide you. Remember, old Palpatine tricked them. He clouded them. That's how he did it in the prequels. That's right. He put little clouds everywhere. But again, Anakin kind of trusted in the force, and that did go very well for him. Yeah, but then yeah. Luke did, and it did go well, so there. That's, ah, uh, yeah, so it's all balanced out, yes. Do you remember when we covered the guy, I don't think, I don't think Fringy was there at Rags, but the guy who said that the balance of the Force was literally individual users? As in... I think the, I know what you're talking about. The Force How... always rebalances based on the amount of uh, users yeah, there are currently active. It was Freddie Prinze Jr. Yeah, no, I mean, no, 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 I, we covered I, a video I, I, I that... Like how... Went over it like in depth huh. with diagrams and showed like the sides and the progress over time and that Ray oh, was activated God. because there was too many Sith. Man, no, like, oh, that led him to that theory. Like, oh, uh, it's just don't try too the, hard. The, like, just let it go. Balance is good. The light side is balance. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, George made it really balance. Good. It's not meant to be like, oh, well, we got to fucking balance the scales here yeah, on whether we got Disney, enough Jedi or Sith fighting each other. Disney completely made it so confusing. Like, what is the, like, what's, what is this balance now? Like, Kylo and, like, balance is dyad, good. Trio, a dyad in the force. Dyad in the force. <laughs> like, what the fuck it's does that mean? Good. Good. You made a, a duty in the force. <laughs> he did a poopy. Why'd you Palpatine like die? <laughs> he told her. Do in the force. <laughs> they need to, like, That's Lucas one of the biggest ideal. mysteries. In all of Star Wars, is why Palpatine died. I have to say, and he would why not he die? die if he was killed. <laughs> I know yes. about this. He so, asked him to do it, and he died. No, the biggest mystery in Star Wars is where is Valorum? 
Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, that I is just one. assumed he, he no. you know, moved away to a nicer planet like Naboo or something like that. Got himself a nice cottage, and you know, he's an why old didn't guy, Ky right? <laughs> why didn't Kylo bring his lightsaber? How, why did he die from using <laughs> basically in the water? That's, that's how it you win evil. the Star Wars world. <laughs> People think that the Star Wars world, you want to be a bounty hunter or you want to be some cool Jedi or whatever. It's like, no, fuck all that shit. Get out of this madness. Get yourself a nice little house oh, on some like little the, uh, town in some like planet the, somewhere. Um, Find a lady. Snowman, settle the, down. Uh, oh, fucking Ewok. The, uh, the guy on the train, you know, the, in the Dr. Pershing episode. Oh, definitely yeah, the train guy. Yeah, yeah. I also, you know, like, you know, like Dexter Jaxter when he was doing his 50s diner, like when, when Coruscant was flipped over in terms of who's, you know, currently in power, he was probably fine. Yeah, like Palpatine might even have fucking ordered, like, all. you know, waffles and pancakes or whatever there every morning. You'd be like, yeah, man. <laughs> like, you know, you were friends yeah, with Obi-Wan. He's place. like, no, I didn't even know Obi-Wan. I don't know who that is. No. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah, talked about is. it. You talked about it in the first Kenobi episode, but like Kenobi, it should have been like history of violence, like him trying to like, you know, protect Luke, but without revealing his identity and not revealing that he has the force. <gasps> yeah, force him to be like in situations a... where he has to like actually choose: am I going to let this person die, or am I going to potentially re reveal, <gasps> you know, like my abilities? Like, there's just so many things they could have played with with the, having the tension. You don't just need lightsabers. I just I want to see him cutting meat and stressing over Luke, absolutely, and, and yeah, over the past. And like that first episode, they had something for a second. I remember I watched with my friend. And he was so excited. I'm like, don't, no, no, calm down. Just <laughs> calm wait. down. Wait. And, I, and, I, and then, then I had to, I had to like literally convince him to watch episode three after how bad two was. <laughs> like mm. I yeah, it all fell like up. <laughs> I like that it's Dexter so Dexter idea with him and people just kind of coming in. Palpatine just walks in to get breakfast like it's a Waffle House. It'd be so he awesome. Sits, <laughs> he sits down at the table like and he has Dexter Chester. How come all your forks are shaped like Camino's saber darts? <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> Dexter Chester. Dexter says no reason. <laughs> How awesome would it be though, like to legit have that scene and like for the actors to play it straight? I feel like all take, Star Wars I, I, fans would enjoy it. <laughs> take it seriously. All these things they they don't take themselves seriously in any situation when they can, and they get so much like they would people would love it, man. Well, like, uh, Star Wars it, needs to emulate the robot chicken parodies of itself in order no, to make good content. Emulate History of Violence. That's a good movie. I, Metal, we yeah, should do a History of Violence episode. It's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, um, the Rogue One scene with Cursed Vader story. isn't isn't just reference because it's a cool action scene. It's it's because they took it seriously. Like those fuck launch. Like they were legit. Were like look like they're they scared. Their yeah. Trying to get their, yeah, I loved them. Like holy fuck, this is like a horse scene with vader you nailed it never did a fucking cool thing with him ever again how long ago was that and uh it's, it's not just the action it's the tone and just take it seriously take all this we seriously and i'll show for up. rogue one so almost eight years on rogue one this year when we were speculating on um obi-wan kenobi options right because there's about 10 billion in terms of them being good the uh and this is something it's funny because you could just decanonize it and redo it again they'll never do that but i don't know why no one's ever tried like the closest the we've gone thrown... to is um dark fate i guess saying like we're redoing the timeline. Fuck the two movies that came out before. But then, yeah, you know, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know see why they don't do that more. Like with Game of Thrones, as you were saying. Or... That was the one. They should have set a precedent and it should have changed the game by being like, you know what? We got the, like, they would have, they would have made their money. It would have been it worth makes every no penny. sense to me. Like, it makes no sense. What have they done since? All the actors, fucking Eternals, <laughs> and Arya's dressing like a freak now, or fucking I, Maisie Williams. I, yeah, as far nope. as I see it, it's just like everyone assumes, Thanks. I guess, that you wouldn't make money back, but like I feel like you would though. <laughs> like, they would have. They I mean, would have. Certainly, if it were like you know, high quality, now. but imagine like the 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 Kenobi show, but it just because I think we said it, nev never leave Tatooine. You don't need to. Um, no. and how low budget that could be, despite the fact that I fucking hate the amount of times they've used Tatooine sets. Yeah, but obviously, I wouldn't mind as much if it were actually good. Um, that moment of him acting with Vader at the end. Let's isolate that moment over, like over a season. That's what he's I don't want him to see in Vader at all. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about the acting that he had. The like quality the, of the, it, the, sure. The, the quality of the acting in that moment it is what we should have gotten over the season and see it instead of seeing like the. Yeah, wasn't um. I could have sworn we read a potential. a synopsis of like a potential Kenobi movie was going to be that he was dealing with some kind of attack in a local area. Like, like uh, people trying to take advantage of whatever town and stuff. And so, and I, I don't know if Luke got kidnapped or Luke was in trouble. Or it was maybe uh, Uncle Owen, right? Like, he gets kidnapped or something like that. And so, Obi-Wan, like, tries to get involved, but doesn't want to use the Force, doesn't want to use Probably his lightsaber, that sort of stuff. And um, it would be awesome if they, like, hire a bounty hunter to help them, who's very aware of Kenobi's bounty, 
but like doesn't know what he looks or maybe, i guess how you'd work that around you'd have to maybe he's just aware of jedi but not kenobi himself yeah there's um, things you can play with and ways around it but I yeah, feel like then, maybe that was their original idea and then like the mando influence just changed their plans if they were f like really you know you build up the whole relationship by the time you hit the end of the season uh, you know, the bounty hunter guy is like about to get killed by someone, and he has to save him by using either a lightsaber or the force. And by doing so, the bounty hunter realizes who he is, and then mm -hmm. attacks him. The like how room. how amazing that could be, despite the fact that we would only need a couple rooms, caves, like you know, an really low budget. An opportunity to show what he's willing to do to protect his identity, to protect Luke. Like, there's so much character. We could, that it could have, it could have potentially been the best Obi Wan content. For a character that everybody loves, but we haven't really gotten that much of, he was just well, kind of like... You don't even have to stop at one you know? season, you could keep tackling it over and over again. Because like, the, the fact that they brought in Liam Neeson's qui god Jid to just go, uh, hey, uh, hey... Come on! If you're good to bring now. a bid, right? To talk about. <laughs> good god. <laughs> I, do you think that was them being like, this'll make yeah. people want a season two, I, we'll get them. I was watching, I was watching those EFAPs laughing as just Fergie's like they're gonna bring a Qui-Gon right that was the Qui Gon right like every single episode like on like why do you say Qui-Gon huh huh Qui-Gon what do what? you call it say? it's it, don't you, worry you, about you... him he's Canadian all right that's fair <laughs> <laughs> well yeah we thought um must have been a the last dish. ditch attempt would be the when Obi-Wan is crushed by all the boulders that he would bring him in yeah that's when you do it yeah that actually makes sense that's, that's what he thought it was yeah. right at the end like hey let's go for a walk come on now like remember when you needed my help and I wasn't there Let's Where go. were you when I was under the boulder? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I knew you'd think about Leia. Oh my god. We're not Where fans were you of that show, fire? just FYI. Leia. Yeah. And then yeah. forcing the law whenever they can. So having a show that takes that concept oh, yeah, and guy. brings it to life, it, it really piques my interest a lot. And uh -huh. I just have to say that that one shot at the end of the trailer, where mm -hmm. like all of the Jedi just like whip out and ignite their lightsabers. Why is it good? Fuck it out. Say something. Oh, absolutely he did it. Peak. So it back. Peak absolutely fire. Peak. We're so yes. back. We haven't uh, been there, but we've returned. We're back. Do you ever think Did that, like, um, because like, that felt like the algorithm thing, like him saying yeah, this? Like, without and ignite their lightsabers. Absolute peak. Like we are so back. He must know. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. that's we are right. so we're back. We are so back. Yeah, this like, is like, this is very uh, robot-y, isn't it? I almost want to appeal to him pragmatically. I'd be like, you know, you're one of the thousands of people saying this very same thing. Don't you want to have something different to say? Like anything different. Well, yeah, I mean, what chance do you have, you know? <laughs> what chance do you have? There's a million things like this out there. We are so back, what's are we? Like vapid, well, it's the thing. Hype. Where did we go if you've loved all of this? We haven't gone anywhere. What's wrong? What's happening? Yeah. Yeah, well, how can that be so and back? Now Ahsoka back. only came out a little while ago. And Ahsoka was great, you know, right? There was no Anakin coming was back. In it. You were already there. We're so there. We were already there or something. Fire. <laughs> I mean, like, but. Uh, what is he? What is, what element of this is he saying makes it peak? And in that case, uh, did, did, did you not listen? Did you not listen, Mark? You didn't hear the words the men said. No, yeah, they, they 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 ignited their lightsabers. But, We're but, so do bad. I, do I just do I just have a bad definition of peak? Because peak means yes. like nothing is better than this. Meaning you're saying this is better they, than anything that's ever happened in Star they have, Wars. Like, they I have don't think he thinks that. They have fucked all vocabulary. Every word. Yeah, this lets us peek into the mind of a madman. Guys. <laughs> nice. well, when your, word, your mind has been just absolutely subsumed by internet vernacular and <laughs> algorithms that will guide say, your uh, well, I, choice. I this is the uh, retarded negaverse version of us saying this is the worst thing I've ever seen, like with a lot of films subsequently. <laughs> it would be like us saying, this is Valley, bro. This is just pure Valley. This is pure I've Valley. We are so <laughs> not there. We, we are really far away, bro. <laughs> Very far The thing away. is, though, I've used the term peak recently, and it was when I was doing kind of like a little impressions video on uh, the Tekken 8 campaign. And I do mean it when I say that the last few fights in that game are peak Tekken, because it's like the craziest shit that happens between two of the strongest characters that have been around at least, oh, both of them have been around since Tekken 3, one of them since the original game. And it's an epic battle where they end up in space with superpowers and then land on a volcano, which are pretty significant in Tekken, and just have a straight up fist fight that's really over here. the top. In the real world. Okay, the volcanoes, volcanoes are... 
Yeah, yeah. Hank. But Hank. I mean, the, the the guy you're fighting actually it was thrown into one by his father. And, oh, you know, okay. so, I mean, personally significant to those two specifically, and uh, the other, the one he's that one that you're playing as is the son of that guy. So the grandfather of the dude that dropped the guy in the volcano. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I'm saying that it's bringing a lot of story elements into the original, uh, from the original series to this moment in the narrative. That's kind of like, hey, final showdown between Jin and Kazuya. Let's see this go down and ha have it be the most over-the-top anime battle you can imagine because that's what Tekken has always been. So I actually did mean it was the peak of that series storytelling that is, granted, silly anime shit, so you might not like it. But if you do like it, it's like, well, they they pretty much gave you the the ultimate version of the Tekken arc ending. And so I, I was clear about saying peak as... Like, I enjoy you know, how much you were desperate to justify using peak. Well, no, <laughs> I, I, my point is, though, I had that much thought into it because I'm thinking that, like, would you not want... To, if you're using a term that definitive, would you not want to at least have an argument that you could convince yourself of? No, I, I am completely yeah, with you on that, He's subsumed yeah, in okay. the algorithmic speaking at this point. Like, it's... Yeah, just you, it's you, fascinating you say to watch. peak fire because it's kind of appealing to you. It's no, big fire and we're so back. Yeah, it yeah, is no, fascinating that's... because yeah, but... this is what just like things, kind of man. silly, isn't it? You know? <laughs> really Remember like your silly. your thought process for using the word um cataclysm for Doctor Strange? Oh yeah. god, I went over <laughs> the amount of words yeah. I went through trying to figure out what it, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's this... the right word? Um, oh yeah, for brainstorming me, the right words. Yeah, well, and then I tested me, it all out on um, loads of people, being like, which do you think captures the what I'm trying to go for? Which do they get it? It's so funny that I could have just said, uh, it's just it's just Valley, bro. Valley. I haven't Valley, done too bro. many too many of them, but like for me, Deep that trench. word would be desec uh, desecration, like the desecration of Luke. Like that was one of my first videos. Like mm. that word just like really that summarizes for me what I feel in terms of character uh, character assassination. Like you've you've just desecrated something special. Just it's ah. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know what you mean, Mark. Sometimes the words, words you know, mean things. That's, that's yeah, words have meaning. They sure do. Not well, I'm not going to blame game. him for destroying Peak. That's the world for you. Uh, <laughs> it no, is this weird, Mark. Right, you know, Ask we, this we all, guy why he's saying Peak. We all make fun Silent. of like radical, and it's like, well, that is just that we, Peak is just this year's version of that, right? That's all that yeah. is. Yeah. Radical, bro. Bring back radical. We've yeah. got tubular. Tubular. <laughs> tubular is a funny one. It always was. I will say, I feel like probably wrong, even biased, but I feel like the eruption of cool being used to describe stuff kind of came up with the '90s and 2000s, and it's it's managed to survive. It's just accepted. Mm. I mean, as, as a person yeah. who was, cool, yeah. I, I, I'm cool. I'm an old man, so I was I was around in that time, and I honestly think it has a lot to do with Bart Simpson specifically. Cool, man. I just think that like it's 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 not cringe enough that it it like burnt out. It just stayed. Yeah. Seeing stuff is cool. Pe peak will leave eventually. <laughs> oh, <what I'm laughs> peak will leave. Here to say. Peak here. will leave the room, and we will all be happier for it. But enough about the Jedi. Let's switch over and talk about the dark side and the Sith. Consider he was like enough about the Jedi. Uh, you, didn't, you barely said you didn't it. talk about him. He said the they... Space Texas he... Cowboys. That's it. Yeah, that's and, enough. Enough. and then they lit the and then they ignited their lightsabers, lightsabers yeah. and it is peak and we're so back and now <laughs> we've invaded. Oh, we're now back well, to the Sith. This is what well, I mean about the distractions, point. like in his editing, where like it's distract like he hasn't said anything. Now he's just like, Oh, enough of the Jedi. You haven't said shit. Like you Well, just... and so for anybody who we're halfway through now. It. That's half of the points done. Yeah. All right. Oh my god. In theory. Considering that their presence is just kind of looming over this entire teaser. It what do you mean looming? They're like actively what do you mean attacking. Just, yeah, <laughs> look, just, that's yeah. about yeah. them. It's, it's right got a there. knife. It's just She's got right a knife. There. They're just yeah. It's about them. <laughs> Assuming this is a yeah, dark side person, wait. I don't even know. Who knows? Because this could just be God. some random assassin, right? Like not I'm random. Not it, it won't be random in the story, but it, it may not be a Sith assassin. I, I feel Paul, like Kieran Kieran Moss is, the, is the Sith Lord person. Hey, I'm I'm leaving it open. I mean, it just I, like I can't I can't help but think that like why do they have her here if they're not going to like make her the 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 one to whom someone becomes an acolyte? Presumably this. Well, chick. so here's a radical thought. We 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 had these thrown out Red. for Obi Wan, and then it turned out to be true. Like maybe she's going to be a good guy by the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. Doesn't yeah. that sound like the kind of shit Disney Star Wars do? Where they're just like, yeah. She, she's misunderstood or she's trying to kill the Jedi because they know they can't 
I was about to throw oh, yeah. in like they Reva! can't know a secret, Reva! and then I was just like, "Fucking whatever." It doesn't need a reason. It would just be like, "Oh, I misunderstood. I thought you guys were the bad guy." <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I whatever, fine. Like, my first take when I saw them fighting is that like they're both gonna be redeemed at the end or anything. Like they they can't be made. They're not gonna make a bad female character. It's just it's Disney. They just can't. Yeah, it just feels like um, good and yeah. Like Reva. When, when designing <laughs> yeah. stories in the little boardroom, it really does feel like someone says, um, "Bad guy turns good." Yeah, that, all right. Nice. Oh, great idea. All right, Someone... see you tomorrow, guys. That's it. <laughs> like, we're pretty much, that's, that's most all... of the season. That's all they <laughs> learn from I... the OT, like, the fact that, Vader, you know, Vader sacrifice. It's, they just don't understand why it was significant. They just Listen, bad guy lady turned good. Again. That's it. And then they have, like, some intern be like, what would we put in the middle? And it's like, come up with something. It's like, what if the little girl was chased by many grown men in a forest? That could be good. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Excellent. That was the scene. That was the odd. Let's make what it go on for a really God. long time. I love that the fucking actress, Baby Leia, like she made fun of that scene. Or, As she should. Or whichever one. Yeah, she yeah, she legend. made fun of that and the the cloak thing, right? She was adorable, and she was actually a good actress when they gave her like you know content for the few scenes. Like I, she doesn't deserve that show. I don't think it'll follow her <laughs> at all. No, I hope no not. One deserves that show. No. But she didn't deserve it. It's just like, like I, just, you know, the whole thing with Jake Lloyd and everything. I, I just, I see her being stronger than that. I think she's gonna like acknowledge what that was. I don't know. Well, just, Jake, I would hate to see Jake Lloyd has schizophrenia. I think he's diagnosed with a mental illness. But oh, does he? Yeah, yeah she's and, um, I mean, no. that's that's. I think to people try to claim that the pressure of what happened with Saul is what gave him schizophrenia, but I think his mum has said that's not true. Mm. Oh, okay. So narrative that people just jumped. Yeah, it's, that's yeah, the thing, man. Let's be honest. People yeah. love a chance to say toxic fans are the worst. They ruin people's lives and all this stuff. When it's we wouldn't advocate narrative. for or ever do any kind of sending messages to actors. That makes no sense. No. Look at all the Rose Tico shit. Like, what? Who gave? Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> other than when <laughs> actors themselves put out a message saying like "fuck all of you," for, you know, if they do something like that, but never for their performances. No. Even if they're shit. Sometimes when they're shit performances, it's funny. Look at Madam Web. <laughs> I think so many people were able to separate. Like, I, I'll give you another good example. Um, Kramer from Seinfeld. I know so many black people who still enjoyed his character as Kramer. Even though, remember that racist rant he went on, like ruined his career, like ten years ago. Yeah, you always got that. Where he, he, he dropped a few N bombs. <laughs> yeah, but you make your decision there of just like you know, on one side, like if a black person, you're offended, but on the other side, man, he's having a bad set. Like it's just like you just you separate <laughs> you separate these things, you know. Because Kramer, that that performance is iconic. I'm not gonna just shit on that. Kevin Spacey I mean, is the, another one. Yeah, yeah, I was about to um, say it was the, <laughs> the eternal question behind every movie Kevin Spacey's ever been in, which was good, which sadly is quite a few. It, yeah, I mean, I he's watched undeniably fantastic and, actor. He's just a piece of he's shit. A, yeah. He's a creepy fucker. That's part of the reason that it, it mm. comes across in all of his performances. Like I watched American Beauty in the theater when I was like in 98. So I would have been like yeah, eight so, yeah. and it's like, like yes. Yeah, and my, my mom 14, would take but... me to these things. They didn't give a fuck. Mm. Um, I just remember being like, this is the creepiest fucking man I've ever seen in a movie. Why'd they take me to this? This is so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Then you, you put, fucking put that with seven and uh, you know, house of cards. It's just like this calculated, oh. manipulative, horrible monster. Mm. <laughs> like you're really yeah. good at playing that guy. Yeah. He's so good, man. I, yeah. I think some Does of the best it really actors... count as him being an actor then. Yeah, you took it out of my mouth. Some of the best actors, Actors have to have a little bit of themselves in the performance. He's an actually creepy, creepy fuck. Denzel's actually a cool motherfucker. Christian Bale, I think, has some serious <laughs> angry anger issues. And, that Anthony comes Hopkins I mean, eating yeah. plenty of people. Actually I old, think. yeah. Yeah. Fava beans. <laughs> 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 I think a piece of it has to be real. A piece for some of the best. It's very rare that things as simple as lightsabers tend to Fuck this my guy. Interest. Oh man, oh yeah. One shot the red <laughs> lightsaber this. igniting and being thrown at the end of this trailer. Tell me why it's good. Come on, I beg you, give me something, anything, Tell me why please. It's good. Do it. Really piques my interest a lot, actually. <laughs> you already why? said that about the other stuff. <laughs> piques your interest. Peak and this one piques your interest, but why? <laughs> Tell me why. <laughs> Now, no to be tired. fair, peak, <laughs> peak, and the, 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 there are two different peaks. One is P E A K, and the other is P I Q U E. Oh, you know which one he's using. Oh, yeah. That's uh, technically two different uses. That. Now, if now if he was to spell them out, I don't know if well, he I'm would saying know he's, his interest was peaked earlier. I'm pretty sure he mentioned that about the fact that it's Jedi detectives or whatever. He's like, oh, my interest yeah. is peaked. He I was sure my did. interest was peaked by the peak fire. <laughs> That's why I peaked because, into like, the trailer. Yeah, the, the Sith are. See, that's three peaks, three different peaks. Damn. 
not -E -K, really P -E -E -K. around, or at least the Jedi are led to believe. If you're asking me, I feel like this show has the potential to fill in some gaps of the prequels and explore the Sith unlike ever Why, what do you, how? How? It's how? Been 100 years before the prequels. Yeah. <laughs> gaps like, like, fill the gaps like in saying, the prequels uh, 100 years before yeah. they happen. What? This is like, like saying that all quiet... All Quiet on the Western Front is going to fill in some gaps from the Hurt Locker. And I'm like, I don't know, guys. This is, this is an odd one. It's going to be Because what the fuck is that? That's such a good point. But this guy should say it absolutely not. This is going to be you know? Saving Private Ryan, and it was yeah. way funnier than it was Hurt Locker. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's shit. about 100 years, so, you know, it's about appropriate. <laughs> God, <laughs> so desperate to even claim anything is happening because nothing's happening. <laughs> like this is, this is a, a prime example of telling you for anyone in the chat who's like, "Oh, the pause now." If, if you're new for this type of shit, this, this is why you pause. You'll miss how fucking stupid this is. Like this is like he's not saying anything. All of this is just complete nonsense. Like it, it's so bizarre to see this. I don't and, even know what um, it could be. It'd have to be like Yoda backstory because he'd hmm. be alive. I mean, unless or... it means lore. Like, does he mean lore stuff? Because do they care about lore? Uh, no. Malorum. Less. I don't even know if they know the meaning. They, they might be like the lore, like L A W, and you're like, no, no, the like oh, stories no. that happened before. Peek in the law. Maybe even giving us our first live action look at Darth Plagueis. I oh, fuck off! No, <laughs> fuck, off. fuck off. Okay, I'm let me be shit. clear. Oh, let me be clear, because this is gonna be people who be like, whoa, 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 why do you hate? Black? It's like it's not about that. It's the like, I I wish I could see a video from someone who speculates Plague is showing up and then follows up with why they would like that yeah. to be explored, yeah. what it's going to mean to the characters, mm -hmm. why we would discover that's more, and maybe even reference to, like, third-party stuff or, you know, EU that's been lost now about, like, how oh, there was a really meaningful story that regarded Plague that they could maybe adapt. Like, just mm -hmm. please give me something instead of, you know, the guy, the the one... He described a key he wants to see jangled. He didn't describe a character that he wants to see. Well, that's what's maybe so he will in the remaining <laughs> like minute of the video. Yeah, Who like, knows? Isn't that, isn't that what, that's what happened to Thrawn, I'm, I'm assuming. Oh, like, yeah. For, after all the hype, yeah. I'm just like, okay, give it to me. Space Tywin, I've heard all this shit. I can't believe we got that coping asshole. Like, it's just... They, they did I, I think he's better on the Rebels. Thing. I'm not even kidding. I, uh, it was... Wrong, but I think I first heard of Thrawn before we'd even started... EFAP and stuff, obviously, because he's he's not exactly a young character in terms of Disney uh, canon. 1993, mm. I think, was but when like, that book came out. I hadn't heard of him because I didn't really explore the extended stuff, but or expanded universe, I guess it was called, right? But like the 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 thing we kept, we'd said for like years on end on EFAP is you don't want him because they'll ruin him, and it's so weird yeah. to think now like they did. They eventually, it took years, but they had him and they ruined him. And it's like, yeah, he, yeah. is Plagueis right. the next one? It's like, yeah, probably. Yeah, He's probably the next one coming and he's going to be ruined. That's what I was saying. I feel like he's going to be the next Thrawn in terms of the same pattern. Because this guy is, like, more people probably know about Plagueis because of the prequels than Thrawn. And Thrawn was still, like, hyped and completely obliterated. I just, from the performance to his pot, like, everything. His posture, his little pot belly, like, just nothing was working. And I just, I don't botch this one if of it like leave this alone leave i don't ever want to see it and but like it's is it not know. indicative to you this it's just like that is star wars isn't it and that's how it churns yeah. the fans forward it's yeah. just like well we haven't ruined this we could see this Dark guy Earth. that hasn't here we they can't like we know this actually has an effect they can't nobody's saying like i hope boba fett gets his own ex it's like yeah because they did it they spent the card it's done it's over yeah, it's ruined Good uh, job, guys. Not to say that if they made a sequel trilogy that people wouldn't be the sequel season that people wouldn't be like, ooh, you know, there'd still be some hype, but like you've killed ooh. the majority of it. So it's like so because Plagueis, thinking about it, that is digging a bit. You know, he's no he's no Obi-Wan Kenobi show. He's no like Clone Wars show. This this is a character that some people may not even know what we're talking about when we say Darth Plagueis. For instance, like, because he's, for a lot of people, he's only referenced, what, in Revenge of the Sith, and that's it, right? That's what I was saying, but yeah. that might be enough, like, I, that's for the casual. That's what I'm getting at, is the, the they have been, they have squeezed so much of Star Wars, you're just like, what, what do they have left? And they've started, like, uh, it would be useful to have Ryan here to sort of explain this, but they squeeze the shit out of expanded stuff without people mostly knowing. Like, they've mm. stolen so many, sh so many character ideas, and then, like, ruined them. Yeah. It's um, it's remarkable actually. Like, if we had a hundred things they could have gotten to, they've gotten to like sixty, sixty-five, and uh, it just feels oh, like boy. yeah, we're we're gonna keep going, and the plague is maybe next on the plate at some point.
It's just what can we use? What can we like just milk? There's just no story time. I, I'm really shocked like. they haven't used no. Revan or Darth Bane yet because those are probably yeah, the those will probably come up. Star Killer. Star Killer. I'm not sure if they want to canonize Star Killer at all. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't think so. Especially I, on that Star Killer base, you know, there's like I, <laughs> still a bit too much overlap. Never even Plus, played the it's game. Not theirs. I, I never even played well, the no, game. Well, no, but they but steal. I, I distinctly yeah, remember. Well, I, um, <laughs> I think they I would rather like I had, man. Is, try to make their memorable. own stuff. What, like a, Rave? They might. What they yeah, might do I, is bring I, in, announce that we're going to be having a new character that was an apprentice of Darth Vader. It's going to be played by Sam Witwer, and he's not going to be called Star Killer. But the you, you'll understand. Gonna Everyone's going to get super hype, and then they he, release the show, and it's terrible. And we go, oh. It's gonna oh be I think he might. Again. I think he might be a character in that new Ubisoft game coming out, the Outer Worlds one, or what? I don't know. Whatever. He certainly still it, the... participates. Uh, something the theory brought up on uh, one of our latest Stargrifts was that he's sad that. There used to be a time, and I and because it's one of the clips I reference in GFA Part Four, I think, of um, or three, where Samwit was making fun of TLJ on his live stream, and he says like, "Yeah, that was like one of the last times you'll get yeah. that." He doesn't do it anymore. Like he doesn't. He's not that honest about his perspective on Star Wars anymore. Because, you know, you can't be and simultaneously continue to work. To, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And it sucks because I'm sitting here like that. That that is shit actually. Because yeah, you kind of need to toe the line somewhat if you want to make a difference from the inside. You know. Mm -hmm. Played a game. That's yeah. Sad, man. <laughs> well, and it's funny, right? Because you might see gone. John Favreau or Dave Filoni as being that kind of thing. And it's just like, why aren't they, they have power now? Use it. <laughs> Make yeah. good change <laughs> if you can. But the people who do that, look what happened. I feel like Edward Norton would have been a better Hulk. He would have had the balls. We've talked about this before. Oh, and sure. Like, yeah. But he's just <laughs> too disagreeable, right? And yeah, and he's probably he could get prob called problematic. Uh, Henry Cavill for wanting to like stick to the lore. Uh, uh, Jen Ortega. Um, well, as much as difficult, I get what you're saying. Life. It could be something that we're not, like. It could have been that working with Edward Norton is so fucking difficult. You never want to work with him again, sort of thing. Could be that. I I, I would like to know what well, one thing I can't remember where I heard it, but I do remember him saying that he wanted it to be like more, much more gritty. He wanted the 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 Incredible Hulk to the movie to begin with him trying to kill himself. Well, he wanted a much darker version of it. And yeah, that keep alone, in mind, um, he wanted I think to he had his own script and he wanted to uh, film his own scenes like while they were filming the scenes for the main directors, so he could present like okay. his own ideas. Which okay, maybe a bit is, of both. I was gonna say that's quite an ask considering Joss Whedon got cancelled for having said like fuck you to people giving him script notes. Like not even <laughs> filming their own right. shit. Like imagine directors who just aren't interested at all and then you go like yeah can we just take five to, to film my scene? You'd be like uh no yeah. you fucking no. delusional freak. Like why would we ever do that? <laughs> We're like okay jeez. How do you get to the point that you're in business together, making a film, and you guys don't have like your 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 mutual interests established and like clearly like? I actually think that's what you want probably more common. The higher the budget goes, because everyone's thrown together, like and just like mm. make the thing. We all know you're reliable, and then they all clash on their different operations. Like yeah, when they bring in like a, a fixer up, a director who's supposed to get the job done, it's specifically because they'll be like, you go there, you go there, you go there, and someone's like, oh, I had an idea. It's like shut the fuck up, go there, Sta yeah, stand there right yeah. now, and you're like, oh, okay. There's no room for it at that point. Yeah. It's a simple thing of like, try ordering a pizza with three people. Okay, and I'll try ordering a pizza with 17 people. You can put pe Oh, chaos. I thought you meant as a topping. <laughs> so, <laughs> three people as toppings. Right, right. Like, oh, oh, I'll dare you. That's <laughs> a big that's pizza. Like, you just know it gets so complicated. Like, uh, there's too many cooks in the kitchen type thing. And uh, Especially with this, when you have the Disney production where they just have to churn out the, the sludge yes, every fucking month. Yes. And it's like, we can't do anything different. Yeah. What's yeah. the thing, right? The yeah. bean counters and stockholders, they like produce more make more money and then the money starts going down yeah. stock starts going down it's like whoa, whoa, whoa okay stop what's going on like and then it's like turns out it's quality and they're like what what is that what is that word what does, what does that mean i just can't you make more and and then more happens yeah the disconnect um yeah these certain it's like you never know like I, I i think this is true i hope it is but i remember when they went in to make the lord of the rings Peter jackson they thought they were only gonna let them make one movie and like there's three books make three movies and then they're like okay and then that's how they got the the green light to go through it. yeah i think he was interested in making two right and then they said do three and no, like oh shit it was one he just thought they only let him commit to make one and they he's no there's three books make three movies we're like all right bro let's go <laughs> I, I remember, let's do this well i know it's, originally um, the hobbit trilogy was going to be two movies oh for fuck Snakes that should have been just should have been zero, but like it, oh. one. <laughs> what are the, what are the most Jeez. jokes, man? The Hobbit is just it was I nice being back in the earth. But damn it. A, they no. could probably have made three Hobbit book, the Hobbit movies if they were you know 
Because uh, absolutely, they could have. One of the things that struck me about the Hobbit know. films, not to go on another tangent, is just that like uh, how little I understood the the main characters, and it's like, yeah, you could have. There's so many scenes we're missing where I got to know them, so you could obviously hey, put them because in. of our Mary, of our three main characters, only one of them was good. So, do you remember Mary when 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 the Hobbits were leaving the Shire, and they're like, we have to get the Bree, and Mary's like, Buckleberry Fairy, come with me, like later, let's go. Let's, he knows the he doesn't know what the fuck's going on, but that's a friend. Like immediately, we get their characters established from the very beginning and like it's it's so nice to have them helping during that situation because you're, you're fucking getting chased by nazgul and shit and that took what 30 seconds oh, they couldn't do that for like for oh, 10 dwarves i don't know one of the names i can tell you a damn thing about any of the dwarves and, and like i one really you couldn't from the rest one of them likes the elf lady to be no, fair i, I to be really fair, don't remember that movie at all legolas all right, was a dick to be thought. fair some of the dwarves are actually quite well characterized but... which were you, know, were you problem... thinking of specifically Balin, maybe? Dwalin. There's one dude who looks kind of like Chad like, and the rest of them were just like just the uh, no the one that dwarves. which the, the one Dwalin? that typically comes to Dwalin is the the first one who arrives. He's the big the, he's the bald one, right? The big warrior right. guy. I remember and liking Balin. Okay. Hot take, hot yeah, take. Balin is good, but I'll Dwalin take Durin. Is one who just... The the dwarves and Rings of Power were better than the dwarves in the Hobbit. I, I no, will throw that out there. Yes, no, Durin. no. Durin has got dad. a lot of issues. No, Durin's no, 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 got no. too many issues. <laughs> Not talking about writing. Not talking about writing. Like gotta watch the I'm talking about the betrayals. Oh, wow. I liked Durin. I liked his drama with his dad. That that was the only part of the show that had any anything to it. I, don't I, know, I, I think Balin and Dwalin were quite good. And during his strong moments, Thorin's very good. The problem is Thorin's hit and miss, but. You know yeah, what? I haven't seen the movie long enough. Maybe I shouldn't say that, but I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> Rob is like, yeah, we gotta get back to Plagueis. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get back to Plagueis. He might be. Oh yeah, he might be here. He look at that! Look at that image. Uh, it's eyes and a cloak wow. and red. It doesn't mean anything to me. Yes, it, it does. It's, it's peak I, cool Sith. Shadow and flame. This is it's, fucking yeah, power. I just do like dark Plagueis. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing here. Oh, so it wasn't meaningful. It was just spitball. Plagueis will show up. Admit it. God <laughs> damn truth it. is nothing more than speculation. However, considering that everything- Why do you keep doing that with his hands? He like puts him like they're like, he's like karate chopping and he'll karate I chop know. you. He's karate chopping What's your bad opinions finger? with his good ones. Is that a wedding ring that's black? Has really been kept- Yeah. On his finger? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 I was gonna what? say something when people said he's like 20 years old. I was like, I don't know, he's- Well, it doesn't have to ring. be a wedding ring, ring, I guess, but it's weird to put it on that finger if it's not. Yeah, yeah, like that's and it is on your finger. wedding rings on your left hand, right? How yeah common is it for people that's to wear just... rings there when they're not married? I have no. I idea. mean, most people wouldn't do it that. It shouldn't be common at all. Yeah, yeah, most You're, people wouldn't. It, do it, that. It, it, I'm trying to Twitter, think of the last time I've seen him. that, and it's like one of you. Oh, hey, one of you, go ahead on Twitter. Like, just, just ask him. It's like, hey, I noticed in your video you wear a black wedding ring. What's, uh, what's up with that? Oh, Are I you thought you were gonna say right. Like, do a poll to see if people do it, and then I was like, yeah, but you got to apply to the. The algorithm. So find out about a distant fucking fun fact about Star Wars and go like, do you guys, I, I've always, I can't stop thinking about the, the bonus, <laughs> blah, 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 and then right at the end say like, by the way, do you ever see people with wedding rings where they don't have, <laughs> <laughs> just, the people I can't it. get over the fact that despite not being married, Han Solo was wearing a wedding ring for the entire original trilogy. <laughs> have you guys seen this typically in your life, your day to day? Is this normal? <laughs> people don't answer the poll, they just like the tweet. It's like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Despite million... taking place entirely in a Star Wars uniform, Han Solo looks exactly <laughs> like Harrison Ford. Whoa! Coincidence? <laughs> hmm. I can't stop thinking about it. Under wraps wow. about the show until now. I feel like they're hiding something big. However, I guess we'll find out what the series. He oh, just really? always Why? starts with a karate chop. Every time it cuts to him, <laughs> karate chop. What do you chops think they're hiding camera. something big? Do you think that they would ever hide something from a show that's many, many, many minutes longer than two minutes? So here's the thing. I think they need to pull out some stops here because people aren't going to care about this show. I don't think. No, they There's they nothing. need to uh, show they need to show something. Like, uh, get the, people, oh, it's shit. not just um. Anakin. When we say key jangling, we're not just talking about the insipid and fucking substanceless form of marketing. It's like, well, it does work somewhat. It gets people to be like, oh, I'll watch this. Yoda's in it. I like that guy. People like if the this, Kenobi it's, trailer. It's, 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 Anakin will show up. So yeah, just I would expect them. That's the trump card. In trailers, but like you know, but he's spe like to speculate like Darth Plagueis could show up. It's like you do know that most Star Wars fans don't even know like how much of an implication on anything that is. It would be like, oh, okay. Um, you get the people who are obsessive in a good way. Like you know, even us, we we know somewhat of what he means. But 
I mean, first of all, it's Disney. But secondly, if he was to turn up at the end of the season, for example, and it's like, oh my god, he was the one pulling all the strings. Whoa! Get ready for Acolyte Season 2. We're all gonna be like, wow. okay. Not gonna beat anything. He's just fucking Snoke, I guess. He's just gonna, like, but is he gonna be killed before the prequels? <laughs> oh, like, don't uh, remind me. Maybe one of the twenty-seven Snoke clones. Or the, first Snoke cl the first Snoke clone ever got oh, sent four hundred years, like two hundred years back in time. <laughs> Pouring out for Snoke. Pouring out. Look at how bad the ending Snoke. one. Pouring into the skull's face. Snoke's face. Fucking hell! Through the portal that the lady opens with the Jedi blood. I still think we could fix the whole franchise if we make Snoke the woman in the archives of Obi Wan talks to in Attack of the Clones. That is the key. <laughs> it just don't you think it brings everything together? Kind of, it's like, oh shit, that makes sense. We start I mean... streaming on Disney Plus this June. You can rest assured, I've already planned to cover every single episode on this channel. Does this not feel more like an ad than a breakdown? Yeah, I I'm telling you, yeah, it's just like... an ad. It's a hey, Star Wars video, is back. Right? Peak fire. I'll watch. I'll cover all the episodes here on this all channel. Wow! Can't wait to see what it is. It, we are so back, everybody. He, he was talking we... though. Uh, he was talking about doing reviews of the show in YouTube short format. So I think that this is him trying to, to figure that out. He was talking about Bad it Batch matches. when he said that because nothing happens oh, in Bad Batch bad episodes. Batch? Oh, okay. Like it to this is a man who he's struggling to get to three minutes talking about this trailer. Meanwhile, we nearly got to an hour talking about the trailer. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. We got Twenty um, minutes on the beer guy. Exactly. So we, the, we did more than his video with one second. But the, doesn't doesn't that I feel like that's indicative of a genuine passion? And I hate using that yeah. word, but like I what I guess I'm thinking about is like it's it's the we have this we're trying to explain why we have the points of view we have based on everything that we've experienced with everything up to this point and what we think this is going to be meanwhile he's like lightsabers looking good let's go yeah like, okay my interest yeah like, do, you, do you like this stuff man mm. like really do or do you just think it looks stuff? nice it's pretty peak every single episode <laughs> on this channel until then we can't really do anything else other than speculate so i'm very excited for the but show you've done basically the... nothing he's uh, barely speculated yeah. no speculation he hasn't said anything how is this a breakdown he just threw out, maybe Plagueis will show up. I don't know, lol. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't, has he even, has he even talked about Yoda? Has he even talked about the potential of Yoda? What it would be? Right. And what, it, what it could add? It'll you know fill in gaps that, of the prequels. That's what it'll do. That, that would actually be a big indicator of if he actually does care, because one of the potentials should be Yoda. And if he cares, he should mention that. But I just feel like he's yeah. just throwing shit out. The vibe of the trailer. I think it's going to be great. And beyond that, I'm going to take this time to recommend Light of the Jedi by Charles Sewell. If you've never read that, it's a great introduction to the High Republic era of Star Wars. Absolutely phenomenal book. Cannot recommend it. Why? What's, what's oh, why? Why would I you fucking do that? What's good about it? You just he literally just said it like an ad. Yeah, yeah like you didn't tell us yeah. anything. It's like, great. Why? He said it's a great introduction to the High Republic. It's really good. Here's who wrote it. You should listen. You should like tell me it's, about it, man. Yeah, like what? what who is your favorite character in it? And why should I? Without spoiling, you know, like why? What book. character dynamics or adventures? How do they pace? Just tell me anything about. It's a book. Yeah, <laughs> it's really things know. that happen in it, right? All these words in it, you can tell me about. It's good. It's crazy. You can release videos every day on a rescue mission. Like there's, there's a million possibilities rescue what this book could mission. be about, and he didn't yeah. try to illustrate yeah. anything. Like they any got of a it. dinosaur guy. What's his story? What does he do? <laughs> yeah, things to find out or something? Isn't he, isn't he like one of Bosk's? Uh, boss, 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 geez, how do you do the possessive of Bosk? Bosks. I, I look at this. Jeez, geez, oh man, that's yes. a lot of best sounds. I, I look at this and I feel like they, the least interesting thing to them, the creators of this, the least interesting thing in this picture is the alien guy over there like that no interest in their abilities like just there's so many things we can explore when have we actually explored we have to tell the stories of these strong women in their lightsabers like look at the hair aliens. too yeah the haircut this the haircut man i've it's seen people point out the 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 haircut of the the guy at random point in this trailer is the same haircut as a lot of uh people Every, a lot of stuff yeah. these days that uh, Echo, Kasanse, oh, yeah. Killmonger. There's when so someone many. brought it up, they were like, "When was the last person you saw in real life?" I was like, "Fuck yeah, it's been." Uh, we're talking not just real life, but also like vlogs and people just did videos. Mm. I was like, "I haven't seen that haircut like ever." It's always I mean, where is that shit? They just they, th they think every single black person has that haircut, and it's like in games, movies, every like. I've, I, there's like five different other examples we didn't mention. I can't remember them, but Miles, Miles has Miles. That there's another yeah, one. There's another one too. 
There's another one. I don't oh, know that what it suit is. with his hair coming out got made fun of. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah that part was very, really done. Very Batwoman. <laughs> very Batwoman. <laughs> I mean that, and that that very suit. easily identifiable. One might uh, <laughs> say that because mm, instantly suit. you're like, oh, Spider-Man. He's a black guy. Uh, yeah, they don't care about really young. He has a distinctive haircut. It's like, all right, we've narrowed it down significantly at a glance <laughs> yeah, who the as fuck? to who you are. Who like, hides their identity wanna... anymore? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Miles, like that. Miles has a good suit. Like, his suit looks fine in the game for most of it. And then they change him to this really weird looking one at the end that's well, yeah, got all and that's like, like and the lights on cool it. Suit. And... And it's like, dude, I, just give me the yeah. normal one. <laughs> the hell is this? <laughs> I remember way back when um, Spider-Man 2 came out, I had like a friend's older brother who was pissed that Spider-Man kept taking off his mask. He shouldn't be doing that, shouldn't be doing that. And he just, like that was just like the tiny bit of it. But compared to now, where like they always just... With nanotech it. helmets, yeah. Yeah, nanotech yeah, bullshit. It's annoying. But just, it's not just the John nanotech Hayward. Isn't it sad that like that's just so far down the list, though? <laughs> like of, of the yeah. issues. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Fucking nanotech. A minute enough, and I think it would be perfect to kind of lead you into the acolyte. Again, I thought this. Why? Um, why? why? You don't know what the, the acolyte's about. You don't know anything yeah. about the acolyte. Uh, you know, I, oh, I, it's it's an an ad. Ad. I feel like that's it's because uh that book was presented when the High Republic launched as like the book. The introduction. That's like yeah. the one that you're meant to read. But to he lead didn't even say into. that. He if he'd said that, that no, would I know he substance. didn't even say that, but but I, I do well, find it, it's it's just funny because he's just saying what the marketing for the book is. Like, mm -hmm. he's not actually providing a new insight into why, and would it even be? Isn't this, aren't they separated by like a hundred years? I, 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 now I, I want to know. You know what I'm getting well, <laughs> Now I want to like, know. Well, as I was trying to point out, he can't know that it would be a good lead up because he's he's not seen Acolyte. He has it's no not even clue. Out yet. Yeah, I don't, he's he's read, I don't think he's read that book. This is Apparently the High Republic spans 500 to 100 years, so it could be as many as 400 years <laughs> earlier than that. <laughs> oh, man. Good yeah, that probably fills yeah, in some we... gaps. And he doesn't yeah, know what the say, show's about. Uh, Don't know what... Hmm. So I'm saying this guy okay, is like... Okay, like so like... the Light of the Jedi is set 200 years before the Phantom Menace, so... I don't know, man. A hundred years apart, yeah. and it's gonna be a good lead into the acolyte. Like, this I know that there's is, actually no reason to conclude on one way or the other, but on the basis of this information, well, I would why. conclude that it's not a good lead into yeah. the acolyte at that, all. Well, it's, that it's, it's the totally fact different you irrelevant stories. It's as far away from the acolyte as the acolyte is as from it Phantom is from the Phantom Menace. Yeah. But remember, he thinks that it ties into the prequels. This is why you don't hmm. elaborate on your points. Just say them real quick and just people absorb it. Like I was gonna say this guy seems like enthusiastic Chris Duckman. He's got all this editing and energy, but he's not saying anything. Like both of them just don't uh, say anything. Oh, incredibly yeah. hollow. Thanks for the energy. Incredibly oh, you knew that he knew that, right? Like he had that's nothing. Mad. Absolutely nothing. But that's why I was saying from the beginning. Like but, I just but how does he have nothing? Okay, but charity. like this is the thing that I don't get about some people. Um, if you're presented with a stone, and that's it, there's a white room, and there's a stone, and they say, talk about it for an hour, I'd be like, mm. all right, I think I, I can do this. We gotta give this stone a name. <laughs> you gotta give him a name and a story. Not even yeah. that. I mean, like, uh, they go, review the stone. I'd be like, okay. It's history. You know, like, like okay. but what I, I guess I'm getting at is, history. I might struggle to get it to an hour, but I can get it to more than three fucking minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, definitely. You can look at the color. And I don't even care about the stone. Like I'm not a stone expert. I don't know stone yeah. stuff, and yet I can still do it. Can I, how far look can I the throw it? Does it bounce well, off the wall? Can, can I, well, yeah, can you I can test all that stuff it? and pee on it. What does it, it taste like when I lick it? <laughs> I think I'm prepared for this one. I think I'm going to do it. I taste it before <laughs> the game part, but yeah. Uh, the fact that he couldn't, str he struggled to say anything about it, and he's so excited. Another, well, he, apparently I he's about to excitement. reiterate what he's already said because he started the sentence again. <laughs> this trailer was great. It gave me kind of everything that I expected. What's your and what? even a little bit more, but it still kind of keeps a lot of stuff up to interpretation. So for that alone, A+, plus. I can't wait to see where they go. Jeez. Again. Fucking Christ. <laughs> so basically, fucking so, Christ. so essentially he said it, it have had been everything... I, it had everything that I was expecting and more, and it left a lot of room for other stuff. A plus. Mm, yep. <laughs> like, what would have made okay, it easier for an A minus? All right. I want to ask him, what does an F minus trailer look like? What is yeah. that? What does a Steam trailer look like? What does it look yeah, like yeah, when like, it's do you, not give me average trailer? 
A minus. I want to see what an A minus looks like. Let's, a let's, plus. Let's give, one of the best trailers first. ever made. This is why I hate when people throw numbers and like and those different like elite numbers is a little bit better, but specific gradings. It's like, what does that mean? Like, well, really? no, I, yeah, I, when, when I assume your issue is more so when the grades don't mean anything. Like, if you're just throwing exactly. it's the same like, numbers. If I'm gonna make a if I'm yeah. gonna make a tier list, I'm gonna spend like hours going over the exact criteria of each letter and how they connect to each other. And how that, like, it's it, it should there should be a structure there they can actually follow. So S tier means something. You can have fun with it, you know. But like at the same time, just don't throw out a random A minus because I oh, don't think you're gonna be plus. consistent with that. A, a, a plus. Yeah, this, oh yeah, bro. Oh my god. Plus. That's the thing. A like plus. I want to know, like, what made it an A plus and not yeah. an A or an A minus? Because I don't even think you could tell us that. <laughs> I would want to hear this guy tell me like why Godzilla minus one is good. Like, just tell me. Like, you just think Godzilla it, is peak is fire is. Is there? It are we actually going to elaborate on these people things? Were What's uh, Japanese? Particularly <laughs> funny is if it had this level of enthusiasm or review, and then it ends with saying like A minus. You're like. Wait, why? <laughs> like, Wait, where did the minus come in? Like, what? What did it do? Wrong? It wasn't as good as the Acolyte trailer. Mm. <laughs> it's true. And somehow even more hyped than before. Thoughts. Like, I didn't think that was possible, but here. This, this dude, dude is my new glove. By the way, glove shitto. By the way, okay, that that's uh, that's kids' terms that I don't understand. Uh, well, glove glove shitto is just a classic sort of. I love glove shitto. I think the origin yeah. of that is that um, there's a tweet. That, a tweet. Yeah, yeah, let me find it actually, because I remember it is a funny tweet. Um, it's really it's really good tweet. Tweet. Oh, I, I'm unaware of this entire. It's I've a really never good heard tweet. of that before. I like referencing glove shitto because it's so accurate. Oh, yeah, the, I'm just happy the you appreciate this little guy too. Yeah, so the tweet is, every time a new Star Wars movie or show is announced, all the fans are like, quote, oh my god, Glup Shido is back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I Which I, is, I like a lot, it's true. But the, the thing is, what I really like Glup about that tweet Shido. is the better times of Star Wars where that would be something that, like, you do feel, but you there's a backing of substance. You're like, oh shit, yeah, that's happening, but also it means this, this, this. Because yeah, like, Star Wars' web. packaging is goofy as fuck at times, but it's like, fine totally fine like the the silly names or the absurd like looking things in different places and stuff like the cantina is filled with there's like a werewolf in the cantina in a new hope yeah yeah who cares because it's like no, you're be you, yeah i, I might have known the werewolf's name i know that one of the most expensive star wars toys to find like one of the most valuable ones back in the day was a random cantina goer named yak face <laughs> It was like just, 150 bucks if you wanted to buy one in a package, which at the time was a lot for a secondhand action figure. And I think but it's the impact you can have is just a when, random character side, you know? Yeah, when you have names like that in the original canteen or in that movie and you find it out because you get every single figure and you dig down into like one of the deepest fucking forms, you find out it's like, yeah, that guy, that guy's name is fucking Thumbo Groin. And you're like, that is so fucking funny. <laughs> but then. When everything falls apart and everything is shit, and then you find out that one of the characters in Solo was called Thurm Scissor Punch, everyone's like, "Ah, oh, shit." <laughs> yeah. I, I think the best monster, example, though. the best but example like, of that, is probably uh, Lurtz, because his name wasn't said in the movie. People just fucking from. Well, yeah, but Lurtz is a really cool name. What I, what I'm getting at is that the goofiness becomes like not endearing when the content surrounding it isn't well made. It's it, when it, yeah. it starts to come off as just like lame and gay and just trying to like you know appeal. And like, look, we're Star Wars because we have goofy name. You're like, shut up, <laughs> shut go up. away. I, pref I prefer the the groin names when they were trying. <laughs> like, it makes yeah. sense. groin names. <laughs> My groin is many names. What did you think of the trailer? Let me know down in the comments. Below. You don't uh, care. Amazon. You, you don't, don't care. care. You don't you care. You don't. You don't care about care. us. God damn it! <laughs> didn't say anything. How could he care what we have? Please like, comment, and subscribe. Nope, nope, nope. Hit that bell to stay notified. And until oh, the next no. video, my God. Of course, the video is only four with. minutes long. Where's half a minute's oh, worth wow. of shit? It's already done. Like that's it. Oh, half a oh, minute. Oh, look at his half a minute. His outro seconds. image is the world between worlds. Seconds. Possibly the most that's damage funny. has been done to Star Wars. Uh, mm -hmm. He really didn't like the idea of uploading a trailer under four minutes or uploading. Oh, right, Springy. I have, I have like, I learned things from the Star Grift episodes that I just like. I am tempted to watch the Clone Wars just with you guys, just so that we can learn oh about boy. this. Like, I there's gonna be people listening to this who are like, "Why is he re recounting it so weirdly?" But like, this is this is all I got. Okay, Ahsoka and Vader have a fight. The whole building like falls apart, and then he leaves, and then she leaves. But then seasons later, we find out that Ezra goes into the world between worlds and pulls her out of the fight. 
even though we saw her leave the fight. And so the assumption from fans is that she eventually went back through the world between worlds to re-enter that world in order to walk away in continuity, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, it sounds like a good show. I remember, like, when, <laughs> when this was being explained to me and I saw some clips, I was just like, what the fuck was going on in the Clone Wars? <laughs> like, what? Why did you need to tell this story? Like, what happened? And, you know, it's funny because a lot of it is now bleeding into, like, live action stuff. Because the world between yeah, worlds, when we saw it, was absolute insane nonsense. But there's a lot of people who are trying to explain it to make it make sense based on the Clone Wars stuff. Or Rebels. Well, or it, World Between Worlds, I believe, was only in Rebels. So right, that's right. A, that's an even newer thing that they threw in. And most people actually thought they were throwing that in there so that they could maybe, like, retcon the sequel trilogy. Because it, <laughs> it's time travel, effectively. It's, hey... You can walk. Uh, no, Dave Filoni said it's in... not time travel. Yeah. I mean, exactly. okay, but I'll tell you what happens, though. It's you can walk through one door and then <laughs> go to another door in the world between worlds and then walk out in a different time. Okay, so yeah, you can go between be different travel, times, but you can't time travel. Yeah, yeah I mean, okay, yeah, no, that's why I was very specific <laughs> with my words. So you can go between different travel, times and change that's, events, that's but there's does. no time traveling. Yeah, just yeah, making sure everyone understands. It's hard to understand, my God. <laughs> it's, it's also the only reason Ahsoka is alive, because, like, she she was supposed yeah, to be more killed than once. by Vader. And, well, I, I mean, yeah, technically true. But, I mean, even on Rebels, it was Ezra opens a, opens a portal while he's in the world between worlds. It's like, oh, shit, Ahsoka's going to die, and then just pulls her in. I'm not kidding. That's how that's how Star Wars evades like certain death. Listen, you guys need to let Filoni save Star Wars. Yeah, let him save it. He's, he's, do, he's, he's gonna do it soon. He's gonna do it. He's gonna Mando, save it. Mando really... and Grogu movie. Oh, mwah, that's gonna. That's yeah. trust me. This is gonna make sense. It's really yes. fucking dope. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we need to. Yeah. No, yeah. we don't. That's it. <laughs> it's just, no, there might be an after credit scene. Minute. It's four minutes long, and the last forty-five seconds is. Oh yeah, comment below. You know what? What do you think? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell, and then just this out of a out of a yeah, four-minute video. Maybe he doesn't, he's trying to see if he, he doesn't actually give a shit. Beats algorithm. Just no, that no, didn't feel like it was made beats. by a human. He's he's no, gradually being taken over by algorithms. This poor bad. He's yeah. not human anymore. I don't know if he's looking for attention. I don't know if he's trying to just like live this fake life or to get some vibe. Or he got he's got the poster. He has Skynet's the most Chico Funko Pop. Maybe this but is an no, analog horror channel. This is Chat GPT. It's They're infecting shill. him. He's just a shill. He's just there a is no shill in for Star video. Wars. There's like no I have soul. no idea what that guy no is soul. like. Like I don't know his per like. There was it was just yeah AI nonsense. It it's just. I don't know, he could be a completely different person in another video and have a completely proper take, but we're never going to see that. We get this fake AI version of him, but like, it's, it's not real. And there's no longevity in this because people can sn sniff through this shit on YouTube. YouTube is all about being real because people can fucking tell. It's the whole point of the platform. And it's just, oh, uh, how people get away with this shit. His icon, he's got a lightsaber in his icon, but I could, I didn't tell originally because he has a blue background and he has a blue lightsaber, and I didn't even notice. <laughs> oh, really? that's yeah. funny. Uh, his <laughs> pronouns are in his YouTube bio. <laughs> Is it he? Him? Uh, yeah, he's he, him. <laughs> that's what I'm fucking calling him. It feels weirder when they, they announce the pronouns when it's not, you know, like crazy the ones oh like are. strange different from like, when the they're point? like zim i'm like yeah of course you need to let people know about that because <laughs> but he him you're just like, oh, yeah. like this is good pretend. that's what that's what i was gonna call you any fucking way so it's good that those are the ones that you've decided i need to use so uh regrettably that is it for the star wars portion of this oh what? i know you guys were loving talking about star wars but now mm -hmm. we're moving on to marvel oh, and God. um this is a video that has been requested more than a couple of times. It is from uh, an old friend, Pop Culture Detective. Do you guys remember that name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do Macintosh. remember that. Nice, Macintosh. Yeah. Macintosh, yeah. indeed. Anita the... Sarkeesian's writer. Well, her, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the story there is the he d he edited for her, and then she like I guess split up from him, and he created a channel that's actually successful. <laughs> and she does not have anything successful on YouTube at all, because uh, he knew That's... how to make the videos oh, right. Like he, and it, to be fair to him, like you'll you'll see from this, his editing is good, um, and his references are good. His arguments, not so much. Well, I, uh -oh. what do I know? We've only covered him, I think, twice across all of EFAB. I'm trying to remember. I mean, at least she just got married. 
Yeah, good for her. That's true. She got Birthday married to Millie Bob. That's true. <laughs> that would actually it's, be pretty damn funny, though, if it were true. It is. No. Your life is not going good if your best man is Movie Bob, and that's the best you can get. Well, that was a meme picture, you know. This all, yes, this is all a meme, everyone. This is all a meme picture of... It, it's a meme. She's not actually married to Movie Bob. But that the meme be I prefer hilarious. is marrying Sargon. I think that's way funny. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's yeah. Really Sargon's way funny. They settled their differences. Anyway, uh, this is called Marvel's Defenders of the Status Quo. Now, before we hit play, what do you guys think it'll be about? Uh... Marvel? I mean, it sounds like he's gonna criticize Marvel for just playing it safe, I guess. Or mm. Wait, what's the name of the what's the name of the video again? Yeah, Marvel's the Defenders of the Status Quo. Uh I'm guessing it's gonna be about how uh one of the principal complaints, the principal unfounded complaints about phase four is that instead of what we typically saw, which was a lot of male superheroes, it's starting to become there's a lot more female superheroes, and because people don't like that, they then invent problems to explain why Marvel is failing yeah. so that they can return to the status quo. What if I told of, uh, you straight white men protagonists? The criticism yeah. is actually applicable to all of the MCU's storytelling. All of the MCU's storytelling? All. Because I was thinking Fringy sounds way more right than I would, considering it's Jonathan McIntyre. Well, now that he said that, that changes it. Yeah. So where <laughs> I don't. Now, now I think it would be something different then. I'll be honest with you. When uh, I saw the title, I was like, what is this about? And then I listened to it, I was like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I've not heard someone say this before. Is this the guy that made that, like, TLJ video just interpreting everything as, um, like, I, I can't remember what it was. Um, we covered a lot of TLJ videos in our time. I'm not uh, sure if I remember his name. Yeah, I have to be more specific than that. I'm just trying to blank. TLJ broke everyone's brains. <laughs> <laughs> interpreting Finn's as like actions as like cowardly or some shit when really like he had no fucking allegiance to to, to them and like he was just trying to fucking find Ray. He might have. Maybe. Yeah, he he maybe. basically manipulated the shit out of a scene. I remember this name. He was one of the guys in the. Um, what? It'll come to me when I can. Mm -hmm. I I don't know now. Actually, now that you said that, now I don't know. Fair enough. <laughs> what is going to be about? We will. Uh, Tony Stark. That will set her up. I guess we'll find out. Oh, you didn't mention this, that it was the hidden politics of Marvel movies. That changes my answer entirely. I didn't say that. You didn't say that part of the title. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying if you said that, then I that know if I had said something else, you would have had a different answer. Yeah, I, I gave you yeah, something specific you, on you purpose. Said, you said it was the title, but it wasn't the title. This is the title. The, well, to be fair, it is the title. Uh... Um, I'm show because you. now, because now, yeah, now I think I know exactly what it means. It's that the authority is always right. The way that society exists is always right, and uh, anybody who deviates from or challenges that is presented as being wrong. That would be my guess. As yeah, to, but the, hence why the, it's the, more interesting like, to ask you with not that part. I suppose. <laughs> Let's see. Bling, 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 bling. Life in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Where is it weird oh, that in that that's room? why I don't oh recognize it. I, I, yeah, I thought yeah. that was Jonathan McIntosh. I think that's the that. opening like, scene shit, where like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's like Kate Bishop lived in New York and her home got destroyed, but then Hawkeye saved her life. Mm -hmm. And that's what inspired her to become Hawk uh, I herself. Hawk Girl. But not to be confused Hawk with Hawk Girl. Hot <laughs> girl. Hawk yeah, Hawk girl is a character. Hawk guy. <laughs> Hawk, Hawk dude. Guy. Hawk bro. <laughs> Hawk bro. Yes. Yeah, I'm Hawkeye, bro. Hawkeye, and I'm Hawk guy. <laughs> <laughs> and this is these are my sisters, Hawk girl and Hawk girl. If you say my name real fast, it sounds like you're saying Hot guy. Yeah. <laughs> Which I am, Hawk guy would be an absolute nightmare for the average person living on planet Earth. We've, we've said this, um, like, it would yeah, never yeah. be an accurate thing I've heard in one of these videos. There are universes yeah, you wouldn't mind living in, this is not one of them. You'll get yeah, abused no, no, instantly. It, it is, well, it. it's the, the constant threat of interdimensional terrors and existential threats, your free will being taken away, the scrolls, 
Yeah. The just wanton destruction. Remember how many time, infinite timelines essentially being erased in the Loki show, all the multiverse of madness incursion stuff. You might just be living Titans your life and all of a sudden... Out of your planet. Yeah, Wanda you might just... Your, children. <laughs> your world just might be destroyed just, completely and there's nothing you can do about it and just the horrors of the annihilation of the timelines. On some superheroes to solve those problems and then one time they tried to they created the problem and nearly destroyed the world yeah <laughs> and then irrelevant of your thoughts and feelings they decided what's best for your family members that may or may not have been yeah. blipped blipping back without mm -hmm. any kind of for yeah uh yeah. no uh, warning isn't I mean, that the craziest thing no no, yeah, no, no warning. warning your mom is also just like literally cosmic horror did they ever address the blip other than that homecoming no, scene where we nope, saw no. them no. like like in, in a physical uh, well, sense. Had, Far from uh, home, he's on my own. Uh, WandaVision, WandaVision, they had the opening where yeah. Monica... WandaVision and Far From Home are the most we got. Yeah. Which is insane, because I remember it happening in Far From Home, and at the time we were like, well, I guess this is the film where they sort of goof past it, but there'll be something that yeah. addresses it. Yeah, because it was very it like, comical. Anything. Little did we know that was, was actually them addressing it. It was all, hey, that 12-year-old is now 16. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the joke in, in Far From Home, it seemed. And that's, that's kind of the only level on which they addressed it. That's a colossal thing to skip over. And not just because of the super beings flying around causing near extinction level events practically every other week. This is a... So it's funny that statement, he's probably making it in true? criticism of their actions while we would be making it in criticism of their later actions much more. Yeah. Like yeah. self-centered and evil compared to what they used to be. Even though what they used to be had collateral, which is totally fair. Universe. They should address that. Yeah, there should be a movie where they address that. That'd be great. Yeah. Well, where very little social progress. Oh, and for reference, this video has come out post end game. He's gonna be making these points like th that point in the timeline. Well, I mean, oh, okay. of course, because uh, he had end game footage in there and Hawkeye. So yeah, but I don't know if everyone's familiar yeah. with the visuals or reading the titles. I'm just letting them know. Yeah, and also mm -hmm. we're only thirty seconds in. So mm -hmm. uh, no, the universe saw that rags. Oh, yeah, I guess it's Hawkeye. Yeah, it said Hawkeye 2021, so we know yeah. that this came out 2021 at the I earliest. know, but he, but we could have footage from things that are even later in this, because we've we only could. seen 30 seconds, so. But What's important to know is that game. he'll be saying these things, and you can bet your bottom dollar he's aware of, like, everything phase one, two, three. So don't you worry. Yeah. Like, if you're thinking, they addressed this in Civil War, it's like, oh, he's, 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 he's on the ball. Okay. Where very little social progress can ever really be made. While the heroes do usually manage to roll back the various apocalypses, they don't use their superpowers to help build a better world. What do you think? Mm. Uh, well, do, do um, know, is that not what so you like, so the, not what, like Stark uh, Industries does though? Right? Well, yeah, so the I people think... of uh, the people of planet Earth typically have elected government officials and representatives and it isn't the job of superpowered beings to simply declare that this is how things are going to be now yeah like we're doing solar power oh, now Adam, Adam that's what's happening <laughs> like, this is well, all actually, ignoring the fact that sometimes they make some very significant choices captain america personally true. decided to destroy shield yep. he personally yeah. chose to destroy the like uh, one of the big intelligence apparatus of the United States, and th there was nothing for that. Now, of mm. course, it was severely compromised, but is it his choice to destroy the whole thing rather than, you know, finding like other solutions to those problems? Then, of course, with Ultron, that was Tony making the decision of, I'm going to create like a safeguard for the world. I'm going to yeah. do that personally. Yep. A piece in our time. That sounds pretty uh, involved in dealing with things. And then you got the smaller stuff, like, Captain America doing those, you know, like, hi, I'm Captain America, and yeah, this is PSAs. like the presidential fitness <laughs> thing. <laughs> the best um, world builder we got was that commercial. And then, of course, yeah. you had, uh, this you had uh, Wakanda right getting involved and out into the world and getting involved with, like, the United Nations, which included T'Challa. And it's like, oh, well, that looks like him as a superpowered entity and his country mm. getting involved in mm -hmm. global affairs. In fact, yeah, there's plenty of instances. Well, I mean, uh, Tony Stark uh, went to the, in Iron Man 2, the, uh, the, the congressional hearing and everything to deal with all yeah, of that stuff. All so, movie yeah, well, to be fair, one can argue that his conclusion on that was, I'm going to do it. In fact, you could argue oh, that sure. it's more in favor of, of this person's point than against in terms of him being like, um, I will do it. Well, I'm not going to give you guys well, the apparatus was, to do it. I will Tony, change the world for the better. That was conclusion at that point in time, but then it continues. The story well, doesn't yeah, end there, it keeps going. 
we have, got have we, we've had guys... it's actually not even a point of failure on the mcu that they have the world events changing based on because i was going to bring up it, it was mentioned the tony right but like he directly involves himself with the cdc by the time we hit homecoming where he's trying yeah, to exactly. actually fix the world <laughs> like you, you, you know one of oh, yeah. the most underrated scenes is the when the uh, thanos's men first attack on infinity war and all the effort he does to help the fucking uh civilians as they're walking up the street with dr strange and everything he's calling oh, back he's, he's doing so he's much like, we're getting that. so much character in that moment i'm guessing I, that the, it's more like the angle of how is the world changing yeah how is it changing the world not on like an individual level course, the big yeah. old elephant in the room on that one is like what are the sokovia records if not the world but then I guess he'd say that's not the heroes creating. Well, it kind of was like Tony was on board with Yeah, it. he was yeah. on board. Yeah, for getting sure. his heroes involved well, yeah, in him it. cooperating like, he with the government, thing. even the, the UN or whatever, like in any way, shape or form, is evidence of social attempts at ch just change in general to make the world a better place beyond I'm going to react to a monster. I, an now, obscure course, one too would be Hulk, his decision to leave the planet after the, his... Um, after uh, after Reach, Ultron, Red, yeah. Red, yeah, yeah, after that. That was his choice. And I think it's interesting because it's the first time that we get to see him do the rage out, but it wasn't him. Like, this, how does he actually feel about this when it wasn't his his rage that caused it for the first time? So they could have done something interesting that. But, like, the fact that he left the planet, I think that's a responsible choice. He, could, he made know, the choice, like, yeah, I'm gonna it's a choice he made. I, I think that's the last good thing the character did. Yeah. There is. It's not all handled particularly well. Uh, but it's present. Like, there's plenty of it's like problems, but it's yeah, it is present in these films. Yeah. Have you also, uh, didn't Wasp say in one of the Ant Man mo movies that they're Quantumania? now using the yeah. wasn't Quantum Mania, yeah. which is like we're She's... using this technology to make end world end hunger, world hunger and housing. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, Fuck, okay. Thanks. Yeah. That was a whole Though conversation that, we had about fair, what that means. Yeah. I think that one is past this video's. Um, Okay, yeah, I don't know yeah. when they'll get that one. One, one I just thing, though, that, that I think there's a possibility that he's talking about. I don't ever see Iron Man in the suit helping rebuild buildings and things like that, though. Like, no, I, I think, think I, I think he's talking about social programs. I yeah, I think he's talking about like institutions change. and social yeah. structures. Because yeah. okay. uh, have any of you guys seen Invincible, in the second season in particular? No. no. Because no. well, a character decides to help rebuild a building, but like while they have a superpower that makes them very good at constructing things, they also don't know how like to do things to code. So like, let's just say that it doesn't go well for the people that live in the building. Mm. And mm. I, bring... I kind of like that idea of just like, oh yeah, well, I mean, maybe the, he has an Iron Man suit and he can fly up and carry things, but if he starts doing your welding, like, do you do you know that he's going to do it properly? Because <laughs> Yeah. Did they bring the twins back in season two? The um, yes, <clears throat> the Mahler twins. Oh. No. They instead spend all of their time defending the status quo. Not true. Well, no, even I to mean, the point that you have two of the main characters disagreeing on what the status quo should be. Yeah. He didn't mm -hmm. did he skip Civil War? Like he, I just that's the thing. Civil War well, will be addressed, but it, yeah. you know, right now it feels like it contradicts his whole point. But we'll see. Well, even if we um, even if we look at it from the sense of probably what he means, even I think from his perspective, that's terrible. Considering that you're essentially saying all they're doing is saving the planet. Yeah, they're not <laughs> imposing they're their will they. on what they believe the planet should be, which is exactly the problem that's addressed in Civil War. Yeah. Uh, you want to protect the world, but you don't want it to change. The villains are the ones who are constantly dreaming up audacious schemes. Are you to re really gonna yes. start fucking? Yes. Oh my god! Wow. Okay. I so didn't here. what I want to say right All now right. is that I saw a comment on this video saying like it's so unfortunate they ruined Killmonger by giving him the whole "I want to kill children" thing. Because yeah. he was like such a good character at that point. I don't even agree with that necessarily. He wanted to no. kill all the world leaders that disagreed yeah. with him. He completely ignored the world building as if the Avengers, Avengers didn't even exist. Like no one is gonna oppose that him. too. Choke, choke the lady is auntie at the at the um meeting. Completely had no <laughs> reason to do almost any of the things that he did. Killmonger is a disaster. I mean, yeah, he's yeah. a crap character. Terrible character. He's not a good person. What what makes him compelling to people is Michael B. Jordan. I swear to God, it's just that. It's, it's, it's one of the best good examples actor. of a performance mm. completely distracting you from how none of it makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. I'm, don't even get me on Killmonger. I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> Reshape established. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Fucking referencing Gore. Right. The psycho Gore. just wants to kill Jeez. all gods and ruin everything, yeah. basically. Because, you know, there are certain gods that might be assholes that make the world a better place when they're gone, but there are certain gods that you kill that throw... A la God of War 3, killing them will, like, destroy a whole ecosystem <laughs> or yeah. Yeah. something that... Uh, the idea that Gore was like, you know, he's got an idea, this Gore guy. He's he's onto something. <laughs> like, Shut look the at this. fuck up. Gore could have been amazing. Like his yeah. he, his look is fantastic, and it's we got Bale. We got one of the best actors, and he just, they just ugh. That is yeah, one of the saddest wastes, but it it's truly genuinely is. in, a, it in was... a fucking bucket with so many other wastes. Yeah, yeah, I think when we were watching that movie, oh, he held the world record of how fast he became a contradictory character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that opening scene, I yeah. was just like, <laughs> held the record. It was like it's a heart occurred. It's a heart. You go through full 360 in that one scene. It's like, okay. Yeah. That movie had the well, infinity. 180. 180, yeah. Institutions or transform. Why the three, fuck six, would you yeah, say yeah, Caecilius? Yeah. <laughs> Caecilius wanted uh, to feed Earth to the dark dimension, bro. <laughs> Why would you like, even? Come on. What? I mean, that's a pretty pretty stark uh, change for the status quo. Up audacious schemes to reshape oh, established institutions shit, or transform oh, yeah. the entire universe. Thank God by killing half of all of the life in it. Yes, that would that certainly would transform, it. transform it. I he's right. It, it would be transformative. It would not be the status quo. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stress two things up front. All right. First. This video is not a blanket condemnation of all Marvel movies. Many well, then maybe you shouldn't have said that's all they do. <laughs> but okay. Yeah, well. Many of them are fun, entertaining spectacles. Oh, he's saying like it shouldn't allow you to stop enjoying them. That's good. Yeah, they're and fun, some of the more recent entries have made great strides in terms of representation. Mm. Oh, okay, oh, that's great. worked out well. I think the representation should be combined with, like, you know, good characters. What do you think he has to say about Miss Meaningless Marvel on his own. Well, how much do you think he has talking well, about that show? I barely remember that show. I barely remember Wait, it. I haven't seen that show. I, I watched it, but I don't, like... What was it, Fringy, mm -hmm. the, the mum was the best character? Yeah, she was the best character, and she was the best character in uh, The Marvels as well. Yeah. Sort of. So, I mean, there's yeah. very little competition, of course. Not um, much to work with. Yeah. Yeah. This is not some kind of galaxy-brained hot take claiming all the bad guys are actually right. I mean, that would be unhinged. That would be very unhinged. Yeah, we're not actually. I'm not worried about <laughs> you saying all of them are right. I'm worried about you saying like the. I I don't even like going as far as saying you know they all had a point. I'd be like, eh, 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 let's. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of a lot of them didn't. A lot of them uh, didn't have all. a point. <laughs> Well, you know, it's Talk funny, he showed Gore. Vulture, right? It's like, Vulture's point is sort of like, I'm gonna get what's mine because this world has fucking stepped on me for- You know, like, he's very, yeah. very much yeah. a classic villain of just like, fuck the world, it fucked me, so I'm gonna fuck it back. It's like, eh, okay. It's simple, it makes sense. He's one of the only ones he can follow the through line. That's it, again, yeah. Cassilius, who wants to feed the entire universe <laughs> into a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was Malakath's plan? What, no, who, who oh, I don't Malekith wanted revenge, revenge was, I think, uh, or something? Nobody knows. Yeah, and he wanted to take over Earth with the Convergence or whatever. And oh my god, those portals, dude. The... Yeah. <laughs> Thor 2, if you're able to remember it, this where it's unfortunate too because Thor 2 has good stuff, the things, the Thor yeah, and his mum stuff, Loki, Loki and his mum, yes. that's all good. The Loki, yeah, I, I was rewatching that for one of my videos a few months ago, and I was actually really surprised at the quality of the Loki scene. Yeah, it, that made yeah, me that a Loki Loki's guy. fucking gone. He's, oh Loki's my god, he's long gone. But it was going Loki back and like, oh, cool. this is why people liked Loki because I never really got it. I wasn't a big Loki guy. Well, that's the thing, Loki man. It's it super complex. Thor 1, Avengers, Thor 2, where does he go next? Would it be Ragnarok? Uh, for Loki's yeah, story? No, Age of Ultron. Yeah. Age of Ultron. No, no, no. He's, he's not, in Age of Ultron? He's not in Ultron? Oh, no, he's, oh, he's sorry. Ragnarok. Because he's, been, yeah, he's yeah. been living as Odin, and then that's yeah, where yeah. you find out that he's... Ragnarok leads right, right, right into Again, Infinity Ragnarok War. gets you to hero Loki at the end, the beginning of yeah. Infinity War. That was a... It's so sad looking retrospect being like, story's done. Just let him let him be dead, please. Yeah, uh, they kind of... Yeah. Like his story was done and like, kind of nailed with that that ending to Thanos, and it's just he could he would have been one of the better ones if they just left. Dude, him. when he but refers to himself just... as Odin's son, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, all that mm -hmm. shit, man. But all he needs now to he is Loki. You think of this film and cry? <laughs> you know, it's like when was the last time you felt something in the MCU? <laughs> like, uh, oh man, it's been a while. Does boredom and confusion <laughs> count as feeling something? <laughs> Thor, but hey, Thor, now Loki is the so, then all the time. 
I Thor think and I Rocket. Put my finger on it. I, probably the last time was uh, No Way Home, and like yeah, and no, I think it, it would be that for me as well. Probably. Yeah, it was Thor and Rocket. I wasn't a big fan of No Way Home. It just, it just did nothing in No Way Home. I, Not even. Like, I, I, I did appreciate. I thought that was I pretty, did appreciate the dynamic of the three Peters together, but in terms of like the feet, it didn't. I, I it didn't hit. It didn't hit me in the heart. Goblin? No. Like, Goblin? Infinity War had much more of an impact on me in terms of, like, especially... That's like, fair. I just... Um, yeah, I think that's fair. Specifically too. what Mark mentioned, like, I couldn't... I don't even like the Tasm films, but watching Andrew Garfield save the girl, yeah. I was like, whoa, that's hard not to feel stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, I Although mean, Emma must... Stone and him were never really the problem with those movies. No, no, the actors <laughs> are really the problem, honestly. ...must be said that a few of them do have legitimate political grievances. Black Panther no, no, no. came out in 2018. Just a nitpick. That's fuck him up, Fringy. Fuck him up. <laughs> this was, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, this was Killmonger's. This was his best scene, in my opinion, the opening scene where he was like, he seemed actually complex and competent, and then he was just a fucking unhinged idiot for the rest. Wasn't of the this the scene where he like killed this lady? Yeah. Everything before that moment. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, yeah. Well, you know what I like about it? I think we talked about this semi recently. I can't remember, but um, because I saw someone sharing it on Twitter, and I was like, yeah. And if anything, I regret not. Praising it in my video on Black Panther, but uh, Claw saying, "You know, you yeah, run away, yeah. you you run away." The guy goes, "Oh God!" Then he just shoots him. He goes, <laughs> "Better to leave yeah. scattered bodies makes us look like amateurs." Like that's actually well, clever. That's when I was like uh, feeling the movie, like all the claw scenes and whatnot. And everyone, nobody mentions this part, but the girl, the girlfriend bypassed the cameras and was for the reason they were able to get in. So she wasn't just there on the other scene; she was a part of their plan. Why the fuck did he kill Dude, him? when Killmonger kills Claw, <laughs> oh god, that scene. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. mentioned that Claw was around from when he was like young, so like he was from friends. He potentially could have been like an uncle to him. Like he, they, they could have had a. He knew him since he was a little kid. Yeah, he aside had the, from the tattoo, it's just, it's also fucked. He had the, the books. There was no reason to kill Claw other than they needed to remove. Aside that. from the fact that you lose Andy Circus, you lose a character that was actually pretty interesting in the world, being someone who's like in and aware of all of the shit, but also kind of like a mercenary. God, yeah. I've been waiting for... It's funny, it feels like the Marvel equivalent of the desperation for a bounty hunter character in Star Wars that sort of flits and flies through a lot of different stories just looking for money. Like the We talked about it with um, Black Widow. It's like Taskmaster. Why can't he be the character that turns up all the time mm, looking for money? Yeah. Good payoff for reoccurring characters can be fantastic because it's just like you never know when you're going to summon this. Did um, anyone here see Alias? Yeah. Not Jennifer Garner? No. Yeah. This remember, um, alien? first big project. Was, remember but, Sock? Like, other than Julius Felicity. Sock? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was that character in Alias. He would keep working for bad guys. He'd keep yeah. turning up. But I remember being like, I, I, he was uh, Alias's spike, for uh, lack of a better Yeah, word. that's probably a good way to they put it. They kept bringing him back because people were like, yeah, but he's really fun that he's British. <laughs> he's, he's like, works for bad and guys. Every, time, and every time he would show up in an episode, you'd be like, oh, it's a Sark episode. Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah, Ron kind of had that in Game of Thrones for a little while, but then it just went on too long. I just feel I like you're, anyone's story benefits there. from a character like that. Someone who's just keeps turning because it's super good for filler episodes as well of like yeah, a TV show. Were there three seasons of Alias or four? Five. Oh, okay. I've only seen three. Well, but Sark is get on that. Okay, I haven't rewatched that in forever. Do you know there's a Ricky uh, I mean, Gervais I will, I will episode? Hmm. I know Quentin Tarantino directed an episode. He definitely stars in one, and he pops up more than once, too. It's very strange, but the Ricky Gervais yeah. episode is, like, almost a bottle episode of uh, they need information from him, and so they have to convince him, after drugging him, that he's in, like, a hotel room. And uh, it's fucking bizarre. I remember just being like, do they just really... I guess The Office was popular. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, why this has happened, but all right. Mm. Well, I mean, like, J.J. Abrams was the producer on that, and he's all about, like, hey, what's it, who's the new hot actor from somewhere in the world? And, like, they put the raid guys in Phantom well, that's, Menace. They're not Phantom Menace, sorry. That's Force the whole reason that Lizzo is in Star Wars, them. is that John oh Favreau God, saw his speak. kid on TikTok play it around or whatever, was like, you should get Lizzo. It was uh, so as stupid as that. Which, by the way, I found it, out from it, Ryan. I, it was that simple? Yeah, it was something like that. It was he saw he was like Lizzo's popular and Lizzo likes Star Wars. Lizzo's making t- TikToks about Star Wars. You should get her on an episode. Isn't that sad? Oh, yeah. that hurts. That hurts. It really Especially does. Especially considering all the very famous YouTubers and stuff who adore Star Wars with yes. a deep passion, and they're never going to get on that shit. 
Like, you remember the cameos in TFA from all the random people? Like, uh, I think Simon Pegg had one. I think Daniel Craig had one. I thought that was cool just seeing how many people who probably grew up with Inner Passion. They want to be a part of it in any way. There's... Compare that to now. It's just TikTok. Oh, she's popular. Throw fucking Liz on. But it's just, fuck the, what the fuck? I mean, I'm thinking there's got to be more people who would go to see it because of a really famous YouTuber than Lizzo, right? What's the Venn diagrams? Of... Probably. Because Lizzo just be seems so removed from Star people. Wars. Exactly. Why wouldn't you pick somebody who is related to Star Wars in some way? Or just, yeah, you I... know, just any given actor who, like, is Even a good performer. Was... Yeah, and it would something... just make you look so good. It would it would give you a lot of good faith with the audience, and they think like, "Oh wow, you I mean, know they're they're, they're giving these star uh, they, they're getting these Star Wars YouTubers who really really love it and have a lot of passion for the show instead of someone who's already like a traditional you know celebrity." Yeah. Well, maybe it's again um, that mentality of we need to pull people in who don't already like Star Wars, and, which is uh, weird because that's their opposite problem right now. Yeah. Is they need to desperately pull in the people who already know of and used to like star wars mm -hmm. who used to like know. star wars but are gone now but then what's yeah, the thought process the of issue. putting her with jack black like it just was one of the most jarring combinations people like jack black time. i think yeah. people really like jack black jack just, black is a lot bigger of a name he's more i guess involved like uh, jack black is very clearly Lloyd, a nerd who loves that thing. stuff no if, if they don't care about immersion i guess that's one thing but i remember some people complaining about the ed sharon cameo in game of thrones and that was way more subtle than this yeah, well, at least he sings. Yeah, it's yeah. like you got to cast a guy who can sing. So. Yeah, he was just one of the guy. You know, so it did make sense context like within the the story. Yeah, you just it's not as cringe as the uh, as the Imagine Dragons cameo in Arcane. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, hey, look, all right. They should have had. A, like, <laughs> oh no! Does Fringy like Imagine Dragons? Just no, the way they no, did no, it. Not particularly. Not particularly. Uh, I don't Wait, mind it's... the song though. We we had the big conversation. I don't mind yeah. the intro song. Like I don't mind it. It's just yeah, the way they incorporated it. Um, like just showing their faces directly. It was a bit too overt of a um, of a cameo. Yeah, that's one of those cameos that it should be more subtle. It should yeah. be more like Peter Jackson's uh... cameos in Lord of the Rings and in Hot Fuzz. That's those are my favorite type. Of well, cameos. the ones that don't call too much attention to themselves. Yep. Are usually yeah. We are yep. the ones that most people miss, right? Yep. Like, yeah, well, yeah. maybe because they're well, invested like in the story that's being told and exactly. it's not just a trash fire that's been jangled in my face. You can always go back and be like, oh yeah, that was him, even if it takes yeah, you years. You it don't might be even be, more satisfying. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm going to watch this episode because Jack Black and Lizzo is in it. It's like, <laughs> no, go away. Leave me alone. Like, I set. remember... Uh, real quick, I, I remember when I saw Return of the King, I was like, man, that kid looks exactly like Sam. They found the perfect kid. Oh, it's his daughter. And I find that out years later. <laughs> it makes sense. Like, that's amazing. She got, he got the end, the greatest trilogy ever with his daughter. Like, what a legend. Weird fun fact. Sean Astin directed an episode of Angel. Oh, cool. Yeah. Really? Yes. Season four. <laughs> yeah, that is a fun fact. Oh, that's unfortunate, but still. <laughs> it's an episode I like of season four, so it's all good. Hey, do you think you... that um, do you think that Sean Astin could team up with uh, Martin Freeman to make Hobbit themed uh, meth modes of transportation meth? that are very luxurious? I was gonna say meth. <laughs> Hobbit themed like... meth. <laughs> no, they make like no, no. They the... team up and make some no, meth. <laughs> no, Sean Astin <laughs> and Martin Freeman. They get together and they go to Hobbiton and they make really nice like carriages meth. and things of that nature. They're really luxurious, really nice. You know, they ride really smoothly. And they call it Aston Martin. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too late. I, I, sure I know you so well at this that. point that I was just like, I know you're setting something up. I'm not sure what it's yeah. going to be, but we're going to get there eventually. I didn't see that Because <laughs> they were both hobbits and actors who, that's right. Are actually right. Although it must be said that a few of them do have legitimate political grievances. How do you think your ancestors got these? Shut you think up. they paid a fair price? <laughs> or did they take it like they took everything else? Damn, got us. Damn, you sold us a lot of slaves, and, my and dude. Then he, and then he killed her. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, she's like, like she's barely understanding the situation. <laughs> then she can't fucking breathe. Like, <laughs> just yeah. working here. You fucking, she's poisoned right now. We <laughs> can hear you. Ears On the are whole, ringing. Like, ugh. MCU villains are written to be ruthless and brutal, sometimes okay. to a genocidal degree. That's... Oh, yeah, eternal. <laughs> well, but that's, isn't that kind of silly, though? Because this creature doesn't even know what it's doing. It's like being born, right? 
It's being born, mm. but it's part of, I guess, a broader scheme that the Celestials have set up because this is the only way by which they can create themselves. Right. Yep. It feels that weird to choose this create, one. And remember, the, the way that they present it is, this is why it gets really tangled and stupid. In the world of the MCU, the Celestials are, like, responsible for major natural forces that occur in our universe, like the formation of stars and planets. No Celestials means no cosmic formations. So once oh you get to that level, it's like, oh shit, I mean, that complicates it, doesn't it? Because if mm. there are no Celestials, it means that the universe dies. Like, it just becomes a dead universe. Oh, put it on the list of things that makes our universe die, I guess. I feel like it's a weird citation for genocide. It's like, you might want to pick, you know, because this creature doesn't even just know what's Thanos, happening. Thanos, you know? <laughs> Thanos is, like, the yeah, easy yeah. one to point to. Thanos mm -hmm. or Ultron. Um, I guess Loki was trying to take over... Uh, but you probably would have, I mean, would have ended up killing a lot of people. Yeah, no, and, 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 as, I think you just need the intentionality, right? You you intend, you know what you're doing, you know what's going to happen, and you do it anyway. Like, if this creature knew that it was going to wipe out all of Earth, then I, I guess I'd be chill about it, but... As far as I know, these creatures are like, this is, he doesn't know what's going on, right? That little this guy? is the Celestials being born, but yeah. I don't know what the nature of their consciousness before right, that right, is. Okay. What we are going to be examining are the underlying oh, the ideological imp so the war. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good movie. Let's go. Applications baked into the superhero formula. Okay. A great many people see you as heroes. There are some who would prefer the word vigilantes. Love the visual storytelling with Tony. One of the inspirations for this video is an essay by the late anthropologist David Graeber entitled Superposition, a longer version of which can be found in the back of his book, Okay. The Utopia of Rules. His article, Deconstructing okay. the Politics Embedded in Superhero Narratives, was originally Ooh. written back in 2012 as a. I grew up like around the cold water, water Batman. <laughs> He's just fucking have to. It's like one of the funniest accents like ever. It's just okay. We're going I love it. I love it. <laughs> Of course. You know why they call the dead people the late so and so? <laughs> they can never show up on time for anything. <laughs> you like the little, is your ally. That was just a little <laughs> joke before I killed the Batman. It's so I was molded it. <laughs> molded by it. I like the Everybody spooky parts of the voice. In charge? Oh, yeah, that's good. Good shit. No, his his voice is so memeable, but that people don't even talk about how stupid his death was. It's so uh, oh, yeah, it's yeah. fucking awful. Keep reminded of it. Don't remind me. <laughs> Response to Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises. But since Marvel media has now become the dominant cultural paradigm in Hollywood, I thought it would be an interesting experiment <laughs> to apply Graeber's core thesis to the Marvel Cinematic Let's Universe. fucking go. All right, and tell me what you feel about Graeber. Yeah, the heroes are me. purely reactionary, in that the literal will, sense. Bain. Wait, that's not Bane's not voice true. at all. I mean, <laughs> they simply react hard. to things. Okay, they have no hard. projects of their own other than to design even more high-tech weaponry and indulge in the occasional act of charity. Not oh, true. Okay, okay, so that's not that 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 <laughs> What? Uh, David, that's just not true, buddy. That's not even true of the fucking Batman movies. Bruce Wayne's doing a hell of a lot more than act of charity. Yeah. That doesn't apply. I can't think of a super. Like, who does that apply to? Uh. Deadpool. No, they have no projects of their <laughs> own. Thanos. <laughs> other than for more high tech web. That's a. I. Okay. Okay, so I guess this time in 2012, be... we would have Batman, we'd have the X Men movies, we'd have all three of the Spider Man the, the, it movies. Was, it was specific. This, was, this essay was about the Nolan about movies. The Dark Knight Rises, right? Yeah. So is it meant to be the idea that the Batman will only ever yeah. react to the, the. So Batman only reacts to the rise of villains, I presume, is the observation. Mm -hmm. And then he beats them, and then he just waits around until the next villain comes along, and then he beats them, and then and he makes more high tech weaponry. Batman has no projects of his own. Are you fucking high? Well, like, you if you want to say Batman doesn't, but Bruce Wayne certainly does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then he would probably say mm. that's encompassed in the occasional act of charity. Oh yeah, he occasionally like raises money for well, that's good, retarded. Cause. good for him. It's not enough. 
But if this is specifically <laughs> after Dark Knight Rises, then I guess he did. He kind of became a recluse for eight. Yeah, years, but he cleaned right? Gotham. It was the cleanest city in the world, right? Wasn't that the uh, announcement okay, at the beginning? Yeah. That it was like the crime freest. Yeah, but that's just an occasional act of charity. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's not like he he did that from you know the vigilante side and well, the bureaucracy I mean, side almost. Yeah, well, reducing crime in a major metropolitan city is it's not at really, the end of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the end of Dark Knight. He the end of the Dark Knight. He does like kind of take the 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 rap for a crime and then exactly. like gets. gets Shunned to yeah, but I imagine like I, I'm trying to figure martyr. out having not having not read this. I'm just trying to think like from the my guess would always be that it's that they never do they never go far enough. It would be that the heroes always stop mm. the villain, and then maybe they do some kind of um like charitable cause or some kind of philanthropy, but it never results in I don't know like batman running for president and then instituting like broader yeah, sweeping like, I mean, changes they, they can't magically fix the entire world okay i guess they're well, not so doing enough surely the the reality that we can that's all agree with us. is that yeah that's not that's not the film they're making though like not to get too meta but we're not doing that we're right. doing the the crazy eccentric fucking crazy man with the weapon that's going to destroy the whole world like we, we, we don't watch between the dark knight and dark knight rises even though that's likely where all of the things this person's highlighting would have taken place yeah. That's why he needs to like explain his thought but, process. Tell us what he thinks first. Well, at the same time, you can't claim it doesn't take place. We know it does. It definitely did. Yeah. It's just that we may not see them in the films. Yeah. Which you know, if you want to say that oh, that's I a problem. I mean, that's... Also, I, I I assume that would be in the book. But what would be? How far would you go to uh, define charity in that case? Like, is it just? I'm not sure. Social issues going around, or are we also counting building like a space station that? Uh, you know, defends you, the, the whole world from outer threats like and stuff uh, like that. The thing is, though, I, Metal, I presume that uh, encompassed in other than design even more high-tech weaponry would be like Ultron. When Ultron, yeah. I mean, Ultron is reactionary in the sense that it's reacting to all of the things that have been happening in the world, but I don't know what it means for anything to not be even remotely reactionary. There has to be some kind of input that's going to result in the Yeah, why feedback. make a defense or a, would... a fix for something that doesn't exist? There's always going to be in something yeah. that does exist. But you could say that it is proactive, that Ultron, but he'd be like, but I imagine that's encompassing what's just more high-tech weaponry. It doesn't solve shit. Yeah. And of course, it didn't solve anything, but it created a new problem, but still. It has to count. Yeah. It should it's count. The but intent, I, it's the intent, being I guess it would be yeah. that it, it doesn't count. That the it heroes really wasn't are of. purely reactionary in the literal sense. They simply react. That's a, just the thing. They're not literally only reactionary. That's just not true. Mm. That's not true. No. And, and you, you, easy, like, I don't mean to be fucking pedantic, but I just be like, you just, you can't use these words this way because they do stuff between reacting to villains. Yeah. Just, I mean, we typically I mean, don't have movies about that because that's not as interesting, because, but that doesn't mean it doesn't we happen. Wanna, we want to watch them fighting the villains. Yeah. And there's generally. Well, but maybe that would be the observation that is made is that maybe there should be more of these stories that instead of focusing on the strict conflict of hero versus villain deals with. What I think that that's just a matter of like him doing book tour. his responsibility as a video essayist, if he thinks that's important, is to highlight the evidence of that in the films and to talk about how important yeah, that is in these I, worlds. Mm hmm. Uh, I guess we'll see if he does, but because yeah, well, no, what, the, what the, I'm the saying is he hasn't. Has... He's he's criticizing that that's not present. Obviously, when what I'm saying is right. his if he's going to be like these films are responsible to show that because it's important to highlight that as a way to make society better. I'd be like, yes, yeah, your job then to highlight the fact that they do allude to that both explicitly and implicitly, and that you're supposed to say mm -hmm. like. This is the important work. You know, beating up Obadiah Stane is one thing, but the programs mm -hmm. in order to get the uh, arc technology to the point of having self-sustaining energy is actually the more important discovery, which we see at the beginning of Avengers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. make that video then. Show us, like, you'd be is like, that, this is, is actually important. Is that act of charity, though, as well? Is that so... Would they say, well, yeah, Tony Stark d doing the whole, like, arc reactor to make Stark Tower That's, clean energy. Th so at that point, just you just you can't be wrong, can you? You can't... You just, if, Pretty much. I, I don't know if that's actually his position, but I could see that being kind of the, the framework here. Mm. I can I mean, easily I imagine a scenario where these stories encompass superhero characters who are doing things and inciting social change and using their powers and their incredible wealth and influence to change the world. And if that's done in ways that um, Macintosh doesn't approve of, this video essay would be completely flipped and would be the opposite point, where it's not the place of superheroes to do these things yeah. when we have our own ways to do it, and that this is essentially 
uh, either a hard or soft tyranny, depending on the yeah, methods of these superheroes and create that change. This I feel like we would be making that point even. Well, yeah, he, absolutely. He's be like, showed... you guys can't just do that. Is it, even if it was something good, there's obviously that element of, well, you, you can't just do that. You can't just circumvent the government or you can't just, uh, or, or maybe it's not necessarily a moral thing for you to exert your influence in that way. And I think a lot of the characters in the MCU would probably think that as well. They might have that doubt in their in their mind that says, maybe I shouldn't be doing these things. Maybe, you know, it's a good thing I'm doing today, but, uh, like, should I have that kind of power over the world? It's like, well, yeah, it's like something to Captain discuss. Tree, and he goes around destroying nuclear plants. We're like, um, I mean, <laughs> and he's like, it's for the better of the world. You're like, oh, this is bad. This is very bad. And he's like, okay, what if he just, you know, pushes for legislature that that does that? Or rather, something between those two. Something forceful, but not entirely illegal. I just feel like we would be highlighting, like, this feels weird, man. Well, what? I mean, doesn't Tony also, over the, he showed scenes from Homecoming here. He also, like, takes Peter under his wing and starts trying to, like, get him better that tech would and be teach him. Broad enough. That no, would yeah. be broad enough. I well, it, I think if you're going to use Homecoming, people... go for the CDC stuff, surely. Yeah, that's that's the one to point to. But even then, that might not be good enough either. How could that not be good enough? I don't, I don't know. Co I, cooperating I, with uh, governmental know. systems, social programs to improve the world in general. Like, I just, I just don't buy that as like occasional act of charity. They have no projects of their own, other than to design true, more. They help. literally do, but yeah, okay. High tech weaponry and indulge in the occasional act. Of Batman wrote a book. I mean, he wrote a book. Yeah. Not even, I would put that in the selection. They're trying to make change happen. They're trying to support the world. I would put it in a selection for sure. Yeah. If we're going to be I'd labeling it as so. social change, a book, Brian, a book absolutely counts. I mean, yeah, that crushes this whole paragraph. Heroes themselves, you know. Ant Man crushes this whole paragraph. Right in that book. That's so true. <laughs> I mean, does it grow. does it count that Banner essentially invents time travel and? Oh game, my god! Or is that, ah, yeah. <laughs> or is that <laughs> too? Is that even though it's five years after and okay. it only happened because of other people telling you things that, to do stuff? But... Highlighting that gives you the actual answer to this stupid video. No offense, video, but like the um, the time travel having been invented and we've not done anything with it beyond stopping Thanos. Just it's just it's just shittily written. That's it. Like you can't introduce that and then have the world not deal with it. Like, could you imagine? Yeah. The government, the American fucking it. government having control of time travel and no one else does. <laughs> like, nope. Destroy the time travel machine and kill everyone involved. <laughs> you we could just cannot picture hold out there's, there's this board of people who are like, oh, we can't have that job in other countries. There's just this guy where, like, an emperor cloak is like, we could use it to our benefit. <laughs> we, we, we simply need to move a couple of yeah, pieces he's, in his he's, he's leaning forward in his chair like Boromir staring at the ring. <laughs> and he's like, we. <laughs> It is a gift, you must it understand. Is a <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because you'd be like, no, 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 no. According to the films, you can't remove Infinity Stones. It's just like, shut, shut the fuck it. up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. We can just duplicate them. Sure. In fact, superheroes seem almost utterly lacking in imagination. Oh. The villains, in contrast, are relentlessly creative. Wow. I, um, man, you know wow. what? Batman is That's a fairly... Batman is a fairly creative idea, my I'm, man. <laughs> like so in and of itself. That's this is the point. Idea. We had this issue with a previous video that we covered, and it's happened more times. Uh, it's happened before. We've got the the whole. You know, this reminds me of Karl Marx. It's like <laughs> there is an element of you bringing in quotes and authors and semi-famous people and speakers and using them as sort of a foundation or platform Crunch. for the rest of your video Crunch. to build on. Um, this is the point of the quotes where I'm already completely checked out and I don't really give much of a shit what David Graeber has to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, uh, for anybody who's listening, they're like, rags. What do you mean? It's like, well, so li what he just said is the villains, in contrast, are relentlessly creative. Let's think about who he's referring to in the Nolan trilogy. First film, Batman Begins, Ra's al, right, blah, 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 Ra's al Ghul. His plan is to blow like to infect all of the water with fear gas and then explode all of it to like basically destroy all of gotham because it's become yeah, the most crime ridden city it. absolutely fucking nuts he's lost his mind that's insane smart <laughs> i'm not creative. even saying that from perspective of oh that's an interesting way that he's decided it was like <laughs> no it's not that interesting i think Razal ghul is way smarter than to come up with a plan like that's so stupid that plan is retarded second film 
can I even say the Joker has a plan? <laughs> like, he literally he says he doesn't. He literally he plays it. Yeah, explicit. <laughs> he's, he does not have well, that just, just goes plan. to show Harvey how creative he is. He doesn't even have a plan. He's so creative he doesn't have a plan. Harvey Dent's plan is to go find the people he doesn't like, flip a coin to decide where he's <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> That's his <laughs> grand plan. Batman, Pretty Batman, 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 and then of course it's like... Listening, what? Fringy, Fringy, to be fair, if I walk into a casino, my plan is to gamble. Yeah, that's a plan. That's, yeah, that's, that's a plan. plan. There you go. That's the most coherent plan like we've had Bane, so far. Flip coins. <laughs> Bane's plan is to though. take over Gotham, you know? Just Look at over. Talia al Ghul. She's even more retarded than her dad. Like, yeah, she, she had the worst death scene ever filmed, possibly. So, in like, Dark Knight, though, that Batman one? thinks of the idea to turn everybody's cell phone into, like, Daredevil well, yeah, vision. Right, yeah, man! <laughs> my contrast, well, let, let's put <laughs> it this way, you know? By, by contrast, what is it? Batman's plan, overall, is to create a character that strikes fear into the, you know, the, the criminals the of Gotham. Yes! Presented with an aesthetic, an aesthetic that has a connection to his own past and his own... Yeah. Uh, and then he theory. creates all of these interesting he takes vehicles and then finds new ways to mess around with them for like the purposes that he needs them to he creates cool gadgets he has like, a bat-themed credit Batman, card Batman, Batman, oh yeah he's literally yeah. one of the most creative superheroes in existence that man's hyper creative it's so it's just nonsense man part of what makes him effective and yeah so well, what about I find... green lantern yep well, yeah, we don't need to go over all of them. I'm just saying, like, this this guy highlighting specifically the Nolan movie villains as relentlessly creative in comparison to the superheroes is insane. Bat shit insane. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. They are full of plans and... Also, being full of plans, projects, and ideas does not make you creative. Yeah. Yeah, they could be bad plans. <laughs> they could be I know boring plans. plans. They, they could be derivative. Plan. They generally entail mass destruction and death. I, so, I can't take this know. seriously. Looking at the Joker, the fucking Scarecrow, and Ra's al Ghul and being like, you guys have got it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys yeah. know what's up. I can't wait for your next project yeah. and ideas. And ideas. Also, having Ultron getting fucking sizzled in the background when his plan was to destroy <laughs> all humans. <laughs> and when Ultron Endlessly was creative. Endlessly Ultron creative. was Tony's idea. That was his concept. Suit of armor around the world. Oh. Are you going to destroy the Earth? I'm going to hit it with a big rock. <laughs> yeah. See, may maybe cool. David no, is a little confused. Like, I don't know. He likes the poetry of meteors. Because mm -hmm. he waxes poetic all the time. It's important to note that Graber is talking about the good guys acting in their superhero personas. I don't think that's fair. It is no. yeah, it's not fair. Totally it isn't fair. fair. That's not fair at all. That's, that's not what I mean. fair. He's talking about Iron Man's not in his suit rebuilding buildings, so he sucks. Oh, well, he's Smart not in his Hulk suit going counts. to, like, fucking protests or business or meetings or Congress. Or or Congre yeah. But yeah, the thing the same is, person. it doesn't even apply to Iron Man because, yeah, everyone knows Tony Stark is Iron Man. So, yeah, exactly. what's the fucking point of that? Exactly. I mean, in Banner and the Hulk, they're like one person now. So, when he's in a lab pressing buttons, that, oh, that's me. No, I'm it doesn't count. Person. If you're green, it doesn't count. And then count. when he's out there <laughs> punching, he's like, nope, that doesn't count. It doesn't count. You're, you're different now. So while we may see Bruce Banner or Matt Murdock pursuing their own personal project, this is unfair as fuck. You, well, you this isn't out. Fair. This is bullshit. He's operating. You You're about? not allowed to include the fact that Daredevil is a lawyer as part of his actions, and he's doing super. He he's specifically oh, has the identity yes. of Daredevil to act yep. outside of the law, and you're like, yeah, but that doesn't count. Like in terms of your investment in acting within the law, I don't count that. It's like, yeah, well, you fucking should. Come That's where Daredevil on. comes you from. Mental that's the character. He's the cat. That's the character. Oh, oh whatever. Man, that's that's Phil. Phil, <laughs> you're you are including him using his superhuman abilities in his job in his daily life. It isn't. <laughs> they're, they're the same he person. He is a lawyer and he is Daredevil. If you separate exactly. them one hundred percent, people would say that is incredibly uncreative. This to sounds completely like that John Halo Master Chief thing, you know, that was recently talked about. We needed to explore the relationship between John Halo and Master Chief. I mean, I guess and in order to do that, we had to same. endlessly <laughs> creative. One and the same. I suppose his analogy works for Moon Knight. What? Because he's actually a different persona. Yeah. Yeah. Personalities. <laughs> um. Can I just compliment this moment as well? Because No Way Home's got problems, but 
I just like that they clearly show Spider-Man would have grabbed that if not yeah, for Daredevil yeah. grabbing it because they both have the right senses to be able to do this. But then also he says, how do you do that? He says, I'm a really good lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> you see uh, Happy's reaction. Like everything about this frame is just nailed. I did really like this scene, actually. Oh, God, if that right. I'm so happy to see him. I'm a really good lawyer. There you go. It's extremely yeah. rare to see our man. man they're gonna ruin him. He's gonna I be ruined. Him. Yeah. He's gonna He's be already, ruined. They already ruined him in Hulk. Oh, and God. also oh, in Echo. Mm -hmm. no, honestly, I, I, just, gender, wait, hold on. What's what's everyone's thoughts on that? Do you think he was ruined or kind of just tarnished by those? Like, it, like um, it's like that made by Echo and thing, but he was yeah, hurt I, by Echo. Echo oh, hurt him. Echo was more than than She Hulk, in my opinion. Like the fact that he just left. You know? Yeah, that didn't make any sense. Strider, I would say he's you know? damaged. He uh, he's he's damaged, boots? but he's still. If they nailed it in his show, like he could recover, but he's got damage right now. Yeah, he would. He would wear not his like boots King in real life. No, Kingpin's King King been fucking you. annihilated. Oh no, King 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 already, King it's already. Over they killed there. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they killed him. They brought him back just to ruin. <laughs> Shot him in the eye, but he's okay. <laughs> We've got the technology. Man. Endlessly creative. <laughs> Somehow, Kingpin returned. <laughs> uh, Kingpin retired. Get the nano the king, back. Kingpin's like, I have died many times before. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Did you do that? Yeah, I'm a really good lawyer. It's extremely uh, rare to see our favorite superheroes engaging in any larger socio-political projects. Really weird. So as to, they show Civil God. War footage. As yeah. showing the Civil That's War. Not, not unless, mention, he's saying that this, unless he's saying this is the rare instance of them engaging in How can you call that rare in any larger... So. But so also showing Black Panther, who, to be fair, is a criticism of the Black Panther, let's call it law, the world building that they've taken so long. But, like, that was pretty explicit, wasn't it? His interest in... But I guess maybe he might say that mm -hmm. that's the point. He might you can't call that, that rare. Black Panther is notable. No, I know you can't call it rare because you can just run through the films and think about all of the... Incident. Like, yeah, sure, they're not often the main focus of that film, but they're present. You have to acknowledge that they're present. Yeah, the structure's yeah. there. Socio-political projects that push society forward. There are a few heroes, like billionaire oh, Tony oh, Stark, okay. whose entire characterization revolves around building and inventing new technologies. Okay. But notice that oh, nearly character? everything how, he invents is related to high-tech weaponry. No, weaponry? that's just the, that's no, just no, the things no, we that's see him true. do. That's yeah, just that, the that, things that. we see him build. What about, has, what about the technology whole... he invents oh, okay. specifically to do with psychological help? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the yeah, energy. It's just, it's just the beginning the of Civil it, War. The movie he just oh, showed. It's, you gotta think about it as the core is the arc reactor. That's like the core from which everything gets yeah. built out. And the arc reactor is not military equipment. It's no. energy. Yeah. It can be used for civilian and military purposes. Does what I mean? Like... That's this, what it was initially uh, built this feels for. Like, the, big, um, the big arc reactor in Iron Man 1. It's like, I yeah, feel like, like the, even, it was even the jokes. Like, oh, this is, we just, was just a... Uh, just an ad, just so the, the hippies shut up or something. And I was like, no, actually, it's really good. We should start doing that more because it's really helpful for everybody. Internet uh. creators have gone on a bit of an arc. And uh, there was a time where it was just movie reviewers reviewing movies and then political people started reviewing movies and it was really fucking annoying because like, mm. they come in with a particular lens and they can't see anything else. Now, someone might say, and there's going to be plenty of people who would, yeah, of course you feel that way. You're a right winger reviewing a left wing video. I'd be like, okay. But uh, mm -hmm. what I would want to highlight is that a right winger, suitably pushed in a particular direction. Let's take a Matt Walsh, for example. Matt Walsh, yeah. Yeah, he would say. he would see a bunch of things that the left winger doesn't see, and vice versa. And like, I just feel like we're so obsessed in a nerd autistic way with what happens in these movies. That we're not even trying to correct their record on what is actually happening. We're just annoyed that they keep fucking forgetting things. For example, as Fringy just laid out, it's like, where do you think these weapons come from? Do you remember? Do you remember the scenes where he invents the arc mm -hmm. reactor that he, he fucking makes yeah. the... It's the whole core of the Iron Man suit, and then it it's, it's the energy at the beginning. It's the whole Avengers scene. It's his intro scene. It's, it's, Avengers, they're more, con yeah. they're more concerned with their... He's using it to create clean energy. Yeah, yeah. which is... And then, and then it becomes the like the Loki wants to insult him for that. Like, he finds it to be the warm light for all mankind sort of thing. Like, it's... It's annoying because, like, I, I would argue that we are actually in these movies for entertainment rather than they support or deny our political position. 
Mm-hmm. And so it blinds the fuck out of you. The fact that he's like, all Tony does is make weapons. It's like, that's not true. It's not yeah, they get, I mean, they get so fixated what, what you, on that well, narrative well, that they don't even pay attention to the story. It's frustrating. I mean, to it's, it's just like, it's stuff that's in the background, but stock is, a, it, you know, stock industries is a company that we see at the beginning is creating weapons. Many, many years later, it still exists, which is many, many years after he said that they were getting out of weapons yep. manufacturing. What, exactly. what do you think they're doing? <laughs> yeah. What do you think the company is? Do you think that that might be represented in the technological advancement that you see present in the films of how the technology gets more and more and more crazy, which obviously creates problems well, in I don't know. itself, but it's there. How could you get more explicit than saying Tony Stark is working with the Center for Damage Control? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like, come on, come on. Pay the attention. Friends then Damn use it. in their vigilante policing initiatives. Yes, this is a thing, but you've ignored everything else. <laughs> yeah, I like. Oh, remember how? Remember how Peter was getting involved in doing like charity stuff? Oh, that doesn't count. Sorry, the occasional act of charity. Yeah, that no, gets in the way of my out. point. So never mind that. Doesn't count. Yeah. Nope. Well, and you know what I think as well, well is I mean, you, you could argue that he's going to get rid of it with the... You could argue he's going to he's going to sideline it with the occasional thing, but it's like, it's still on him, I think. Like, I consider him dishonest until he brings up the fact that in yeah. uh, Far From Home, he's clearly doing charity work. Yeah, like, how many you, times... You better acknowledge it. How many times it. can you point to it? How many times can you point to it before it ceases to be occasional? It's not even know? just that. I, what How I'm saying times? is that you're relying on assuming that he would consider that one of the occasional and doesn't matter, but like, I think it's on him to acknowledge it, at the very least with a fucking uh, visual, I, if I not explicitly. I would agree it's on him to acknowledge it, because part of, it, uh, I, a part of the way that this video will work is when you show all of the instances of them blowing stuff up, you're kind of relying on people not remembering the films very well. Exactly. And not remembering Actually, the references 100%. as explicit or implicit. The strength of these kinds of videos is people being like, oh, yeah, they don't do any charity yeah. work. They yeah. don't do any at all. That's true. And yeah. then they watch someone, if fucking, if, God forbid they watch someone like us, you know, crazy pipeline rightoids that lead you to <laughs> uh, being like, oh, yeah, shit, they do. Damn. Huh. Oh, Whoops. Oh, well. Oh well, <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, we don't, like we don't have an interest in proving that it, it's. Yeah, it's like ah, oh, see, it's pro my thing. It's like no, we just want to talk about what's happening in these because part of what we like is the fact that characters are flawed, or that systems are flawed, or that that leads to whatever storytelling payoff. Mm-hmm. Not trying to sell you a worldview or how this, how a particular Marvel movie is anti a worldview that is actually correct. We just want to point out what they're trying to do. It's because like this is cringe. This video right now, it's it's ignoring yeah, mm-hmm. so many Already. references. Already it's cringe, we're barely even in it. Mm -hmm. While stopping something bad might be necessary, it is very different from building something good. Hmm. I mean... Well, uh, like, not necessarily. It's kind of it's kind of interesting because Tony's perspective was that he had privatized world peace through the creation of Iron Man as a technology. Well, and I'm not, like, I think it diminishes some of these acts. Like, him doing the snap, you'd be like, yeah, but that's just countering something bad. It's like, yeah, but you say that, like, someone starting up a charity means more than him giving his life to stop a, an army yeah, from like, destroying the world, you know? charity is a reaction, it's reactionary fighting. to, like, poverty, something yeah. that exists. Everything is reactionary in the sense that like there's it, feedback that makes you make that choice. Tony is about to snap, and then this guy's like, you know you're not building anything when you do this, right? <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's just dying. Okay. I mean, he's like, no, uh, not building anything, Tony. Argument, what the fuck? Like, it's just... Well, like, it's just, I guess it's the thing of just not understanding that it's very difficult for things to get built when people are being killed. So sometimes mm-hmm. a good person needs to have the courage to stop the thing killing people. I, I, I mean, guess maybe I maybe there will be a broader criticism that why is it that all superhero films have to have like a, a physical conflict, like a fight between a good guy and well, a bad you, guy? Why can't there be a superhero film that is just Tony doing philanthropy? Just an anthropology. Yeah, that yeah, absolutely right. should Still come up because yeah. that's obviously where his criticism is. Co- like I said, as far as I'm concerned, it's more so <laughs> the films that don't present it are just poorly written because they're not accounting for like elements of the universe that exist. But the, the ones that I consider yeah. good do account for it as much as they probably should, because ultimately it's not advisable to make a film where Robert Downey Jr. walks around saying, like, yeah, how's that program going good? We do need to get, like, <laughs> this guy on it. And you know, it's just like, yeah, that's that's great. But the the intelligent way to do that is to show it's happening either in the background or with explicit mm-hmm. lines, but that you don't want to go further than having the whole fucking movie be about. Imagine, you know, like, Hope at her desk 
taking calls in quantum mania being I like yeah i know <laughs> taking notes and everything like you can well, incorporate it the way, properly the way to go but, that and still have an action movie though is to, i guess do man versus <clears throat> nature like have 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 iron <laughs> man responding to a hurricane or something and trying to save people well like it that, depends you, right you we can make a good movie that's, that's we can push the we can push the levers <laughs> yeah, I mean, in all kinds of different directions in that we could have more references to social programs that Tony's doing. We could then have a whole scene dedicated to him actually controlling one until you like push all the way to the end. But the funny thing is, I actually do agree that we probably could have, in Phase 4, sold a movie that was a prequel during the blip of Tony trying to fix the world yeah. that had nothing to do, no action scenes whatsoever. I, I, I had to watch that. I yeah, it could, it. it could work, especially if you do it well. It's just that, like, it's not, like I said, it's not advisable. There's going to be people who be like, well, I'd like to see a movie where he fights some stuff, if that's okay. Had, it's like, well, don't you understand? It's more it's more about, like, fixing the world in, in positive ways, not just reacting to villains. You're like, yeah, I know. But, like, I, I want to watch, I want to watch him punch Yeah, I want to watch the fun fights and the yeah, punches which, uh, and the conflicts and the contests This is what I mean, it's know, like, contests and challenges. once you're invested in a character enough, it doesn't really matter what they're doing. I always used to talk about, um, like, Breaking Bad in its prime. I always used to say, like, Walter could be just making his, his lunch for the day and it'll be, it'll be entertaining. With Brian Cranston's performance, just him like making a sandwich. Just if you're well, not invested in the character. Well, know, that's you, true, you of course. That. You want to maximize, right? And it's like Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say the whole episode, but like just I'm like the one who almost I mean, they, they got a lot of they got a lot of miles out of him catching a fly. Yeah, and that was a Ryan Johnson did. episode too. It's such a I gotta talk about that one day. It's such a controversial episode. It's so fascinating. I liked it. Point yeah. being, um this video has to address some meta things as well as the actual realities of yeah. some of these movies for it to be honest, and so far we're not doing great. Even though we're only four minutes in, you know, mm -hmm. maybe they'll good. improve. No, he lost. Although in modern in politics, these two things are often conflated. Yep, we're the agents of status quo. I am Groot. So rather than focusing on innovative ways to transform society for the better, we mostly again. So I would. This is the funny thing. I almost want to agree with him when it comes to. God, well, I'm thinking about Guardians 3 right now. The fact that they have invented or have yeah, access to the incredible <laughs> healing shit that given to Earth would make a huge difference. Oh, yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's just bad writing at that start. point. That's something they threw in because they needed it for the sake of like plot elements in the film without thinking about how that would affect the whole world. You can't this just is, throw that this in. This is not a case of the, the writers were not thinking good, we're preserving the status quo as no. is our hidden political agenda and creating these Marvel... And they just <laughs> fucking suck what they're doing. That's all it is. Just yeah, if you, it if you locked him in a room and said, James, don't you think this would change everything for Earth? He'd probably be like, oh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. They don't care. They anyway, don't care at all. It's yeah, it's not. Way, it, I think you would see it as a bit of a like autistic nitpick. You'd be like, whatever. Like, yeah, like, what's your problem? That's what I mean. Hey, I the fact that they don't like, like never go to Earth again. <laughs> well, I think I that a normal response from him could even include like, yeah, but Earth's not really into the like. They're not really connected with the rest, and it's like, no, they are though. The Guardians went there. Like you're I telling think me that. doing like any type of any type of sci-fi or fantasy, establishing your rules and consequences, and just like how everything works, that should be one of your main, you know, interests. Dude, this in happens all the time. Oh, like, you know, like Force Why Heal in Star Wars. Really? That's just another example of being like, oh shit, that does reflect on everything that's happened before. Every you're like, yeah, yeah that's that's, that's how it works. Oh, whoops, whoopsie. Yeah, whoopsie. How it works when you change rules. The rule becomes changed in the past as well. That's the thing. We usually highlight is contradiction, they fucked up. And then there's some people on YouTube who be like, ah, this is indicative of a political system or political ideology. <laughs> like, no. No. We just see superheroes reacting whenever the status quo is threatened. Whenever the status quo is threatened, I mean, but the still, heroes I mean, disagree on what the status yeah, yeah. quo should be. But, but also, but also is like, the status quo. let's not, let's, yeah, exactly. Let's not, not like cross wires or get confused here. Quo. Right now, we're defending the status quo of not de dying. Like, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Right now, they're <laughs> just trying to save our existence. But also, yeah, but we're, I mean, we're trying to prevent quo. the destruction or enslavement of the planet. So mm -hmm. that's a good baseline for a status quo. Well, and even then, it's not true because the status quo for the last five years has been half of the population is dead and they do change that they they're yeah yeah what about the work the avengers did that? during those five oh. years like when black widow was trying to keep all them together and they're doing all of that, that yeah but he would say that's yeah. all still reactionary they need to be coming up with innovative solutions to the world's problems but again tony <laughs> tony, tony did that. yeah but that, the problem is they don't use that in these fucking not properly movies. no no, I'm saying they could have had to restore like all the people, which technically is altering the status quo because we've had five years of half the people. I get what you mean. Well, I just want to yeah. add that um, 
all of the heroes defending the status quo don't even agree on what the neutral position should even be. Exactly. They don't. Special. Other than less death would be good. <laughs> they well, agree yeah, on yeah. that. Of course everyone can agree on that. But I was going to say, like, we're not even talking about necessarily Iron Man and Cap, which is obviously a huge disagreement, but also just, like, the fucking aliens that are here. Obviously they don't necessarily yeah. agree on whatever the status quo But as you've highlighted, they don't want to die. That's their main thing. Yep. Pretty yep. straightforward. Yep. In Age of Ultron, Tony and Bruce's ah, plan yes, to use AI to technology to bring about peace in our time peace in our time is framed as the height of hubris and something that endangers all of humanity well no 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 you're omitting a lot of context there one of the things that's pointed out is that tony made this decision without talking to the rest of the team right. and of course you could broadly apply it to without talking to the world so mm -hmm. yeah it was pretty arrogant to just do it without talking to anybody about it yeah, yeah, that was the idea and of trying to create the, the idea of trying to create a system that will respond to threats rapidly and that means that you can retire and you can actually like have a life now. Like, yeah, sure, that idea, you know, on its face is like, okay, yeah, I mean, that's like trying to be proactive. It didn't pan out, nope. but, but you know. Well, and, and it's Ugh. worth mentioning One that um, it, every intention was for it to pan out, and had it gone through intention, which is no necessary reason for them to think otherwise. Would have worked real well. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Strange, but exactly. but like That's what? Strange, you saw a piece of that. Well, and what illustrates like, that almost perfectly is it does work out the second time with uh, Vision. Mm -hmm. right. They create but a counter robot that there, actually um, destroys the main bad guy robot, oh. who then goes on to try to save the world several times. Yeah, nobody talks I about how useful I'm... Vision is. They only talk about how bad Ultron was. Exactly. <laughs> I suppose what I'm curious about though is again because he's saying like, well, Tony's decision to be proactive was considered the height of hubris. And it's like, do you believe? So you believe that the hidden political agenda of Avengers: Age of Ultron is don't change the world, just fucking yeah, be as opposed happy with to what you've the <laughs> outrage Boy. that several characters have for him for having done this reckless decision without further discussing it. Even though in concept, a suit of armor around the world is like, I understand that. I know what that means. I understand the concept for sure. Yeah, but, but he didn't as, talk and to another anybody. hubris it's like, element. It's like. Uh, is that part of what makes Ultron so destructive is that he's got Tony's personality in him, which is that, like, I know how to save the world better than you do, and then, you know, does stuff that's destructive. Because that's part of it. It's mm -hmm. what informs both his need and desire and willingness to save the world with sacrificial motives, but also to do things that are not so wise. It takes mm -hmm. Tony's hint of megalomania and removes the conscience. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you could view Ultron could view as that, being that. Mm -hmm. Like Tony without yeah. a soul. Don't trust I'm robots, Marge. man. They don't think or feel. <clears throat> Believe in peace and let us keep it. I think you're confusing peace with quiet. Ultimately, does he agree with him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many. Well, there's so many things that are being implied of... right now. It is. Yeah, it's the implication <laughs> that if the Avengers save the world and return it to the state it was, that that's not good. Like you guys got in the way. Just... Ultron was going to save us. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like, just to the status quo is a negative reputation because people only bring it up when they are trying to refer to something negative. But well, by the way, don't the talk about the negative of the status quo when they think about running water, electricity, like functioning, yeah, human rights, you know, functioning, functioning governments, representative services. republics, yeah, you know, like, constitutions, you know, and human rights. I think it's like actually like it's somewhat reasonable to think that if Ultra were a real thing, announced that he was going to kill everyone, that Hassan would be on his stream being like. He has a point. <laughs> Yo, he watches One Piece. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that was Ultron's kind of like Hal, but horrendous. if he was like really good. <laughs> <laughs> the Avengers learned that it's a mistake to try to reshape the world. No, 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 no. it's not a thing. It's that they need to work together I'm as sorry. a team. By the like, end of Endgame, oh. do you recognize the way the Earth works compared to our Earth at Dude, that point? No. It's so obvious that the motherfuckers have time the travel. They need to. They need to work together. That's the point. When they work together at the end of the film, like the old man said, together. That's what it's about. It's not about changing the world. It's not a good idea. It's that they need to work together as a team. That's what makes the Avengers better. Than uh, a lot of the entities that came before, dude. Age of Ultron's not a good film, but like no. that's obviously what it's about. It's it about has working things together. To say. It's got some good quotes. Oh damn! Yeah, the theme and then it's the got quotes that lead into theme. other shit. Because uh, of course, what he brings to him in Endgame is that we were supposed to lose together, but we didn't even do that. 
Oh, Moodle, you gotta go to sleep, do you? Yeah, I, I didn't expect this to go this long, to be honest. Oh, so. no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, four hours is a long EFAB, you're correct on that one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope hey. you enjoy your Sleepenheimers. Before you go, I, I do you want to tell people why they should... Bear in mind, this will not be... You, you understand... This is for later. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, to, Metal, Metal's Forge every Sunday. Come check it out with there me, Mark. It's always oh. great times, good, good yes. fun. And I'm gonna probably be streaming some kind of video game, whatever is the hot shit, Hell the, yeah. the peak fire at the time, if you will. Oh boy, the peak. Alan the, Wake the peak. Two. Ooh. No, I will Suicide never touch Squad. <laughs> Payday Three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lads. I'll catch you later. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Bye. Sleep well. Oh, thank Prince. God he's gone. <laughs> Don't My be so man. mean. Because he, he was saying all the stupid things like, oh, Ultron was right. It's like, he wasn't right, Metal. Why'd you keep saying that? It was ridiculous. <laughs> Interesting authoritarian bend from the German, but exactly. all right. Exactly. German robots. They must in wait around, wait around for external threats to materialize. And then, and only then, leap into Well, how can you say that when That's this is like their good. efforts to completely extinguish yeah, uh, Hydra? They're, they're looking they're actively to find Hydra. any instances. You'd be like, yeah, but that's reacting to the knowledge of Hydra. It's like, this is going a little step further okay. than Hydra attacking right. things and them stopping them, isn't it? Hydra's been but around since most want, of them were dude. born. But like, so, first and of all, just the image is all wrong. It. But secondly, they do work outside of the fucking movies. We know about it. We're told yep. about it. No, we're not there. That's right. Yeah, cap in those commercials and everything. Like, we, there's not, we don't have to see everything on screen. No, that's a tiny act of charity, see. don't you know? Also, even stuck. if this was true, it would be a good thing. No rags. They're defending oh. the status quo. The villain's at a point. This is the hidden politics of, uh, of Avengers Age of Ultron is status quo good. Hydra should remain a shadow organization controlling <laughs> S.H.I.E.L.D.? <laughs> uh, it's so weird. Like... Um, the amount you have to ignore to do these stupid fucking politics bent videos. Because I just feel like the baseline assessment of a lot of these stories is that they are trying to go for X and they oftentimes are rocky at best and they usually fuck things up. Meanwhile, someone goes, ah, but if you consider all of this intricate fuck ups and ignore some of these points here and there, I can draw a picture that's actually very much specifically a thing that I find annoying. It's like, yeah, what a coincidence, yeah, it, eh? Th this to me is just, the, the way more easy, the easier read for Marvel films is they're not very interested in saying much about the world, honestly. Yeah. They don't, have, like, they've been doing the, they don't have that much to say. They've been failing the basic will building stuff forever, because it's hard. It's, it's really it hard to write your own story about your characters and then to also consider all the characters in the other worlds and how they might be affected by all these events and then all the fucking- Lack of interest. Institution, just, yeah. Eventually, you'll be like, ah, fuck you. <laughs> like, I, don't I mean, it, it, it indicates that like this is not the genre for them because if you don't even care about world building and rules and concepts when it comes to this shit, like the, the, the Secret Invasion is one of many, many, many examples. But they had no interest Probably in the this best role. example now. Okay, for for just uh, in terms of the aliens in particularly, like the fact that they didn't care about the scrolls enough to like figure out that part of the story. Like, you could have made a whole phase off of that and like the lack of interest in these concepts is just shocking to me like everything we break down it seems like that's a pattern mm -hmm. action there I have at this that. point been 20 this lineup man no, what yeah look at how grim it is thor and black widow not coming back loki ruined captain like captain yeah, marvel's never coming widow back there? Black Widow was ruined too. Yeah, Scarlet Witch is dead. Be the reason Black Widow is there because she's a woman. Why is Black that's, Panther that's the there while Shuri is also there? Sh is Shuri there twice or is that Shuri? <laughs> what is happening? I assume that's T'Challa. But he's dead now. Um, oh, he's dead. Well, because yeah, so the problem is this yeah. is this is the like She Hulk shoulders. episode, like final finale episodes shot. So yeah, it's weird oh, for him to be a dream. Might have changed. It's yeah. weird for Black Widow to be there too, right? Yeah, because she's that's true. Dead, right? She shouldn't be there. Yeah, she, she should, should never be on back. this You know what? Scarlet it's actually, Scarlet Scarlet Witch I actually be there, do right? want to point out that even further. It's really weird that Black Widow is there. She's been dead for a while in continuity at the time of this this lineup being created. Loki, okay, yeah. I understand why he's there. Same with Captain Falcon. Obviously, Thor yeah. had a movie. That makes sense. Marvels is coming up. Makes sense. Wanda's a bit of a question mark. Like a, I'm not yeah, sure. She's, <laughs> she's dead. Yet. She was implied to be dead. Um, Shang Chi. Coming back. 
Shang Chi makes Black sense, Rick. but then yeah, I think yeah. the biggest confusion here is why the fuck is Black Widow there? And all I can assume is because it's one of their mainline female heroes. They obviously want to put her up Matthew. front, but the, she, she is just, dead again, and she's, she's not coming, coming back. back. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, she's a dude, you guys. Like, what the hell? Also, her head is made it very clear characters? she's not coming back. Pretty much. Is it all? Yeah. Is it all just phase four, four characters? Is that why? So that's why, like, Black Widow had a movie, I guess. But why is there two Shuris? Yeah. I. I well, there's one. That is T'Challa. That's T'Challa. Oh, is? Are we sure, though? I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. not yeah, under the shoulders. T'challa. Yeah, yeah, that looks yeah that's slim. T'Challa. That's him. Oh, no. Shuri really? looks weird no, in the suit. That's, that's, yeah, Shuri's yeah, suit looks a bit Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> Shuri's, <laughs> Shuri's, Shuri's like a bobblehead. You're right. You're right. But look, look how thick I mean, the neck is and the shoulders. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Shuri's a bobblehead. Shuri's bracelets are hiding the boobs. So, you know. Also, by the way, that fucking poster for Multiverse of Madness under the Marvel thing. Oh, yeah. So bad. That one, <laughs> that one is not That good. one was made by someone who did not have much time. <laughs> Let's put their, their eye in the, the shattered glass surrounding Doctor oh. Strange. Ooh. Nine feature films yeah. and 20 television shows in and around the MCU. But depending on when you're watching this, those numbers might be significantly higher. What the fuck? Suffice. That's what happens in the show. It's, she breaks the fourth wall. It's yeah. it's, it's funny because it, it was the thing the most where we said, creature in the MCU. "Yeah, how could it be worse than Loki?" It's like she literally comes out of her own TV show to control the events. Yeah, of it, so. but are you gonna say these things when Deadpool does things that break the fourth wall? Exactly. Yeah, you yeah, hate women. Either. That's what this means. Well, that's was the thing, though. It, if She Hulk were funny, it would actually go a long way. Exactly. Nobody would have yeah, guessed. Of course, the show was funny. Nobody cared. <laughs> <laughs> I do oh, like that. Funny. It's like, what are you saying? That women aren't funny? It's like, no, just you. <laughs> but instead, it was give me what I want and make Daredevil my sex slave. So that's a little uh, awkward. That was Dude, weird. That was really bad. That was really bad. I haven't quite caught on to the whole double standard thing yet. Give him a few more decades. To say, there's a staggering number of characters and stories. But if we take a step back, we can identify an overarching pattern that. within the. Yeah, what that's the, the thing about these... sensing patterns, isn't it, with humans? You kind of have to ignore yeah, stuff. They can lead you astray. They can lead you astray. Which is, when pattern it... recognition is really good when we were hunter-gatherers. It's not so great when we live in the society that we live in now. Kind well, of the fact that he highlighted, like, the amount of projects made over so many eras by so many different writers, directors, and points of view and cultural differences. Like, you really think there's going to be a unifying pattern for all of them? Outside yeah, of something so broad as to politics. the main character beats up someone. The hidden politics such that it's, like, concealed. Yeah, almost bullshit. In a this manner. Well, I would also, I, I would say to him, it's... it's study the phrase, it's too good to be true, because he wants this to be the hidden politics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The superhero formula. As David Graeber points out, oh, here we fucking go. Oh, no. The basic plot I takes the following David form Graeber. a bad guy embarks on a project of world conquest, destruction, theft, extortion, or revenge. The hero is alerted crazy. to the danger and figures out what's happening. I mean, oftentimes, um, a lot of the time, but sure. there's also oh, like sure other things crazy, happening. The yeah. hero is often a part of the plot. Well, so, going to yeah. be something I want to break apart with this is the specifically. how could anything else happen in regards specifically to the individual villain? They're not going to tell the. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but they typically don't tell the hero about their plan before they enact it. it does happen, everyone? Yeah, yeah. you're going the to react to the find out. villain. Yep. So with that in mind, it's like, so what are you expecting? And, and I almost want him to start highlighting superhero movies that break this mold because, or stories it doesn't even have to be a movie. Better better examples and like some like just he just throws up a quote and lets it do the work for him like explain your thought oh, process why this is significant it's just lazy this okay. regards something of a of a of a point of contention we've had on basically all of efab which is i'm citing this person because mm. out of all the books i read they agree with me and so if i cite them it makes me look more correct without looking vain it's a lazy, yeah. lazy stretch, man. Like, like, I don't care. I don't care that this guy wrote a, a book. Um, no, I didn't, read anything. I, didn't, I, I didn't read it, dude. I didn't read <laughs> yeah, it. Hitler wrote like, if you read well, the book, it, you should be able to explain like, it. Oh, yeah, it's a quote. Look, oh, it's a quote from a book. Okay. 
I would argue part of the problem as well is the fact that this is a person who comes across as a, what may be referred to as a scholar slash academic, someone who's not from within the world of superhero content related to comics or movies. In coming in with an analysis of yeah. it that is mm -hmm. through the lens Wrong. of whatever shit he's interested it's in. It's like right listening now. to someone say that video yeah, games lead like, you to violent acts. You're like, oh yes, god. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. This is some like listen Good to your like your aunt talk about video games game analysis. I, have um, you ever noticed how the heroes never do anything in like a social program? It's like they do though. It's like, yeah, except those times though. Yeah. Grasp onto that narrative and ignore all. Yeah, the we got to get more proactive all. plots like the Lord of the Rings. Let's see what more there is here. After trials and dilemmas, the hero foils the villain's plans. The world is returned to normal until the next episode when the exact same thing happens. The exact same okay, thing happens really? once that's again. Great. That's nice and reductive. No. Nice and reductive. Right, right, I'm man. surely oh, yeah. Civil it War just, is you, nice you, you blew it. <laughs> it just destroys it with the last yeah, why? Yeah, why use the I, word exact I, I when you don't mean that. exact? You know? I enjoy that because it's not exactly the same thing at all. That's when you just, you well, lost like, me there. Yeah. Just, Why don't we go so with, um, of this, you know? it's like, maybe he's correct on most of them. How about that? And it's like, all right, Iron Man 1, the whole world changes by the end of the film. You're like, oh, Iron Man 2? Like, most of you know, the world still changed. Like, the nature of Iron Man, Tony Stark's control over the Iron Man technology and the suits has changed. You got a uh, war machine now, as well as the government's well, something I find. Something I find interesting about this quote is that it doesn't address the fact that it's something that's pointed out in Civil War, right? That that in a sense the heroes existing invites the villains' responses to them, which is yes. uh, which. Vision but this speaks. quote denies the agency of the heroes in provoke. Provoking is probably not the right word because it's generally meant to be that the villain like uh, uh, in in the wrong for the response. But certainly the idea that the hero's presence in the world creates a response. I mean, fuck. You know, like Vulture is created by, in a sense, by Iron yep. Man. Yep. Um, yes. I, th I think that's Vision's best scene. That's such a good relation. Yeah, Vulture's reaction. It's a good point. It's a good point that that, mm -hmm. that sometimes the villains are reactions to the heroes. I mean, so you could describe it in that way. It's like, oh, well, the hero is on some mission and project, and yeah. then the villain finds out, and then they react to it. Yeah. And then after trials and dilemmas, at the I mean, last possible minute, the hero that, foils the villain. I mean, that's absolutely what Iron Monger does. Power. That's what Whiplash yeah. does. That's yeah. what fucking well, Jillian yeah. does. No, it's let's what a lot, of, uh, a lot of villains are a response. Well, let, let's look at maybe what we could probably say are the top three villains in the MCU. We have Vulture, and he's reacting to things that are happening around him. We have Zemo, who is definitely reacting to Absolutely specifically what things that the Avengers, the Avengers are doing. We have yeah, Thanos. A full Avengers Thanos movie. is reacting to, to essentially a, a crisis and a universal crisis and doing what he thinks is best for it. Yep. So and I remember, the best he, three his, plan, his plan got spurred on because the Avengers exist. That made him hasten. And, yes. and start to, yeah. to work a bit harder to get a oh, plan in fits. action. So, it all fits. Well, like, it's, all right, it's just what it you're myself. seeing at play there is way more normal, which is the push and pull that the yes. characters in the world are reacting to each other. Not yeah, just they don't the just get up one day and go, you know also, what? I hate the planet. I yeah, need to kill all of it. These things, though. Like, part, these of my, um, details. part of my world building issues wasn't that nothing was reacting or changing, it was that not enough was back in phase one and two, right? Absolutely. Because yeah. Uh, by the end of Captain America, it's like the implication is that Cap being in modern times is going to change everything, and it's like, oh shit! And of course, we we bank on that in Avengers. Uh, Thor, he decides like I'm going to be the personal protector of Earth. Like that's a huge difference. That's that's not something that was running before. He's a fucking Norse god that's going to now semi visit. He has a girlfriend on Earth. You think that's not going to change everything for the better? <laughs> of course. So, yeah, like, I mean, fucking touch phase two, all of that is phase one, and that all is dramatic change. It's not like a episodic TV show where everything goes back to normal. It's not. I just wish the changes no. were more thorough and more representative of what would happen. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and like I said, by the time you hit the post-endgame world, that, that the MCU is so beyond our world. Oh. Like, it's not even close. You can't recognize anything anymore okay. in terms of just how everything functions, or how everything should function, considering all of the technological advancements, not including Stark, Wakandan, uh, all the space stuff, you know what I mean? It's just all of it now. It's, 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 yeah. They've it's sold crazy. everything. Something I'm thinking about right now, I, given that this quote was in response to The Dark Knight Rises, isn't this funny when, in The Dark Knight, Batman loses? Like, the Joker wins? So, at the last possible minute, the hero does not foil the villain's plan. Joker won. The world is not returned to normal. Batman is on the run and no longer an active agent in Gotham. 
Well, yeah. So and... this doesn't even apply to the superhero trilogy that this was about. Yeah, and by the time we get it's to Dark Knight true. Rises, Gotham is unrecognizable compared to what it was in the Dark Knight. Yeah, so it is a return to the status quo. Things this is all change. wrong. Yeah. It's just wrong about the context of the films that he was talking about and broadly applied to Marvel films in general for as formulaic as they can be. It, it's This is still inaccurate. Mm -hmm. So this is like the third or fourth quote that he's put up and you've dissected pretty much every line of how it's just complete nonsense. Well, it's, it's because the guy who wrote it really isn't that interested yeah. in superhero stuff. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going like to say. He, I think this is an indicator that... He genuinely doesn't get it. It's just a lack of interest, it lack sounds, of ignorance. Just sounds ignorance. grifty, but yeah, I don't know. I don't well, know I mean, what him. could you devise as a possible uh, motivation? I would say that they want to prove that these films are supposed to convince you that the world as it is is fine. You don't need to change it. Yes. And that that would like that seep that into you in real world, that you don't need to make any political change that's good. And, uh, and, thus, and thus you tacitly accept capitalism or something. Yeah, it would obviously, it would, it would have whatever, you could, this could have been a right winger or a left winger's video, technically speaking, in terms of like, they're trying to convince you not to speak up when you should against and then labels a whole bunch of things that the MCU yeah, hasn't addressed exactly. at all. Exactly. And the MCU is a good tool to do that with. Like, they don't give a fuck about the story, but they know that it's something they can use. It's a vehicle they can use to push their fucking message. Well, yeah, well remember, I if mean, your view is that everything is political, hyper political, and can't be divorced from the context and the climate crazy. in which it's in, and yeah, I it does become a bit of a moral imperative, right? To and be don't making forget, these kinds of arguments and videos. You can slide right into the algorithm with the hidden politics of Marvel. It's like, ooh. Yeah, people are like, ooh. Ooh, I wonder what Marvel's trying to convince yeah, me of. Yeah, it's so slimy. Like, come on. I don't like it. That's don't what I mean. Like I feel like we've already gone right. over just how much true. it's ignoring references in order to make its point, which is... By the way, I'm, I'm never convinced with these whether or not they know, because... They can be this blind when watching these movies. They can just watch them and be like, oh, this is this is exactly what I hate. You're looking at him like Riddler right now, Mola. You're looking at him with that little Riddler look. Does the Riddler know? look? I've got a big does question mark hat. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I light it up whenever I'm confused. <laughs> Once again, this looping story structure remains consistent. It's not looping. I kind of wish it were. Nor is it <laughs> They've lost it the formula yes, completely. Sure. They don't know what the fuck they do it anymore. Across most Marvel Studio productions. I guess that's an element of this video that I find interesting. It's just gotten, it's aged worse yeah. as time has gone on. Yeah. Like what, the, what, the, one of the biggest problems of the MCU right now is that they don't take into account the insane things that they supposedly change about the world. Well, nope. I think one of the biggest yeah. counters to this, which probably would have been created by the time, like the script would have been, or the scene would have been filmed by the time you talked about this, with like the, the Hope, Hope Van Dyne doing s explicit systems worldwide with technology that relates to Ant-Man to fix the world. Like, that's exactly what he's after. He wouldn't, mm -hmm. had that film come out just before this, this video had, it would have been like a direct counter, but of course there's loads of counters anyway. There are certain things that are supposed to happen in a superhero oh, story. Fucking, I hate this fucking scene. Yeah, They're terrible. like, oh, look at how clever we are for our meta-analysis of the way that superhero films are made. If you had written something that was a little bit more conventional, maybe it would have turned out okay. Maybe. Rather than all of your crazy, wacky, stupid ideas. Anyway. Well, what's funny about it is that it's the whole point of genre, I would argue, is that yes, there are certain things that are typically supposed to happen within the thing that you're making. Like, let's not fucking drive it to insanity and say, oh, yeah, that's the politics of the status quo. It's like, what? no. Mm -hmm. That just wipes out the concept of subversion and deconstruction, which, by the way, are practically dirty words now because of how badly they've been done. The pattern of resetting the world to the status quo at the end of each uh, storyline... It's weird pointing out, like, with World War II. <laughs> You know, like, it's just oh, not yeah. true. This yeah. is all bullshit. The allies, listen, the allies just wanted to preserve the status quo when they stopped Hitler from invading Europe. Yeah. It's not. I mean, Hitler was a man with ideas, right? He was a creative guy. He was, he was <laughs> endlessly creative. Ugh. He wrote He's a book. partially a function of the serialized nature of the superhero genre. Look at that but it's American also guys. an explicit go, principle German. unto itself within the MCU meta narrative. Recall that in Endgame, I the Avengers not to. build a quantum time machine and use Is it to undo the snap. That's bad writing. <laughs> bad writing. 
bad, bad, bad. It's not the hidden political agenda. It's bad writing. <laughs> they, they forgot about it. They don't want to deal with it. They invented a cure-all to every possible problem ever, and they don't use it more than once. And they don't even tell us why. Yeah. At least in The Dark Knight, he says, like, let's use it once and never again, which I have issues with. But the fact that we good. just go as far as saying, oh, yeah, we have time travel. <laughs> It's like, oh, do we? And then I just never use it anymore. <laughs> it's, it's as though it never existed. It's insane. Well, it might the come up in the next Avengers it. movie. That's when I expect them to know. register it. There's certainly mm. no PIM particles left. Because, Dude, you know, there's I wouldn't be surprised PIM particles all the time. if it is Galactus or Doctor Doom that does some world ending thing. And one of the fucking, like, we actually get a Disney level. Can't we use the time travel to defeat them? It's like, no, that's a one in a million. One in oh, a million. <laughs> be like, fuck you. you. Come on, that move, one left. in a million. It's too bad we didn't yeah, have Pim's spares when we anymore. went back in time. Yeah, we Hank don't have Pim any more Pim particles. I, I wonder know. how Ant-Man shrinks and grows without his Pim particles. Like, it's a new yeah, thing. Yeah, they it's, they uh... have them again because Pim comes back. One yes, that's right. No, what it will be is, oh shit, I didn't tie up my shoelace once. I'm Hulk and I tripped and I destroyed it. Um, and Tony's dead and he built it and he didn't write it down. Um, he he did do it on his computer, but then it blew up. So it sorry, runs, it runs on stuck. like yeah, nano center particles that Tony failed to provide more of. So it's, it's just done. <laughs> I just I didn't notice his rocket's tail not vacuum sealed there. Nope. Uh oh. I've never noticed that myself. Wow. <laughs> you gotta. I feel like you gotta put that in a little bag or something. Dude, he's just yeah. back he's there. shrinking and shrinking. The tail stays the same size. Good, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna create a lot of air resistance. <laughs> he's, just, he's more tail now than man. <laughs> he's more noticed. tail than raccoon. I never, <laughs> I never noticed that. They didn't even give him like a little box or a bag to a pouch to sort of yeah. just yeah. bundle it up in. A glass oh. jar. <laughs> and use it to undo the snap. I can't unsee it. But after rematerializing all the people who had been dusted, the heroes don't employ that incredible technology Rude. or the Infinity Stones to address any of the other... Absolutely, it's bad writing. It makes no Rude. sense. It's terrible you cannot writing. say this supports the status quo. You can't make that out. It's just stupid. No, this is this is indicative of the hidden political agenda of the, uh, the Russo brothers uh -huh. and Kevin Feige. You know, for a fucking <laughs> fact, that when they'd finished writing this right or making wingers. this, they were like, we are so done with the MCU, this shit makes no sense anymore, we're out. Not that they helped at this point. No, they didn't problem. help, they kicked out the ladder. Yeah. Problems <laughs> that plague planet That's a good Earth. way of describing it. In fact, the rules of this fictional universe prohibit them from doing so. Nope, they don't, you can still do it. No, they don't. Yeah. Watch! Check out my endgame video. Just watch the fucking man. movie. It's pretty simple. <laughs> if you're like, all you have to do is come back to her and be like, oh, I know you don't like us stealing your gems, but trust me, this time we need it. We we know all the things. We, we have, yeah, we need to do it. Trust me. We'll bring him back. We've had this conversation before. Yeah. Uh, you let us do it last time. We'll just. We and of course, with Loki season two, we now know again with yet more confirmation, you can absolutely change the past. And you can duplicate Infinity Stones too. Mm hmm. Right. They must I'll have. Win. It's so funny to be like, this continuity decides the meaning of all of the MCU. Not that other stuff, though. I'm not I'm not counting that. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Not even counting the actual repercussions of this continuity, just your interpretation of it. Yep. Cowardly is what it is. I suppose they'd have to kill everyone, not kill everyone, kill one person each time for the soul stone. Like, that no, might be the reason. It's they... just available to them. They've got it. You know? It's just, they have it, you know? Yeah, because they, they would have it in a little box. Yeah, they would have returned it to that area, presumably put it on the fucking floor, and <laughs> just been like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they just remember yeah, that. Yeah. Like, the, the Soul Stone is haveable. They, they had it, so. Well, no, wait, no. The stones don't exist because I put them back in time and then Thanos had destroyed them. So, they there are no stones presently, but you can always go back and get them. I thought that they put them all back in their locations, but that that still wouldn't have. No, they put they put them all back where they got them from, so that the time. But that doesn't make sense, stayed. though. Oh, wait, you you can't argue that through. because Look, the space stone Lord, is no longer in the I, same. I I know I know. So I said it. I know I understand because that's what the film thinks is happening. That's wait, what the film believes is the con is what they've done is I that they realize. put them back where they came from so that they could then have all of the events play out as they still did and for them to be destroyed. So there are no time stones or space stones. I mean, you can say that, them to use 
right but now. even you, you, you can't say like the the they just can't because that means Gamora would have to be alive. She wouldn't no, need to I, be sacrificed. I know it, 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 it doesn't work. It cannot work. It, it is really. like an import. Like one of the big ones is that they returned the space stone. It's like, dude, that was a fucking tesseract when you took it. Yeah. What are you going to do? You got to put it in like a big blue box and put it, put in the it box? back where oh, you well. found it. <laughs> it doesn't I mean, work. Endgame well, is awful. But come to think of it, though, like they would only need the soul stone if the purpose they were going back in time required the infinity stones. But yeah, you know, like they're what's the like, thing? You only really need the time stone with... to fix any yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God damn you, Russo brothers. Well, now that you've got the time machine, you don't even need the time stone. You're good. Yeah. Like, well, exactly. no, go because the time stone. machine takes you back to a different time. It splinters off into a different world. Well, only if you mess That's with an it. infinity no, 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 stone, no, no, no. according only to them. Get infinity but that doesn't make any sense. That's you right. can't use that yeah, as they're... Well, the just because someone wouldn't says wouldn't it doesn't mean sense. that's what happens for you, okay? No, I, I know. I know, Molo. Trust me, I know. Just to no. clarify, though, am I correct now in thinking that the only rule now governing time travel is you cannot interact with an infinity stone whilst back in time? Uh, ba the the conclusion... What Tilda Swinton says is... Because remember, uh, Bruce says that changing the past doesn't change the future. And then they say that Back to the Future is bullshit, which is fun. Because Back to the Future makes a, a hell of a lot more sense in this fucking movie. Yeah. Uh, but then when they talk to Tilda Swinton here, she says that removing a time stone from the flow of time is what creates a split. But of course, now we know yeah. that's not true in, uh, in Loki. Loki even contradicts it because any decision ever results in a change in the continuity. And then they prune it. But mm -hmm. Tilda Swinton yeah, couldn't have known like about the, the TVA. It, none of it works. It, it, it well, contradicts itself huh. left and right, back and forth, constantly. They must have known when they said only taking a, or manipulating an Infinity Stone creates another timeline. They must have known that makes no fucking sense at all. They had to have known on set, like, that's bullshit, though. Like, that's fucking dumb. Well, yeah, dumb. because there's so many, of, like, <laughs> what, if you, what if you decide to blow up a city? That was never blown up in the other. Does well, that no, we're talking about right matter. the returning of these stones. If you return the um the the soul stone, you don't get Black Widow back. She's dead. Yeah. So She's what do you do? Dead. You just drop yeah. the stone on the floor, and it's like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and then of course drop the next time the you need it, you go back there, and you're like, yeah, it's still here. <laughs> it's just on the floor. If you want to pick it back mm -hmm. up, it's like, yeah, okay. Millions will suffer. In a similar way, Doctor Strange uses the time... It's so funny because these are the kinds of people that would constantly rant about media literacy, and it's like, you gotta not pay attention to what people tell you in these stories, you gotta look at what happens. Yeah. Just because mm -hmm. she said what she said doesn't make it true. ...stone to undo the invasion of the Dark Universe. That's, that was a nice thing. ...and return the world to normal. Yeah, good oh. thing he fucking did that, eh? Good thing he did. <laughs> yep. Do you want to hang out in the Dormammu really universe? So do you want to hang out there? This fucking I don't want to be able to you. At least Dormammu has creative quo. ideas about eating the souls of all yeah. humanity. <laughs> He's Dormammu endlessly creative. Up the status quo. It would have been a Why did you make this video? <laughs> it's I've such got some a bad ideas. idea. <laughs> He's got some ideas. This Dormammu quo guy. would be a little more like the latter half of Bloodborne. Dormammu knows what's up. Infinite horror. Listen, the MCU is dead. Long live the DCU. The Dormammu. Dormammu who Simms in a Marvel yeah. universe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yet he is expressly forbidden from using that power to change the status quo yeah. in any so other way. So isn't this a film that supports the idea that it doesn't have the hidden politics? He was told not to use it at all. Like, him doing that was outside of the box. That was against the status quo of the wizards. It was so against the but, status quo of the wizards that, uh, uh, that, uh, good old, uh, he's, he's Chueto Ejiofor was like, nah, oh. I don't like you anymore. Mordo. Yeah. yeah. I think he's, well, he's criticizing he, Doctor Strange for not becoming a supervillain after the first film and just being like, yeah, well, now that I can just do doing this, this every I'm time, solve, yeah. I'm going to solve every problem that well, I consider a yeah, problem. Yeah. Like, Correct I find me. this kind of funny because the whole idea with Doctor Strange is that he is kind of like, he does throw a wrench in the status quo. He is a bit unorthodox. True. For a wizard. Um, what I was going to highlight as well is that I'm pretty sure, because like, First of all, this is a very explicit admission from a uh, pop culture detective 
that defending the status quo truly does include preventing a horrible magical monster from eating everyone. <laughs> which, which is, is unacceptable! Yeah. Like, oh, look at you defend oh, the fucking crazy. status quo. It's like, really, dude? <laughs> a lemon king. I don't know, it feels well, like a lemon king. He should have been more proactive. Should... Spice things no, up. No, 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 no. What it was is he should have been more proactive and invaded the dark dimension to kill Dormammu himself before yes. he even got to this point. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I was going to highlight, though, was that uh, even though he's highlighting the reality that you shouldn't be using it willy-nilly, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the scene, he, he starts using it on the apple, and then some like weird things happen, like like uh, crystals appear, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think the implication yeah. is that you're starting to tear apart the universe by... Yeah, so unfortunately, he can't challenge the status quo of physics. Yeah, like, um, isn't that stupid to be like, be that. Strange is such a fucking coward, he won't even destroy the universe. <laughs> <It's> like, wow. <laughs> Um, oh, but then, God, the other thing I was going to bring up was that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, when he's fighting Squidward, he actually does try to use the Time Stone before he's uh, disabled. Yeah. He does. I'm gonna so actually, he is willing yeah. to use it, which, remember, is unorthodox. That is, that is not something, you're not meant to, Doctor Strange was breaking the rules constantly. Surely he should like Doctor Strange as the character fucks around and d kind of challenges the yeah, status quo of the wizard. There's no question. It's um, he does the motions, and you have all the green shit, and, and the, the eye of Agamotto yeah, opens up. Yeah, he was gonna use the time stone to change the status quo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, he was so cool in Infinity War, man. That guy is just hell, fucking awesome. yes. Infinity War yeah, was yeah. not made by the same people who made Ad Game. Okay, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> I, I don't get I, it. I, I they shot it the back best, to back. It's the best it's version of it we ever got. Yeah, it's it was made like by the back. Star Wars shill version of the Russo brothers. It was peak mm. fire, bro. But it turned out it was a <laughs> valley. Peak Valley. Peak Valley. No, no, you mean, yeah, there you go. Do not tell yeah, the natural law. And then he did. So yeah, what, he, what are you suggesting that like the status quo? Is he suggesting that <laughs> physics themselves are saying yes? Don't don't do any political change. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said he specifically oh, no. did what say is natural he, what law. What is he gonna say? What's he What's gonna, gonna say about, about Wanda? Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of so Madness? Oh, yeah, I'm just shaking my head, looking at Wanda, like, oh god, here we go. Wanda they ruined her. The she's they did. absolutely she was a good annihilated. Once. Yeah, yeah. She, she's um, comparing her to Daredevil is actually quite interesting Wanda. because of the the it's like a health bar. Like she's gone. There was a time where I really liked her, but I can't look at her the same way after everything. Daredevil, on the other hand, like the damage that's been done is not significant enough like yet. He's a small. Victim. It's yeah, small. Like he's a victim I think, I think to the he's, narrative. He's Got he was embarrassed damage. in She-Hulk, and he was yeah. like just kind of like slightly damaged by the Echo C, but that's just more like you know most people don't even notice that. Wanda's no. obliterated. Wanda's no, like yeah, yeah, Wanda gone. Vision and Doctor Strange like all together. Like it's it's really fresh it's in my GG. mind to go through it. It's, it's she's over. um I I I she's like yeah she's the worst well, one. You and one Wonder of the worst is I've ever seen. Age of Ultron, Ooh. Civil War, Infinity like Daenerys War. Terror. She's Daenerys Terror for me in terms of like like. I don't even know which is the worst I've ever seen, but th those are like the, the two I think of like S tier character assassination where you just shredded every well fucking pop, pop in a Luke Skywalker a little, little but he's, I'm he's, sure he's, Daenerys will show up on my, the Jon Snow show. The dragon my, just carried her away. She was fine. Daenerys and Luke have been my one and two, but I'm trying to find room for Wanda in that. Oh no, I get you because I think a lot of people would assume like surely Special Daenerys category. and Wanda are worse because it turned them into like psycho killers, and it's like well the thing like, with yeah. Luke is. They made him not care about his family yeah. and the world yeah. dying. Yeah. So it's kind yeah. of like mm -hmm. equal, you know, in a sense. Luke a is catastrophe. Yeah, Luke is a special case. Um, but I also think back of like, can you laugh at Jake Skywalker? Can you think back of your head? I can, I can laugh at it. And I, think, but uh, I, I can't, can't laugh I can't, at Wanda. I can't <laughs> laugh at Jon Snow. Like Jake immediately Snow, laughs. Can, Jamie Skywalker. I, 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 I don't think like, I can laugh at Luke. Um, um, I love Star Wars too. Not much laugh at Luke, <laughs> but I can laugh at the Jake Skywalker no, situation. No, I mean, but like, uh, that's what I mean. That's like, why I, I can't find it funny. It still sucks. It is a bit of a. <laughs> that's what I mean, that's, I think that's my point. Everyone's gonna have their their one where they just can't. Like I can't. Yeah, like, no, that makes sense. I think a lot of it is the, the going by Joker. The uh, it, the tragedy eventually turns to a comedy, but some of them take fucking ages because. Yes. I'm yes, still yeah. looking on TLJ like, this is where it started, man. That's the <laughs> destruction. And some people be like, well, it's TFA. And I'm like, I know, but it feels like it was TLJ. <laughs> it just feels mm. like no, it was No, it, it was TLJ. The, the TFA had everyone excited. They, they could have, the, with all its problems. It could have just been that bad movie. Even yes, in retrospect, yes. it could have just been the bad one. Yes. yes. Other than Han, 
Han, they we, we lost him. We got to drop him. But like, yeah. there's a lot of things they could have salvaged. I think that's the one black guy that. Well, honestly, I think Han fans them are. having assassinated Luke actually gave more credence to them having done it to Han in retrospect. Like people were more willing to entertain that, but they weren't at the time because uh, yeah. JJ succeeded in what he was trying to do, which was to make you feel like it was Star Wars. That was the only thing. Which is why, again, going back to that Acolyte trailer, like I, I don't know how much weight I give to the whole this feels like Star Wars. Like, Can we deal with yeah, that later? Can we sort out the storytelling no. first? Like Whether Alrighty. or not it feels like Star Wars is just not as important to me right now. Yeah, all you do I mean, is you've made a shit show that feels like Star Wars. Gee, thanks. Yeah, and what does that even mean? That it evokes lights? I was like, eh, I don't know. What does it do on its own? Like, what is this gonna like? What is this show gonna do for someone who's never heard of Star Wars in their entire life? And they want to just watch oh, a, I think a good nothing. That, show. That's what I mean. That's what I I'm think saying. That like, the it's idea just... of having that person on the like in the writers' room to be like, yeah, if I didn't know anything about Star Wars, you need to change this. Exactly. That, that audience member doesn't exist. I don't think there's anyone that's jumping on at the acolyte. And it frustrates me. Because my standards, since I've been like really young for superhero stuff or almost anything, is like it's got to be good enough for the people who don't give a fuck about the content. Like, so I can watch it with like you know family members and friends, and like it, there's nothing better than like you know introducing someone to something you love and then they yeah. love it too. It's the best feeling. It's it's oh, so well, important. Actually, I think I showed family Civil War with the intention of hoping to talk to them about it afterwards, see what they think, and, you know, hopefully they would enjoy different aspects and stuff. Infinity War, I think there was a bit of that, but these days, as would be evident from seeing my videos, I actually like showing them Marvel movies because we do it while having alcohol <laughs> and we laugh at them. Potato! Like, it's, that's what I mean. Like, it, it's gotten to that point where, and, and it's like, how did that happen? It's like, they're really shit, and they're, they're very entertaining to laugh at. What, yeah. Listening to my sister and her husband reacting to Modoc was fucking hilarious. That was hilarious. Good call. Modoc! <laughs> He's a potato. It's the because <laughs> yeah, it's, you can either it brings you together, either shitting on it, but even even through that, um, she and he, both of them had like a moment of like having like a really really good point about like immersion and like consequences and and this um deaths, how significant death can be when you do it right. And like I'm I'm just like this is they're just watching a movie casually, having some drinks, but people get it. They're they're they, oh yeah they, they get it. I think it definitely came across as like people understand like. It's the little things, like make us care. It's um, it's God, really quite know. sad because, of course, when I say to them, if they're like, "Oh, what are you working on?" I, I name a thing, and they're like, "What is that?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know, the newest three hundred million dollar Marvel movie." And they're like, "I've never heard of it." And I'm like, <laughs> uh, "Yeah, well, <laughs> that's, that's that's where we're at right now." Yeah, uh, defend it. In fact, it's made quite clear that if a superhero ever did try to fundamentally transform the way the universe operates, they run the risk of turning into a supervillain themselves. Really bad example, uh, considering that we're told explicitly that the Darkhold is changing her personality. Yeah, obviously the there's, yeah, I'm a spooky evil bit. Obviously that's, that's wonky in universe, because of the motivations yeah. we have both before, after, and during all of this. It's really hard to nail down exactly what the Darkhold even does. But it's and weird that he chose that, considering how much he adheres to dialogue, which is what is explicitly said that the Dark Hold corrupts. Secondly, the whole change she's doing is because her ma magical made-up kids that don't actually exist were taken from her, and then she tried to steal someone else's from a different dimension. Why are we categorizing actions like that as creative changes to the status quo? What is wrong she's with you? Hot. Because she she's hot. hot. That's the end. That's the end. Listen, I'm not going to deny Wanda. that. Okay, it's Elizabeth Olsen. Like if Great. Wanda was a hag, like people would be right with us. <laughs> you would have never needed to make that video. <laughs> it's just the fact that, that would she's be so really funny. Hot. You get the AI <laughs> type into chat GPT or Sora, whatever the fuck is like. Do this movie, but make her ugly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we would have got the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I want to steal children. It's like, wow, she's a bad guy. I couldn't <laughs> see it before. Okay, Kamataj would have stopped her, but no, she's too hot, so they had to give her. <laughs> Too let her in. We can't let, yeah. we can't let those children have an ugly mother. She's too hot for the mirror dimension. Like she just broke her hotness, just broke the film. <laughs> broke the mirror. Oh shit. God, it's so weird for him to pick all of like the most heinous villains and be like, you know, thinking about it. Yeah, but at this point, it might be useful to define what the status quo means. Okay. Oh, In a sociological <laughs> sense, the status quo refers to the current social, political, and economic structures under which we all live. You mean the ever-changing, unrecognizable fucking status quo throughout the MCU? Mm-hmm.
That's... It also includes everybody being alive. Just throw that one in there. Everybody's yeah. alive. That's a part of the status quo, true. And and we also just mm -hmm. value not delving into other dimensions to kidnap children. That's another status quo yeah. element. <laughs> yeah. Generally not a thing. And not kidnapping favored. children in general Fucking is Wanda. Year. She well, had no plan if, for if what to do with the mother after. <laughs> If you do it enough, it becomes the status quo, so be the change you want to see in the world. Yeah. For most societies today, those structures include things like militarized nation-states, neoliberal yeah. governments... Uh, so neoliberalism! What? I mean... <laughs> what? Wow. I mean, I guess he's that's saying that's those things are the status quo. It's like, a lot of them kind of yeah, are. I mean, a lot of them aren't, I, but... I guess it's funny, the imagery, though. Neoliberalism, the Department of Damage Control. It's neoliberalism now to just, like, try and help people. <laughs> okay, fine. Sure. <laughs> fine. Are you gonna give, oh, give them credit for that? Like, yeah, those damn oh, liberals. Oh, yeah, if you yeah. want. They want to clean up messes. <laughs> Fucking libs with the... <laughs> like, why well, I didn't even know how to make fun of this. <laughs> like, like clean yeah, streets. I mean, I mean, damage control. <laughs> their functioning infrastructure. A, I mean, that's a government thing, right? Like, I mean, look at the eagle. That's it's what he's saying. Liberalism, he's saying it's a neoliberalism it government. That's what's that's what's the status quo. Is. How could you... How could you think you could just say this without explaining it? Like, <laughs> the, yeah, like Fucking I, libs helping people. I hate them. Ah, uh, worthless. Privatized industry. Oh no. And some version oh, yes. of that. Private oh. industry. Oh no, private industry. Oh. It's not the comrades industry. It's not our industry. <laughs> yeah, like, you gotta love how it's hell, sequestered man. as like, it's either private or not. There's not like interesting differences in the many versions of privatized industry. It's only just, well, it I is mean, or it the, isn't. The government organization had Tony Stark, who's like a private industry guy. What's so I mean, it's not. Crossover. That's the that's, these governments yeah, regularly the cooperate with private businesses yeah, for contracts exactly. and subsidies and things. Neoliberalism. Those fucking libs. Get they want to clean our goddamn streets. Don't let Get them out of here. Neoliberalism. But capitalism. Oh no, not capitalism. Anyway, oh, no. The, fact that the primary <laughs> responsibility of superheroes is to oh maintain gosh. the status quo. You hear that? Exists. Those superheroes gotta maintain capitalism. They gotta maintain capitalistic Listen. neoliberalism. <laughs> like, the military we lived, industrial uh, complex. Listen, if instead of a science fiction, this was like a, a fantasy genre and uh, communism and socialism were the, the typical structure of governments and whatever on Earth. The superheroes would still want to stop the Earth from being blowed up. What? It doesn't matter what, what? the economic That's crazy system is. Talk, rags. That's crazy talk, Rags. Crazy talk. We need a planet. Yeah, I just like that you defeat Sauron in Lord of the Rings, and then they're like, "So we're going to obliterate currency?" And Aragorn's like, "No." Um, <laughs> what, when Thor when Thor is trying to save uh, uh, Asgard, is he defending neoliberal capitalism yes. there as well? Yes. No, that's a is Asgard a neoliberal no, capitalist that... economy? I don't think so. Right, he is knew it he was going to get blown up Republic? in Ragnarok. <laughs> he knew that. That's because he was like, "I'm pro capitalism, so hopefully we can when we can organize Man events to blow up the Asgard." Realm, he was he was disrupting the status quo of the totalitarian dictatorship of Kang and replacing right. it with uh, whatever they decide. To yeah, turn and it Kang. Into. Even the writers don't know. Kang's the system had know currency in it. It was capitalistic elements happening in there. We saw the. But bar. it was a dictatorship, though. It oh. wasn't neoliberal. Maybe the bar was but it secret, was though, right? Creative. It was creative. You can't deny that. That's right. He had creative plans, like building a ship to leave. Ooh. <laughs> Very creative. Yeah. I want to build a ship to leave this video. <laughs> well, halfway I fly is. away. Wouldn't be considering the assumed Nebula ad will be like five minutes. Where uh, uh, please there. be a long Nebula Ooh. ad. Please. <laughs> I can't believe I can't believe this video has me praying for a long. Nebula <laughs> I pray for a Nebula ad. Yeah. Oh, I hope please. it's long. I hope it's tell, a nice. Tell me about how much you are helping play. me with the Nebula ad. What is the yeah. uh? What's the What's Save the politics nebula. of uh, of Xander? Is that a neoliberal capitalist economy that the Guardians were trying to uphold? Yes. What what was about what was planet. it about defending what was what was defending neoliberalism about Guardians too that they didn't want the countries and planets that may include neoliberal dude imagine you said the ego ego. <laughs> ego was a big communist like <laughs> oh yeah you just needed to have him wearing it with the with the hammer and sickle on his yeah. shirt yeah he had, he had <laughs> the Che like, Guevara oh, t-shirt on and this is this is some real crazy political commentary these Marvel films are mm -hmm. doing jeez.
true. much of a problem if the world, as it exists, were a wonderful paradise. It's really oh, good. But as we all know, <laughs> it very much isn't. Our world is rife with exploitation and depression. Yeah, but the world okay. in the MCU isn't our world. No, like I said, by the also, time you hit phase four and five, it's unrecognizable. It's crazy. The shit that's going on is just it it's is not us. The amount of technology and all of the enter like you've got aliens on Earth. You yeah. got aliens in the form of the aliens that have actually come to Asgard. And then of course all of the scrolls that got oh, invited man. by one guy that are all on Earth. All of the crazy Madness. technology. The fact that they even know that there's life out there in the universe, the connections to magical entities. Don't forget about well. Namor. Namor and all those guys down there. That's true. The yeah. underwater, yeah, you got like underwater people as well. They're God. gonna be mutants soon. The idea Jeez, of trying to like DC compare for a second, fuck. The idea of trying to do parallels between the world that we live in that has none of those things with the world of the MCU, it's just like what I, they're, they're never gonna be analogous. They can't be. They're just so different. Well, even talking about it as if they were analogous, if the MCU world was essentially ours, it's like I. I don't know, like, I don't look at the world and think that, oh, what a shitty fucking place that we shouldn't save. You know, like, that's that's bizarre <laughs> to me. I'm like, well, yeah, no, Rags, it's save it they, they in a way that... More proactive. Yeah, and save it in a way that matches his politics, the person who made this video. Pretty much. How yeah, does, yeah, how does, it. like, I don't know, how does Iron Man in, stop in the process of saving Ultron, police brutality? Say, like, you know what, I think that we should put more money into our healthcare. Like, <laughs> I, just, I don't know. Wait for, yeah, I got it. You gotta, you gotta be on TV saying you gotta do better, Senator. That's what'll nail it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, it's yeah weird that's that right. If you wanted to increase, uh, you know, if you wanted to make healthcare better on Earth, you would have to use the massive private industries of the spacefaring people to bring that technology here like from Guardians 3, in order to save it. So it's just a matter of moving the problem. Not to mention impending ecological collapse. Impending ecological collapse. In the form of Thanos. Tony Stark is investing in clean energy, man! He's this trying to make it work yeah. with more renewables. He yeah, yeah. hasn't watched the movies. Like it just. I and so was Ant Man. That's what, right. What's so weird so about, what are you even talking about? The, the like I said, that whole opening scene for Iron Man and Avengers. Just we've just not referenced it at all. A little bit remarkable, crazy, especially because yeah. it's referenced a couple of times. It's important throughout the movie. It's not just a throwaway. The arc reactor is emissionless energy. He's like, actually point like, now. It. Unfortunately. It's, it's, we don't have arc reactors here that are creating a mass <laughs> yeah, out of energy, so it's not super helpful in terms of creating any. That's, so, that's well, that's the, the thing. It their world is not ours, but they do make yeah. the difference. Mm -hmm. But but because right. our world still has these problems, it's Iron Man's fault. Yeah, because our world still has these problems, it's shit. We our, our world doesn't have the crazy technology that exists in the Marvel yeah, world, yeah, unfortunately. But, but what's so, Iron Man done for our world, Fringy? But that's the uh, thing. Well, it I does guess exist in their world, just, and they use it to help people. But it's not being yeah, recognized. I, 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 what, what do you think? The do you think that the film wants you to conclude more renewables or less renewables when it shows Tony Stark creating clean energy for his tower? Mm, what do you I think the know. film wants you to yet. come away We're with a conclusion well of that? Enough. Don't know. He Confusing. Needs, he needs the Iron Man harder next time. Yeah. He's punching too many people, Fring. He's not really doing anything to do with energy. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. All right, yeah. Change is now widespread, rapid, and intensifying that human... Our current reality is at least as scary as anything a supervillain could conjure up. No. Oh, fuck off. No. no not How even close. Our reality not even is close. as scary as a fuck giant off. purple man getting a bunch of rocks, clicking <laughs> his fingers, and deleting half Friggy. of life in the universe. Friggy, Friggy. please. That is Friggy. not... Friggy. That's not the scariest. Remember, we outclassed that that's several times. Times. An evil yeah. robot, an evil robot getting a big chunk of the land and then throwing it into Earth Not to even kill that. everything. No, what about no, all no, the Fringy. dimension shit? You know, like the oh, that's true. We got the multiverse incursions, now. The multiverse well, destroying everything. Yeah. yeah. To be West fair, too. to be fair, in the real world, we do have tornadoes sometimes. Yeah, but we've also got the multiverse. I swear, it's right there. You can poke it if you put your hand out there. You can feel it, kind of. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh ooh. Now, the MCU is, of course, six for a second. but it's also designed yeah. as a mirror so of the real world. Complete no, it with all Get it? Because they're in the mirror dimension. Yeah. It's wow. kind of meant to be a mirror for the real world in the well, sense that they're meant to be with me. Is a window. 
It was supposed to be. Well, Ten yeah, it's, it's meant to present you. The, the idea is that hopefully you can watch these films and if they're written well, take away lessons and morals and ideas yeah, okay, for, into your life. But in terms of creating like a real world parallel between the world of the MCU and our world, it gets more and more, more complicated when you start to divorce it so much from the real world and the, the real problems that we have to deal with. Because what does it mean for a problem that we have in the world to be addressed in a world that has all of this crazy technology and magic? Like where in Ant-Man they can have a line like, oh yeah, we're using, we're using our crazy shrink tech to build fucking houses. Well, cool, we don't live in a world where we can just use shrink tech to build mini houses and blow them up into big houses to yeah. solve yeah. housing problems. So not super useful in terms of helping us learn anything, but you know. Except with super beings and aliens and wizards all thrown in the mix. Androids, aliens, and wizards. That's not a thing. That, that's definitely a thing. No, it's not. Just imagine what these super beings could accomplish if they applied their immense power to creating a better universe. You mean like what we see in the films? Oh, you're... Like, yeah, you know, like, so what, the way, what is he doing right now? Well, he wants the way that he means. No, but this is, is a weapon, like... you Philistine. This is a weapon. <laughs> this doesn't count. Well, if, these, if they use these the weapons weapon. to force the political change that he approves of, then he'd approve of it. Well, I bet Iron Man should go to the White House and, like, and say, <laughs> if we don't become socialist, I'm going to shoot or I'm going to kidnap the president or something like that. It's so funny, yeah, because like this this whole thing just falls apart if you actually acknowledge all of the which he's avoided. I was expecting him maybe to reference more of them and be like, this doesn't count because this, or this is, I get this, but this is only one of several things that could have happened and didn't, but no, he's just kind of ignoring them. Give me examples. They could work to end the systems that cause exploited labor and- What do you mean? How do we- If you How, identify you capitalism mean? as an exploitative, like, you know, economic system, what does it look like for Iron Man to end it? <laughs> what does that mean? Works. What, happens, what happens if more than 50% of the populace of that country disagrees with him? Then Which well, they will. In every country, they will. Well, I guess he's wrong. Uh, they're wrong, sorry. He's gonna fuck them up. Yeah, just authoritarian. Yes, Looks like they're the yeah. super villains for you. <laughs> <That's laughs> <a bunch of, laughs> Tony Stark needs to build it his own like villain. media empire where he propagates his own like information that supports and bolsters his own worldview. He needs to create his own build Fox his own news. planet that orbits Earth, <laughs> and he's like, "Everyone, come join me on my planet where it's communist, not uh, capitalist. It's much better." And the like, Brown oh, Table always he... had. Brown Table always had takes like this, where it's just like so simplistic, like the like real a world. child. Well, he was reminded yeah, like of Karl Marx, there. to be fair. Oh, God, it was, he, it was him. That was the brown. That was him. Yeah. <laughs> or people forget Brownie. that. Brownie. <laughs> <laughs> they could devote well, their energy to stopping dog, pollutive industry or reverse uh, it. How? Sorry, how? That's what how? Tony how? Is how? Doing. How is he going to? Yeah, Tony but like is the, creating new energy. The implication oh, he's got was. here is, of course, that he's going to go ahead and fucking blow all these stations up or something. Well, yeah, because then, of course, you add on to that. What what happens when it ain't America? What if it's a country for which Tony is not a citizen? Yeah. Well, I mean, what if we're going to talk about global warming, you know, India and China. I mean, well, so, I don't okay. know if Tony's going to fly over there and what? Let's pretend for a second he was here and I said, what's he going to do, blow up? And he goes, no, you fucking idiot. He's going to make social change. He's going to affect this. And he's like, oh, you mean like if he was to, let's say, create a new energy source that could maybe compete with them to put them out of business? A new energy source, exactly. Yeah. Or, like, or, or oh. would it be so if, if Tony Stark just like ran for Congress or something, or like ran for the Senate? Probably so win. while <laughs> in the meanwhile, while he's being probably yeah. The thing is, he doesn't have the fucking time to be the president or be a senator. It's not, mm -hmm. like, the motherfucker is fighting wars while simultaneously trying to affect social yeah, change. That's what I mean. Like it's all thing. this is absurd. It's just ignoring yeah, all the events of the MCU, of which many of us have many criticisms of. And not elaborating on any actual changes. Like, tell, like, yeah. the most frustrating thing about this video is, like, what the fuck do you want? Like, tell me what you want. What's the fix here? Like, just give yeah, me some nothing from us. Don't Neo talk in these vague MCU directives. Yeah. This is vague, the video. Like, I just, I really, this is a bizarre one. Where... Then climate change. They could redistribute the wealth and resources. Redistribute oh, no. the wealth? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Iron Man should fly. use force is to it, take it, money away is from it Iron yes. Man's gonna fly into like Jeff Bezos' vault Fuck and just yeah, take his money little, and Jeff. then fly around over the cities throwing the money down. Here yeah, well go. if he was an actual hero that's what he'd do, so fuck you. Tony Stark upon realizing Robin. he is rich. 
Don't don't think about that. Hood style. But our heroes. Wait, what did he just say? Robin Hood style. Oh, so he. Oh, so it actually, was the thing we were talking about. Like yes, yes, money. yes. To use violence and subversion <laughs> to take the money from wealthy wow. people. Yeah, it'll it'll make the world <laughs> a better place wow, if he was man. to go into Jeff Bezos' house and break apart all of his big secure walls and find any deposits of money and then provide that to the lower ends of society monetarily. It would make the world a better place to do that. They could redistribute the wealth and resources of billionaires Robin Hood style. But our heroes don't do yeah. any of that. But our heroes simply instead try to heroes. defeat aliens trying to kill well, innocent yes. people. Because because here's the thing, Macintosh, they're heroes. Yeah. Fucking slackers. <laughs> they're not gonna break Why into aren't my Jeff heroes Bezos fighting for in socialism at the you know at the at gunpoint? Why aren't it's my so heroes funny doing this? How delusional he is that he's sitting in his room just thinking like, yeah, Cap just breaking into rich people's houses, stealing their shit and passing it to poor people. That'll fix the world. Like, what is yeah, wrong with you? Violence is necessary if they oppose him. Like that's like, not gonna have any ramifications. They just don't see the bigger picture. They think just do this and you'll fix everything. There's nothing else will happen. It will just be living in your It's fuck. It's hell. so funny because you'd be like, well, first pragmatic issue, he's gonna get the police after him. It's like you mean fascists? You're like, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't, like, we, we're on two different wavelengths. I don't know what's doing. You go from trying to talk about logic and go through the script, and then they just say <laughs> one sentence like, oh, okay, <laughs> this, is, like, this is pointless though. And if fifty-one percent of the people right? don't agree. And it's super villainy of the majority. Uh, oh, well, man. we can just convince them otherwise, Rags, by stealing from them. Instead, the superheroes engage in oh, random look. acts of benevolence. Random Are acts. Random acts. Random acts. Yes. What does it mean to have a random act if it's to build an infrastructure related to clean energy sources? That's random? Yeah, yeah it doesn't seem random. People. It seems like a big deal. One might That's argue a it's uh, quite considered. One might. You know, they'd be wrong, though, obviously. Mm -hmm. A billionaire gifts the world with some fancy new proprietary technology. That's how he's... Is, is that the addressing of the clean energy? Stark Tower is about to become a beacon of self-sustaining... Wow. 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 Okay, I don't know how to, so else to explain it. this to him. It's like he's a baby. It'd be like, so he's just cracked it. He's making it so that this is his first project, Stark Tower. Can we run that on its own? This is the beginning this is not him establishing a there? fucking trophy for himself to be like, look how amazing I am. He's testing the technology. Baby steps. And also, the way that he says, like, the benevolent billionaire gifts it, would you prefer it if he sold it? <laughs> would you I don't prefer it if he charged it? Does he not think that, you know, Never billionaires happy. can be nice. Nothing he can fucking do <laughs> properly. He's he's created clean energy. <laughs> Does he just like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, but he's rich. So like he's unforgiven. Billionaire. It's unforgivable. Just easy, man. Energy. And he managed to do this problem without using violence. While reacting to villains. <laughs> mm hmm A soldier asks... Don't. 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 Lol. <laughs> Don't. Falcon. <laughs> Don't. Falcon. <laughs> Don't. Falcon. 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 Fucking hell. You gotta Falcon fight against the status quo, Senator. I don't know Falcon how, but you gotta do it. it. <laughs> it's, I don't know how. I, I don't get any answers. Do it. People are walking disgrace, though. Oh, this guy is just a walking meme now. He's like he's so done. I kind of liked Falcon as a side. I like Falcon a lot. Yeah, he was, was cool he, in he Civil just War. Did his job. I, I honestly think one of the best jokes in the whole MCU in terms of delivery was just a simple like, "Can you move up your seat?" No. Just yeah. Like, no. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it was it's, really it's so perfect. Like the face and the fact that right after they both gave him the nod when he got the kiss from the girl. Finally, it's like that's what your boys would be doing in the car. It's like his. Their most. I feel like those two scenes got them their show together. Like just that well, not to mention um. Spider-Man, uh, you know, webs all up. Then he just goes, "Is this stuff coming out of you?" <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. Yeah, all of his, yeah, all of, all of his reactions were on point, man. And they turned him into like a meme now. We're like, why can't just let him be Loki and Falcon? They were both perfectly fine, and they tried to make them into be like hero man. And it's well, just arguably. Like, the most serious thing they did with Falcon was one of the most embarrassing things they've done with anybody ever. The big speech and what have you got to say? They wrote it and what he had to say was, I don't know, do better. 
I don't like things the way they are. <laughs> you, 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 better, uh, it. you do it. I've only got I, the maybe superpower. It, I, I, I presume he's about to criticize this as like being. I fucking hope so. I don't even know. That's no, the joy no, of the video. No. I have no fucking hey. clue. Yeah, no, we're in a bit I of an adventure here. Kind of he's he's up, I have no faith no, in him. No, I think he. No, no, actually, no. Now I'm confident it is just going to be. A soldier be, asks like, nicely that corrupt bureaucrats yeah, just do better. You yep, got to do better, yeah. Senator. Thank fucking goodness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did it. This isn't far uh, enough. This isn't good enough. Well, but I mean, it, it, it is kind of like a. It, it, like it, it would have been difficult to contextualize this as a positive. People have tried. Um, and fail. Yes. Uh, well, times. and I think a lot of people have come to realize, like, okay, yeah, this was shit. It's like, yes, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sucks. In the best case scenario, a wealthy monarch Rest builds an international network of community centers. That's better than the clean, renewable, free energy for the planet? Oh, we oh, got, is why it? does he keep cutting context? This is also his first step into reaching out to the whole yeah, world. Yeah, this is the beginning. Oh, this is the beginning of Wakanda getting involved in World of... I thought he was going to point to this as being, like, not just the best of bad scenarios, but an actual instance of them trying to address uh, what he wants. But I guess even this isn't good enough. For me, though, like the way that he just removes all of the context from stuff that I don't even think Black Panther is a good movie, and I don't like Wakanda. I don't like its history. I actually kind of hate the way that they treated the world. They abandoned it while judging it for being, you know, mm -hmm. like Not like in in turmoil. In it's ways. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. But like you know, the point he's hitting them for isn't valid. This would be the first Wakanda International Outreach Center. These band-aid approaches may help a few disenfranchised individuals here and there, but they're also designed to Jesus keep the current Christ. economic and political structures firmly in place. Yeah, I don't I, see I how building that was community point. centers is designed Ungrateful to keep bitch. the blah 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 in place. Well, just like what, like, I, like groups, nations, and cities and towns are made up of individuals. You have to take care of individuals. Just because you can't get every single one, that doesn't mean you're not gonna create good change by helping people you can. Yeah, of course, if you talk you about the idea answer? of stories giving you as a you know regular person ideas on how to navigate through life, if, if the films were all successful in convincing everybody in the world to do a nice thing for someone every now and then, then I mean, it all adds up, you know? Like, as individuals as... only really have the capacity to do small individualistic good deeds. I don't know what this argument is called when you highlight what it's doing, but you highlight what it doesn't do, in this case being it doesn't change the status quo. I don't know what the argument's called because the the air of it is that it's a counter to the notion of doing the action in the first place, but it's not. You just have to flip it back it's again. Not. In response, I would say, like, so the status quo doesn't change, yes, but these we're helping people with social programs as heroes. That's what they're doing. Like you 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 yep. haven't countered that. You've simply said well, the thing, the the status quo, the assumed status quo that causes a lot of these problems, or at least doesn't deal with them properly, is still there. And it's like, uh, well, sure, but like nothing changes overnight, like of this degree. So surely what they've done is good. Can you concede that? Mm -hmm. And that's what I'd want if he was in the call right now. I'd be like, concede that it's a good thing. So it sounds like you're saying it is, but that it doesn't do a thing you want it to do. But, the, but you're saying it in ways that kind of downplay it. You're like, yeah, well, you're, you're trying to cancel it out. You know, donates the money. But because at the end of the day, what's happened is a person has created clean energy, and you, and you're trying to present it as being less than that in it's, this world. It's one of the end games for the civilization is to cr create extremely strong and powerful, essentially limitless or limitless. Well, I mean, we basically get to a uh, yeah. uh, type one civilization once we hit that point, and that's like type well, and one. What's gross about this to me is that all of these examples of people trying, and he's like, "Yeah, fuck you, not good enough." Yeah, not good enough. Yes, I mean, yeah, okay, ungrateful. guy making YouTube videos. <laughs> you, you can't be this what ungrateful I mean? while not also specifying what you want and uh, uh, providing, you know, reasonable Well, ideas. we saw what but he wants. He wants Tony know? Stark to bust into Jeff Bezos' vault and take the credit. Yeah. To not only want, take from the rich and provide to, to the poor, the but problems. to obliterate capitalism. He wants to, Tony to destroy yeah. it, which is so funny because it's just like, we just assume Tony oh. would agree with him as opposed to Tony Stark being like, are you okay? Like, are you... You sound oh, he like, said, uh, you see, that's the hidden politics of the writers, that they would write Tony to where he disagrees with me. The bastards. I just want to see mm -hmm. the right-wing version of this video, because you, you could easily make it. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> It'd also be pretty Tony funny. St Tony Stark destroys Wakanda before it can do any more evil. <laughs> <laughs> it's destroying the whole world, damn it. Wipe him off the place of the earth. He's gonna build hotels on the moon! <laughs> 
hypercapitalism. Destroy capitalism, institute hypercapitalism. The uncomfortable truth is, charitable or philanthropic endeavors rarely, if ever, threaten the entrenched positions of the rich and powerful in any- I don't care. I um, just, like, I don't know, like, a society's gonna have rich and powerful people, I don't necessarily care if we- It's just so we weird, either. because, could he at least show some evil, super powerful people? Instead is of Tony it, Stark? You're just saying- Yeah, he's just saying they're rich and powerful, therefore they are evil. Yeah. Like, it's they're so intrinsically linked. As if virtue lame... is relative to your bank account, and it's a simple. Like what design. number? What's the number where you just officially become this fucking? Well, I heard it was terror. billions, but then it went oh, down yeah. to millions. Oh. Yeah, well, it's no, but it, so it's lame. a it's a moving line, right? Because it's got to be one that doesn't allow Hassan to fit into the mix. Exactly, they pick and choose. They whatever number. Out. Whatever the number is, it's probably above whatever Macintosh is going to make a realistic. Remember, good old mm. top one percent of income in uh, the United States is not as high as you might think it is. It's like two hundred fifty thousand well, like dollars. Your top one percent in America. There are, I think, there are countless people who, if if a Tony Stark existed in real life, I'm not going to go with like an Elon Musk or anything. More like has he is in the MCU. Oh, that would be Especially someone who is actively, in a way that we know putting his life on the line to save us from crazy monsters or normal people gone nuts. I just don't think many people would take issue with him being rich. It'd be like, I don't know, no, man. Well, it, it, people would feel the way about Tony Stark that they do in the MCU, which is, yeah. look at that cool guy. Well, look yeah, he would have adoring fans, and that. then you would have people like in Civil War who were like, yeah, nobody thinks about the people who don't make it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's I humans. think everything you just said is part of the reason why people love Tony Stark's character, because we can all see this happening. Like this, just the it's. It could, yeah. Well, it's it's Batman as well, because Batman again is the billionaire who goes out at night, mm -hmm. you know, puts his life on the line to defend this city. But I it, think but a lot of these stem from you know, that he is not good enough, that he doesn't do enough. There is it's, plenty of that what, stuff as well. It's just endearing. What what do you do with your money? Like it's just a concept that is really proven from these two characters and probably others. I'm not even mentioning right now. I mean, but it's like, a super um, complex topic. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have a lot of money, what are you mm -hmm. going to do to create the most good? He's like, well, I mean, it's <laughs> really complex. If you, you don't want to make people dependent on your money, ideally, but you want to use your money to make things better. So how do you actually do that? You know, it's, and also, do you, how much of an obligation do you actually have? Do you have an obligation to just spend all of your money on making the world a better place if you've earned this vast fortune? It's like, well, exactly. not necessarily. And Maybe do you, you believe that you have better ideas than your local government, you know, for instance. Hmm. Does yeah, Bruce and do we want to spend his money better than Gotham could spend his money? Yeah, yeah. do we want to set the precedent that we should say that all of the super rich and super powerful need to be mega politically active in these ways? I thought that was the problem that a lot of people complain well, about. And, you know, it gets real bad oh, then when right. you're like, I'll do it, and he's like, yay, and then you go, right, here's my policy. You're like, no, 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 those no, are no, the wrong no, ones. No, 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 <laughs> you, no, it's Run! like the Iron Man I want. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay, I see. I, I got to do what you want specifically, and that's what the video that boils down to is like. I wish all of the rich and powerful people did exactly what I wanted. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, exactly. bud. It's just so simplistic. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, what, was he like a big fan of like Michael Bloomberg's campaign running for president <laughs> in 2020? <laughs> well, yeah, imagine oh, Trump was geez. like a, a superhero with his little Trump suit a doing Trump Trump, Trump, Trump blazers and stuff, and then suit. it's like, oh, if only God. Trump made social change and he runs for president. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Stark, Tony Stark's a loser. You gotta have, you loser. Gotta have Iron a Man, of Iron is weak. I'm Donald Trump. I'm money suit man. Of gotta, and it needs to have whenever it's it, like the flashing, you know, for whatever he's talking, kind of like you know how Bender. And he's got, and yeah, he's got like yeah. uh, his Iron Man suit needs to have a suit portion for his uh his hair, you know. <laughs> and Gold Man. <laughs> I defeated Ultron. He was a very nasty robot. Very nasty. Very, very, very nasty. nasty. The good people of Sokovia. The <laughs> very good people. The fine people. The good people. To, it's Steve Rogers. He's a good friend of mine. Good, good friend of mine. <laughs> I saw City in the Air and I knew Excellent that's not man. Honorable. Courageous. <laughs> Tremendous. Ultron Anyways. and the Democrats tried to lift us into the Thanos, air. Thanos is a very nasty, a nasty purple guy. Yeah. You know what? I told them. I told them before I that Thanos well, yeah. was going to be trouble. I told them when I came in here. I told them that he was a nasty. <laughs> Thanos and Nancy Stain, Pelosi made some very bad deals. Half the I never the trusted universe. him. You know, I never, I never <laughs> trusted him. <laughs> I didn't. And I uh, didn't. <laughs> if only. Oh, Trumpy. Way. <laughs> Seen in that light, the fact that our superheroes could use their incredible powers
to change the world for the better, like they do, but choose not to, but they do, starts to oh, feel geez. downright dystopian. The really bad what? example, considering you, Cap oh. makes the fucking executive decision <laughs> in Winter Soldier that required a lot there. of input from many people, and he didn't care. He made it himself. Mm -hmm. That's I right. just th there's no principle here. It's just well, as long as they're doing the change I want yeah. there to be. Let's become well, very yeah, why fucking evident. It it's 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 what if what if you agree with their politics? Then it's not dystopian. Then it's just like oh, it's okay, not even well, maintaining the status quo be. because well, things yeah, keep changing. Just... <laughs> You would need exactly. to have a system. I, like, it, it's wild. These people are, uh, I mean, a lot of their positions will probably be, we don't want to get too involved in deciding the fate of humanity because I don't know if it's such a small, elite, well, superhuman, it's what Civil War is about. group of people should yeah, do that's it. that's what the whole film is about. And then, of course, the I fact like that the, the, the two movies. leads of Civil War, they disagree with what should be the status quo. That's right. Mm -hmm. How could you make then this video? No the violence! The Uh, Come on. Oh my so it's goodness. curious that the only characters man. who voice any kind of systemic critique are the bad guys. He's not Dude, this, No, Vulture is not wait, voicing wait, systemic wait, 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 wait. critique. Wait, yeah, Vulture no, is Kang, upset at one Kang little is in charge of the universe! Kang, Kang can make anything happen. Kang is will on the universe! He controls all of time! He is the authoritative figure who has taken over the world! He's the, yeah, he's he has, the vulture. He is the status quo. He created the status quo. What That's find, a terrible example. What I find fascinating about Vulture, especially in this scene, is that the point I think Homecoming makes is that the effect heroes like the Avengers have on the world can create someone like a Spider-Man, but they can also create a Vulture. Exactly. And Remember, good thing Spider-Man wins, because yeah. Spider-Man isn't the one who's selling crazy, dangerous alien weapons for the benefit just to of advance money. his own interests. Yeah. Yeah, just for money. I remember, Obviously, Vulture's issue was with a specific department doing a specific thing. Yeah, he yeah, blames Iron like the Man and the Avengers and heroes for all yeah. of it when it's a fucking annoying governmental interference. Yeah, Vulture's not trying to be like, yeah, we need to dismantle the system, man. Yeah, it, uh, he doesn't want to change the world. He has bullshit. no interest in changing the world. Yeah, he's got a family and a nice house and everything. He just wants he to make things some money. To kind of the same. Well, this scene he's, he's highlighting, like, you know, money. guys so like us. Right? <laughs> like, we're, we're having the trouble thanks to. Fucking Tony, thanks to the events. Like, we, we need to look out for each other. We need to look out for ourselves. Like, the idea that he's make, making some grand societal critique is so bullshit. Mm. He's out for himself, and by extension, his family. Yep. Which is fine. Kind of it's a really fucking up. solid villain motivation. Yeah. He's a simple villain. That's part of the reason he's one of the best. Like, they no, actually, he was a, expressing a dissertation upon this, the ills of society. <laughs> guys, <laughs> those people beat those people up shit. there, the rich and the powerful. They do whatever they want, guys like us. This was bullshit. He's, he's bullshitting Peter. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's taking care of himself and his he family at the risk of literally crazy. hurting anyone and everyone. He does not give a fuck. And, he kills someone, he doesn't care. He was, the, the only reason he was saying this was so that he could kill Peter. Yeah, like, he was trying he to delay him, him anyway. Him. Did he say he was trying to get exactly. his wingsuit up or whatever? Power it up? Yeah, he was just waiting for that. it to get ready to go. God, That's man. Right. Like, this you have to ignore so audience, much though. to make your point about this. It's so unfair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you don't really have to. It's just he's trusting in people to not remember. Just throw in the line yeah. and just And of course, he is title. incorrect. Tony, because he's talking about Tony. Tony does care about, like, individuals on the ground level. Yep. That's why he's a hero. That's why a Civil War fucking happens is it it's, knocks him into gear. The story about that specific guy. He was like, all right, enough is enough. And it's all I why Vulture's the villain. He's wrong. Is this like just like like lens poisoning or is, or is he like fucking do you think he's a liar at this point? Like I'm not sure. No, I, I think I think it's I think it's a matter of that um that there's like a, a worldview that's informed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Media. Lens lens poison. Well people he's call it brain rock. Like, right? Yeah, but, uh, I, like, it might it might well be that he knows that there are references that are not good for his argument, so he needs to get by them as quickly as possible, as we've seen here, or ignore them. But I imagine that he does have the view that Marvel movies are ultimately part of defending the status mm. quo of the world. Yeah, that that is like his earnest view. That's what I'm getting. The vibe I'm getting is like he's just he's using this as a vehicle to get his stupid politics across, but he's just manipulating all the scenes and it's hoping Mac that people. Yeah, don't that's, that's how it comes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was gonna say he's all. This is the mind behind feminist frequency. Yes, to, to make sure everyone understands that. <laughs> 
was he in your TFA video in terms of like he was like misinterpreting like uh, this was asking at the beginning if he was the one who was trying to say Finn was like a coward or this 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 and that just to like make it all about like uh, the problem is this is so many years ago that he might very well be but there's so many people we've mm -hmm. covered who've had yeah, wacky opinions on everything. I mean, it, am I am I incorrect in saying that a Jonathan yes. McIntosh take being so uh, overtly political when it doesn't need to be is like there's a meme for it. It's called going full McIntosh. Yes, you never go full McIntosh. That is an oh, old yeah. internet meme that. It's an old meme, yeah. To be honest, we're the only ones keeping it alive, probably <laughs> by covering his videos. Art, the art analysis part of the TFA part one. He was referenced. Now I remember mm. now. Jonathan McIntosh. There we go. He was the dude. He is very wacky. As you've seen illustrated very well in yeah. this. Fucking weirdo. We man. build their roads and we fight all their wars and everything. They don't care about us. Pretty do you do you think that this is a very honest view considering the the primary person he takes issue with is Tony Stark, someone who is actively doing social programs to help the world and nearly died saving the world? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it doesn't care about us, specifically is mentoring Peter. Well, yeah, Don't yeah, you think that's supposed either... to act as the villain is incorrect in this film? Yeah, he's he has and, and his of course, view of these people that isn't necessarily. Vulture certainly doesn't view. give a fuck about you know us is what he's referring to. He don't care about Peter, no, or any of the people that he needs to hurt in order to do what he's doing. He's happy for Peter to be he's dead the after this scene. He's happy to yeah, leave him die. He's a bad guy, bad guy, great villain, bad guy. Yes, we have to pick up after him. We have to eat their table scraps. When we take a look through yeah, the pantheon of Marvel supervillains and evil masterminds, we immediately notice oh, that nearly God. all of that? them strive to disrupt or destroy the status quo in some way. Why is that a revelation to you? Yeah, generally the villain is going to be, the villain creates the conflict, typically, yes. They want that something is that is not something they typically have access to that's grand and doesn't belong to them. Or the hero creates the conflict every day by not starting the revolution against the capitalist. Ah, that's right. So really, that's a good point. The villain. In short, they seek structural change. You can't. I hate this. Now, <laughs> he has. He, he must acknowledge what things they're seeking. He has to. Like Caecilius is one of the worst villains in all the MCU. He's a fucking yeah. nutcase. Like, come is he about on. to acknowledge that all of their ideas entail much death and suffering? Now, granted, it's mostly bad authoritarian change. Oh, it's not yeah, about yeah. that. It's not even about that. Deal. It's not about the authoritarian aspect. It's the, the the things they want are so fucking nuts that they don't even understand that are going to cause everyone to yeah. die. Like it, and also, you're technically not, correct. It's not the authoritarian angle because he just wants no. the heroes to be authoritarians of a certain kind. Like, oh, letting Dormammu eat all of our universe. Well, then he'll be that's pretty authoritarian. It's like. <laughs> like authoritarian. You well, just yeah, want the heroes to be authoritarians in your favor. He just needs to use his stupid words, his political fucking phrases. Like, it, it, it doesn't apply to these movies. We're talking about fucking, like, interdimensional creatures here. I, I, I just don't understand. Like a dragon that eats souls. It's like, that's pretty authoritarian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, and, and, like yeah, hot, deep, hot Deep, for example. The, the dragons are part of the, you know, the politics of the world building. But they are just fucking, like, you know, neutral creatures. They don't give a fuck. They're just, it's like... It, they are chaotic no. neutral, that's true. Yeah, that's the phrase I'm looking for, yeah. And it's very fun to explore. Um, I like them I looked at as medieval nukes. Like the... Yeah, they're the nukes of their day. Like, that's the, that's, the, that's the way of looking at it, but that's why, that's why it works, keeping it that way. But they are the only ones who seem to show any interest in fundamentally transforming the way the world works. Not true. Or evil! I mean, Not this true. is, yeah, like... It's just, but putting him, Red Skull, as your image here, dude. Come on. Like, he was, he well, great. like, what are you doing? can you can you even Why make the meme watch? anymore? Like, you'd be like, yeah, Hitler wanted change too. It's like, well, this character practically is Hitler. Like, why are he's we even Hitler worse? I, yeah, I don't even like. What are we supposed well, to do with this? Change. Like, he wants change. Like, wants yeah, he does. Want the whole world. Yeah. Maybe... yeah. What kind of change? <laughs> the kind of change that's really, 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 really bad. Feels Same. like it's worth pointing out it's part of your analysis about the defending of the status quo against villainy. Yes, they do defend the status quo against worse alternatives. Mm hmm Like Hydra. The world. My technology could change the world. 
We wanted to change the world. Why are you even... Okay, do, it's so funny to play these... It's like tricking people. The villain, the evil when, villains yeah. talking about changing So when the, the world, Nazi or... crazy Hitler man wants to do it, he wants to kill everybody, right? So we can fucking ignore that. Wanda, like this example here, I can't even remember the context for this exactly, She's but... Talking about Petro, here in Petro, why she joined up with all the... I would argue the more interesting change the world with Mysterio is that all of that is for himself. It's just ego. He's only yeah. interested in making it's himself more powerful, more loved, more adored. Exactly. Not for any, like, again, it's, it's, yeah, it's totally cynical. Three completely different contexts, but he'll just throw it in real quick and, like, nobody, it's, it's so manipulative. Right? They want to change the world. They want to change the status quo, man. They want to get rid of capitalism. The villain's motivations can range from personal wow, revenge three examples. to cool. writing social wrongs. Writing social <laughs> wrongs. Oh, can you show gore? Oh, he wants to kill all the good Asgardian gods. Come on, wow. dude. What he wants to indiscriminately erase he gods is, as a concept. Man. How is that social He's, good social change? Like what the fuck? It just it I'm seems just to be most hardline uh, atheist, man. You're just lying to us, man. You're, you're a crazy person. He wants to make atheism man. the correct position, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not even there will be no gods to believe in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to believe in gods to have them slaughtered. Yeah. My God, yeah, it's, 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 Otherwise, oh, you don't have to do anything. Crap. What an ins like, this really does allow people not having seen the movie, which, to be fair, Thor, Love and Thunder, how many people have even seen it? Change from personal revenge to righting social wrongs writing them. to Jesus. good old-fashioned greed. But for our purposes here, we're more concerned with their nefarious oh, plans and oh, schemes. Hating women. Which vary in scope and scale depending on the power level of the villain. Yeah, you should hate Yellow Jack. The lower he's a, tier. He's a, yeah. This guy, I like this guy. Pretty businessman. Sam and Rockwell. How can you not like? You, him? you like Sam Rockwell? You like him? He's the best Revolutionize <laughs> one institution, like the military-industrial complex. A lot more going on than just that, my good man. But all right. Mm. Others may want to take oh, down the biggest corporation oh. on the planet. And it's billionaire CEO. No, he wants to take down the man that he believes he just, stole his dad's ideas. Yeah, he wants to kill Tony Stark specifically. He's not trying to take down the greedy capitalist stock no, that's industries. Not what he's he just wants to kill Tony Stark. Stop that's it. fucking changing all of the stories to match your own narrative. It's stupid. Still doing this, like the more visionary villains, meanwhile might aim to remake a whole well, oh, city. Oh, yes, Kingpin who subverted the entire what? institutions of all of New York. That's what he wants the heroes powerful. to do. He wants yeah, them to change the world. He had, all of this, he, he had the politicians and the cops and everything, and it's like, oh, well, yeah, that's pretty ambitious of Kingpin, ain't it? Yeah, it's creative. You have to admit. Also, this is not... Wait, what's the date? No, that's accurate. Okay, fine. I wanted to make this city something better than it is. Or the whole world. Or the entire universe. I was about I, I, to say, who the fuck is that? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah that's right, that movie. Yeah, okay. It's so funny <laughs> because yeah. he's, he's saying all of this makeup. like it's useful information. At this point, he's gotten so broad, it's the villains want to change stuff. All right, man. Yeah, yeah I like got how it. Iron Man wanted to change stuff by creating an Iron Man suit. That's well, changing I mean, stuff. Someone wants to change stuff when they're hungry and they make a cereal. Captain America wants to change the fact that the world is currently uh, at war with itself, and he wants to make it so that there's no war anymore, and less death. He wants to change the world from being in a state of war to no war. What are you Yeah, he wants the status quo. Where you're right, no, this video is correct. In general, the bigger the villain, the bigger the transformational change they're seeking to implement. The expansion. What? You mean turning the entire universe into himself? Yes. Oh. I guess what's kind of funny about that is the arguably the bigger changes like destroying the multiverse were from characters that were actually smaller in size than Ego, but whatever. I don't, I'm not going to get that pedantic. Sure, yeah. It is my purpose. The drive to rebel against or tear down the current world order is one of the reasons why audiences find supervillains so compelling. Compelling. Um, like, as a no, it's, it's usually element. always their motive. It's ne never quite the actual idea. Like being like, I want to make the world a better place, and they're a villain. I'm like, well, okay, so what's what's the mechanics of it then? Before, like, I'm not really interested. With, if they said I want to kill everyone, that's not even interesting or bad or good or whatever until I know what what's behind it. The idea that it's like they want to change the world—that's what makes them interesting. It's like no, it's usually the why and how. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Because let's be honest, you as he's been broadifying all of the fucking villains, we could just do that. And it's like, well, what's well, the difference between a, um, a vulture and like an Obadiah stain? You're like, well, shit tons, actually. But maybe you could broaden them both out to benefiting themselves, you know? I find this interesting when you think about something like Star Wars, the good guys are the ones who are trying to change the status quo and the bad guys are the defenders of the status quo. So how would he apply this to like, what? People, you know, one of the reasons why people find Darth Vader so interesting is that he wants to change the world. No, he doesn't. He already got what he wants, you yeah. know? He wants to preserve He's the status quo. trying to maintain quo. the current world order. Exactly. Well, yeah, and, and then B Baked in, he needs to address why we find the heroes so interesting if they're only defending the status quo. Well, well, that, that exactly. Why do people like Iron Man or Spider-Man or Captain America? Why do they like these heroes? Why do they like these heroes considerably more than all, most of these villains that you're pointing out? Well, and why do people who, oh, tend they're, to... They're trying to change the status quo, but nobody really likes or remembers a lot of them. And why do people... It's funny, he's got fucking Aldrich Killian on screen for representative of why people like the villains of the MCU. He's one of the most, yeah, like, like lame on. villains in the MCU that no one likes. It's one of the biggest yeah, complaints he's... about the MCU is that they don't have good villains for the most part. They're, yeah, they're, they're so right. notable when they're good. Like, we haven't highlighted yet, but this, this video's been not. pretty fantastic at having visuals that directly contradict in the most effective way the point Absolutely. he's making. Yeah, it's yeah. almost yeah. impressive. At least initially. To build a really better world sometimes means having to tear the old one down. Graeber cites Russian anarchist Mikhail Bakunin, who- There we go, By Mikhail the way, I just no. want to make sure we all understand guy. that uh, Robert Redford's character was fucking nuts. Yes, he was. His plan was crazy. He was, was like crazy. the crazy yeah. Hydra leader man guy. He was gonna, yeah, he was gonna kill- Yeah, pretty much. plan was to destroy the American Northeast, basically. Yeah, kill Project Insight there. was absolutely insane. You gotta shoot crazy. guns over the curvature of the Earth to hit people on the other side of the planet because they were too not what he wanted. Yes, they didn't, they didn't pass the algorithm test. 1942 mm. wrote that the passion for destruction is a creative passion too. Okay. By which he meant that the urge to destroy an unjust order necessarily involves a process of trying Carly to imagine Morgan alternatives. Found, Do you remember when he said earlier in the video that when heroes do, like react to a bad guy and destroy them, that that's not the same as building something? And now mm -hmm. he's saying that when the villains want to destroy the old world, you shouldn't see that as not them trying to create a new world that's better. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Seems like someone's got a bias. How do you do that? Yeah, well, How that's do I mean, manage to that's do just, that? That's just know? some tricksy shit right there. I mean, it's been yeah. 12 minutes between those two points, but <laughs> I haven't forgotten. To the status quo. Viewers are especially drawn and, to and, what and I call- And Thanos has no, no plan for rebuilding. He just wants to get rid of half of He's people. gonna go live on his fucking That's farm. It. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the, the idea that a lot of these villains actually have a plan for the new world that they would want. Like, in a lot of these cases, it's not really the case. Like, with with Kaecilius, it's just, whoa, you, you just get the dark dimension and then that's it. GG. Mm -hmm. Like, he hasn't built anything. Thanos just wants to get rid of half of people. He's not building anything. And then, of course, you know, a lot of the time it's like, we're built off of things that other people have created, like Loki taking over Earth. It's like, well, what is that other than basically stealing something that other people had created rather than actually building something well, totally Well, hopefully Loki will de redistribute the wealth once he's gotten it and, you know. And I mean, you know, good old Obadiah Stain wasn't planning on, he just wanted to take Stark uh, Industries. He didn't want to build or really destroy anything. He just wanted to kill Tony Stark and then build his own Iron Man shit call pseudo social but justice unfortunately villains. tony stark built it in a cave with a box of scraps so he just call, do that himself you just call thanos a pseudo social justice warrior wait viewers are especially no. drawn to what i call pseudo social justice villains oh god titans oh like god. most planets too many mounds how is it social that? justice when you're trying to make sure everyone doesn't die well, well, that's justice for a society broadly uh, <laughs> yeah, <I guess> so. <laughs> But, uh, if your plan is to kill uh, half of them, then... Not very just to see for them, yeah, but uh... alright. Not enough to go around. These are antagonists whose stated goals revolve around trying to end some kind of social problem. I can't even remember what the fuck uh, Ethan Hawke's motivation was. What movie Moon is Knight. that from? Moon Knight. That's Moon Knight. Oh, what the God, fuck? Uh, anybody? Do you remember what his thing was? No, I don't. I, I, I watched the first three episodes and then I was like, I, I can't. I think the only person that might would be Fringy and he's muted, so. 
We're doomed. I'm sorry, I don't remember what the fuck he was doing in that. I just remember he gets possessed at the end. I don't even know he's in it. Let me see. He becomes... Oh. Fringy, what was yeah, Ethan yeah, Hawke's motivation in Moon Knight? Oh, shit. He um... wanted to bring back the <laughs> goddess, right? Yeah, but why? Uh, yes, but I can't remember why, because he really liked her. Because he really liked Oh, because her. it was all about how everyone needs to be judged? To make the yeah, something like that. Sounds like Everyone needs shit. to be judged. And Isn't it? Yeah, it wasn't a thing. Fail or whatever. She like judged everybody bad, and he was like, "Yeah, but we all need to be judged anyway," or something. Mm. She was like a bitch. Well, isn't the that crocodile kind of the lady. Of, isn't that the opposite of Gore's plan? Oh, whatever. <laughs> I can't keep track of all this. Are you kidding me? But apparently, he has. I'm sure the Ethan Hawke was gutting to destroy capitalism. I'm trying to end some kind of social problem, injustice, or illegitimate form of power. In the MCU, gods walk among us, literally, and they wield tremendous That's amounts of- That's what walking of... among us means. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the figuratively yeah, walking walk among us. Among... It's like... Yeah, if you say that yeah. gods walk among us, like, yeah, you it's do mean literally. Sort of that it's yeah. literal. They're yes. in cars. They don't figuratively <laughs> walk among us. Fucking weird. <laughs> ...of unchecked power. So <laughs> <laughs> Throw a banana at him. <laughs> for your gods Fuck is you. your only purpose. But they are also cruel, or at best indifferent, to the- Uh, no, oh, some of them are that sometimes that. cruel, some is what you mean. Some of them are, and then Gore decided that it would be better to indiscriminately kill all of them. Instead of just the, the bad ones. ones. Yeah. Like, how, that's Thor, not a, this is what I mean. Thor: Love and Thunder specifically identifies that he's killing good gods yeah. that help people. Yes. That's what I was trying to get. Well, remember, like, his plan relies on gods being good. He this is why I was asking. Them. This is why I was asking. Right. Like, do we think this guy is lying or not? Because I feel like this is one of those ones. Like, you no, can't admit no. this, even with your political bias, because they make it explicit in twisting. the first opening scene. That's why I'm twisting. You, you, you still... can't underestimate how blinded these people get. I guess, like. Yeah, I, I feel like this is this is the one that's kind of making me question it. Like, is how it do you like, miss this? Like, you're, if you're it, twisting it, then that's just lying, right? He sounds smart, so he must be right. Kind of like reaction that he's hoping for. Well, sure, but he's saying like, is um, he lying when he's making the script? I understand what uh, you mean in like, terms of the the idea that twisting is like it you might get, be you, um, you sort of like on the heels my, of that. We my are, only we ever are, we reference are. for this guy was a video in which he was basically lying about Finn. You just like that's not what happened in the fucking scene. Like you just we, twisted. We, everything we are people that it. take representing the scenes as they happen relatively seriously. I'd say he might not be. He might be like it doesn't fucking matter if I miss a few details or if I say something is X when it's Y. I'm making like a point. Which is pretty most... funny. It's a funny attitude to have as a pop culture detective, you know, yeah. you know? Yeah. to not be that interested it's... in whether you get all the facts right. Well, that's the thing. It's like he's not analyzing what happens in the movies. He's going by by his vibe. Whatever know? interpretation but... he can apply to the scene to fit a narrative that he Whatever wants. he Doesn't felt matter. while watching no. the movie, he's talking about that and how it affects his political views, I guess. Yeah. That seems to be what's happening. Mm. To the suffering of the people they reign over. You announce the winner of the most oh, human yeah. souls sacrificed in the name of a god. Yeah, okay, maybe he's not that great. Yeah, but oh, he's no, a bad guy. Good. This is yeah. well, it's so weird to be like, see Thor highlighting that he's not a good god to prove the gods are bad. It's like, you mean the god? Morally the judging god the other god? that one of the god <laughs> is bad? Yeah. Ugh. The tyrannical status quo that Gore the God Butcher challenges and attempts to overthrow in Thor, Love and Thunder. The only ones who gods care about is themselves. Which he was wrong about. He was wrong. Yep. His plan literally no, relied on the gods saving well, innocent also, people so exactly. that he can fight them. Remember when he tried to kill the little children? Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, no, was he about to talk about the Falcon uh, Winter Soldier and Kali Morgenthau and their flag such smashes? Such an awful villain. Uh, the goal of the Flag Smashers in Falcon and the Winter Soldier is to redistribute food and medicine to refugees. Please don't. Please stop. Oh, is that, okay. Oh, is you that have it? a you oh, have a responsibility to represent this fairly, okay? Let's see if you can do it. Please prevent the reestablishment of national borders and stop mass deportations after the blip. How many times do we have to pay with our lives just to be citizens of this goddamn planet? Oh, he's not oh, gonna... no, he's not gonna mention the fact that they oh, killed okay. innocent people. So, yeah, yeah. They killed a lot of this, people. this is almost like a fucking don't responsibility thing. It's like, so, for those who didn't watch the show or don't care or don't remember, 
she was a fucking monster who would destroy, burn and blow up things in order to make her point. And of course, highlighting all of the issues with destroying national borders is just not something she cares about. As far as she's concerned, less borders the better. Just well, everything remember, will be fixed. her view was that the, that the world was better during the snap. The world was better when well, a lot less people were in it. There's some like basic logistic explanations for why she's a fucking idiot too. Like if you have a giant... Mm -hmm. Let's just say a giant building that's got that that's A, and they're sending things to B, C, D, E, and then all of those big buildings send it to their sub A, A, B, B, C, C, all that stuff. She's like, we're gonna intercept the supply chain from A to A, A, take it all, kill the people there, blow some stuff up, and then basically like sort of distribute that vaguely to some people in our town that we like. You're like, okay, so do you understand that you've destroyed yeah. that chain, you've undermined the entire system, you've made people scared of terrorism, you're gonna have to spend resources in stopping you from doing that again, and, and in favor of what? Highlighting that the world isn't perfect? Of course it fucking isn't. All the senators at the end of that show, this is why it's so badly done, they're trying to explain they're doing what they can. We don't know how to fix the entire world and all of its problems after the blip. You yeah, got this us. Is an unprecedented issue to happen to this. But you know what would help if you didn't just blow up innocent people. That would help. Yeah. Insane. And then yeah, and then Falcon is like, "Don't call her a terrorist. She's only destroying buildings and killing people in the name of her own political gain." People. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't Whatever call her a terrorist. Your goals are, that still makes you a terrorist. What man. is he gonna say about Killmonger? This is what I'm gonna say about like, this wacky like, like, guy. Um, I'm just terrified is what he's going to say. It's going to piss me off. I know it. In Black Panther, Killmonger hopes to use Wakanda's vibranium technology to free African people from colonial oppression all across the globe. When black folks well, started revolutions. I don't even know what that means. Like, yeah, where, like what, what colonies mean? are we talking I'm about black, here? I like, I feel like you're a century or so too late. Well, I mean, I like how in, instead of using the terminology, he's going to invade a bunch of countries. He's yeah, gonna invade a yeah. To be more States. specific, he's gonna plant Dora Milaje and other agents in place to just execute like significant leaders. Remember, it's like the Black Widows. And their kids. What about the Avengers, well, dude? And their kids. Yeah, their and kids. It, 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 he's, Why he's threatening crazy. children, choking old ladies, and he's still supposed to be praised as a. Good but he's not gonna play that happen. part because like, that would make well, it no, a little I, bit awkward. I wouldn't be surprised if he was, and he was gonna say like they had to include this to make him seem insane, even though it completely in, is in line with his plan, which is to obliterate the status quo of every country's politics, which is to kill all of their leaders and their interests. Well, does, by the way, that doesn't that, that doesn't even address. That doesn't but necessarily doing undo the, right the status race, quo, because especially Molly. when you fucking assassinate them, you might just galvanize the entire country to thinking they were right. When this foreign fucking invader kills well, all mean, of our world like, leaders, like, like, what do you think is going to happen? You know, if, you feel like, if, you, if you're, like, in America, and then you're going for, like, a leader, and you kill a bunch of American soldiers in the process, what do you think the American public's going to think of you? I just can't it's imagine wild. what he was thinking in terms of what the Avengers would do, right? That's the big problem. What do you yeah. think's gonna happen, Killmonger? Do you think the Avengers is gonna let this happen? And then he'd be like, ah, see, because the Avengers are the defenders of neoliberalism across the globe. Yeah, yeah just let me kill all world, world leaders. Just let me do that. I'm the right hey, one. Hey, listen, let me look, your look, elected officials. Killmonger is doing this for the right race, okay? His race. I mean, he, they try to avoid saying race in the movie, right? He says people who look like us. That's what he says. Yeah, it's race. Which is a bit awkward. Africans are... No, one, it's, just one, it's just one race of people. It's, it's just, just one, one race. It's, it's, one race. It's, it's all not, a homogenous it's group. The, it's not the second largest continent in the world with a vast array of different countries and religions no. and cultures. Still to this day, life. embroiled in horrific civil wars and border disputes based off of this group and that group and... Oh, but they're all the same color. All right. The excellent commentary. Good job, Killmonger. Very great. Just vote. let him kill everybody for fuck's sake. Okay. okay, yeah, maybe he went a bit too far with the kids, but he, other than the kids, he could have killed everybody. It would have been fine. They never had the firepower or the resources to fight their oppressors. You know how that ends today. As a viewer, you may have even caught yourself nodding along to the villain's big laugh my fucking ass fuck, off. I, I would fucking cut my dick off if I did. <laughs> monologue moron, maybe. but just before you're won like over to their cause they suddenly right decide to oh, murder no. a whole bunch of people okay, well, we'll see out there you can you can point out this is completely me. random but it does go in line with the characters that are portrayed somewhat like i said with killmonger this is in line with his plan killing the the families of the political leaders and well any anyone who's related to them that could possibly go in power in in the form of um monarchies and non just just all all forms of power everywhere get rid of all the systems isn't this in fucking bioshock infinite 
the Vox Populi kill Fink and yeah. his son. I don't think Feminist Frequency were a big fan of Oh, well, yeah, people, <laughs> people got really mad about that. Yeah, that, that was a big fight in Bioshock yeah. Infinite. Yeah, sorry, but uh, the what? thing is, the, a lot of psycho... Revolutionary yeah, psycho revolutionaries will often system? wipe out a family line. That's something they will often do, unfortunately. Yeah, but yeah. that was... Everyone who doesn't a lot about them. it, the, the Vox Populi shouldn't have been written in that way. That, that was uh -huh. a bad on okay. uh, Ken Levine's part. Damn it, Ken. Yeah. okay. I mean, I got my issues because Bioshock Infinite was terrible, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even when it makes no sense for that character. Oh, we're not even going to talk about what makes and doesn't make Wait, sense. Yo, but... you don't give a shit. Yeah. You don't give a shit yeah. about what makes Pop sense. Culture you don't care. Jonathan McIntosh has deduced what Carly Morgenthau's sensical and nonsensical decisions How does this are. Not... I guess every single thing I would cite to support that this is the kind of character she is, he would say also doesn't make sense. Like, remember her attitudes toward Falcon? She just keeps trying to kill him over and over and over again. Yeah, exactly. Yep, and then she killed uh, uh, John Walker's buddy. Having the villain's methods always involve indiscriminate killing. I'm sorry, how was Ultron going to enact his plan of wiping out humanity without wiping out humanity? <laughs> this is not an well, element of his plan that doesn't match. Planets. Uh, oh my god. It's a deliberate decision by the writers. You said we would destroy the Avengers. Oh my god, the way this is framed, that means that he was like, see, <laughs> he was a good guy when he was going to kill all of the superheroes, but he's a bad guy when he goes too far and destroys the world. That's nuts. <laughs> Jonathan, they were fighting for the status quo, they needed to die. Jonathan, you need to think before you write. Like, You're a little a bit, bit of a psycho, more. man. Yeah, he might be a psychopath. Yeah. He might be. You're a crazy guy. guy. When everyone is dead. That is not... One that's designed to make extra sure the audience doesn't end up identifying with the bad guys or their revolution. You identified with these people right before they revolution. killed a person? That's pretty dude. fucked up, my dude. Jesus. You have to, you have, to have some serious uh, introspection there. You gotta fight some demons. Well, sorry, Vulture isn't trying to create a revolution. Yeah. He's supposed to make no, some fucking money. He is that's stealing it. from people to benefit himself. Got a family to raise, man. He's trying to, to pay the bills. He's a he's greedy capitalist dog. Yeah, you could argue he's a worse capitalist because he's not playing by the fucking rules. Well, yeah, he's killing people. Like worse capitalist is that he's a he's a more demonic capitalist. But whatever, man. Like these are all the good guys. They just had those one scenes that threw them off. That was it. They impose struggle and hardship. You know what this is, this this came from, is that they tried to argue these people were good, and then people online were like, what about the part where they kill the babies? And they're like, ugh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> part of the <laughs> hidden political agenda of the Marvel you movies. Human details. Yeah, it's like, fucking it's whatever, they kill a few like... babies, wow, okay. You mean well, they kill enemy soldiers. To, pay <laughs> to make the world a better place, to destroy the status that. quo. It's the Avengers' Some... fault because that's the only language they understand. Uh, can that Nebula ad come soon, please? <laughs> Give me the Nebula ad. Come on. They labeled us as criminals for pushing back. You are criminals. They you labeled fuckers. you as criminals for stealing and then yeah. blowing you horrible people criminals. Up. Yes. Yeah, you kill people, steal people's supplies to feed yeah, the people you think should be fed. That's all you do. You're an you're idiot, naive fuckwit. Yeah. You almost destroyed everything. Thing. And then the one hero who fucking fights a battle oh, for you, you man. try to kill. I what what does he think about the scene where John Walker is trying to save the politicians, and then Carly just actively tries to stop him from <laughs> saving you know, them from falling you know, off? He'd be like, <laughs> "This is a good scene to represent fascism. John Walker is trying to save people who represent a fascist <laughs> regime, and Carly is trying to enact change. And like, Carly is heroically stopping him from doing it. It's, it's just wow. brain rot. You've gone way too Carly far. Carly is not a terrorist, however. You just sit back down." Maybe unread some books. <laughs> some yeah, books have clearly led you yeah, astray. Yeah, you need to have a long shower and just like <laughs> contemplate your demons because you are a psycho. <laughs> but the struggle yeah, is what brings us all together. People who have nothing in common. Up. Hate you. For we are I don't know why okay. they wanted to make this actress happen. She's never been good in anything I've seen her. They I think she's disappearing now, right? I haven't seen her in a while. I think so. She was in Willow. Uh, she was in she this. Was, and she was in else. the solo. Willow doesn't exist anymore, or at least the oh. show. According to my computer, it does, but... I think oh, she's just three never... times she's done, like, a I face reveal thing. According to Disney+, Plus, it doesn't exist anymore. According to Disney+, Plus, it doesn't. I, I, I would normally say how sad, but... Well. <laughs> well. 
Yeah. So someone's the world needs to know. This is like covering up a <laughs> horrific genocide or something. You can't just do that. You can't just kill art like that and then hide it. Yeah, the world leave needs it up. to know of your leave crimes. Leave it the fuck up. One world and one people. The underlying message that emerges from this pattern is as inescapable as it is pernicious. It's the libs. We are being told that any not attempt properly, to fuck. fundamentally transform society is not only dangerous, yeah, it but is downright. dangerous. Of course it's dangerous. Stop but slaughtering the... innocent people. Well, yeah. Even if you think it's right, it's still going to be it's very so funny dangerous. It's so funny because... It's dangerous, potentially. Yeah, yeah, you never know how it's going to go, Panther, necessarily. That is true, what, that's true. Like, he's so fucking wrong, it actually is starting to get painful. Black Panther as a film is about how T'Challa decides that he is understood from Killmonger that change needs to happen and enacts it the correct way by the end of the film. Yeah. But, yeah, but then, then pop culture detective here would say it's not far enough. Well, it doesn't it, like that. That's that's the whole thing. All of the characters, that's all the of these movies, politics. have enacted change. The world changes gradually, piece by piece. And for some reason, like yeah, instead of enough. highlighting uh, the the writing isn't reflecting how much the world should have changed by now, with the interest from the characters and the technology available, especially fucking time travel. Instead of highlighting that, he's instead going for you see the libs. I want you to think that any kind of change is bad. <laughs> like that's what it, it almost, actually is. It almost sounds like he's writing this from summaries of the movies and not the movies themselves. I'm almost certain he's know. seen the them, is, but consumed them at the level of a synopsis. Is. Yeah, he yeah. went in with a very clear political agenda. This is this is ever the, the I would argue this is what we have to avoid as well. When you watch a film, instead of just seeing what you see the world to be in the first place, you try and take it for what it is instead. Avoid those biases. Exactly. They're like landmines. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is an excellent example of what happens if you fail at being critical and you let your biases take over. Textbook, I would say. Like I said, the, is. this is yeah. the best film to represent how wrong he is, and here it is as his visual. Evil. The equating of social justice causes with outright villainy is one of the reasons why the super... It's, it's not even that. Wow. The, the films will say they went way too far. They overcompensated. Uh, if ever it thinks it has, they have a valid point. You know? Which sometimes they don't. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're lying. Sometimes their point is insane. Yeah, exactly. Superhero genre is often accused of leaning conservative. Ideologically. <laughs> is it? <laughs> okay, ACDC. here we go. Okay, all right. Okay. Is ACDC a particularly <laughs> conservative rock band from Australia? Sometimes I wonder how much <laughs> the left want to just submit to the right. It's like, you know what? I am mad. It's, a, it's more of a conservative thing. The conservatives will be more than yeah, happy to yours. take him. They'll you be like, him. sure, yeah, I'm as yeah. but whatever, fine, if that's his point of view. How is humanity saved if it's not allowed to evolve? He's referring to killing everyone. How are you doing this? <laughs> How are you right. Ultron wanted to destroy Liar, the planet. Yeah, he he cut out. He actually cut out the line this because oh, well, the Avengers extinction. That's what he says, and then fucking that's when Thor throws it at him. Is bullshit. Which, this is just liar. Just liar. Just, yeah. I don't. I don't think a little just, liar, dude. Brain rot is just not enough. Is what I'm saying. From like, I can't predict the four minute mark or whatever it is. I just this guy. This is lies, man. <laughs> Oh, poor Ultron. I wish he didn't perish because oh, he, was he was the hero. By Thor. <laughs> As Graeber notes fighter. of superheroes, they remain defenders of no. a legal and political order, which, however faulty or degraded, must be defended. Because the only alternative is so much worse. Not the only alternative, but the current the presented one by um, the villain at the time. How, I mean, yeah, if we have reasonable is, again, villains, quote about... unquote. Is Batman a defender of the legal and political order than when what he is doing no. is vigilantism? Nope. Yeah, that's I mean, we dude, haven't. So Daredevil is an explicit rejection of the legal system. Yeah, if he, yeah. it's one of the things <laughs> to explore with Daredevil. If he believed in the legal system, why would he go out at night dressed like it's, a devil? This, I mean, this is so. Sense. This is so narrow-minded. It's so specifically focused on proving a point that he wants to make. It's got no yeah. interest in representing these films. And these are all from it fucking references we don't even like a lot of the time, anyway. It doesn't apply to some of the most popular characters that you can reference in your head in two seconds. Like Daredevil, like you said. It's just like, why, how could you, like, you're depending well, I mean, on your remember, audience to be completely brain dead. Graver's, Graver's, like, it's about Batman. Like, he's, he's flat out a vigilante. The police chase him in <laughs> a lot of the He's literally anti-law. Yeah. 
Uh, the, you know, political order, you don't easily go with Iron Man. He's in those court cases Iron because Man. they're like, you can't, you can't privatize the fucking, like, the kind of weapons you have. And he's like, yeah, try and mm -hmm. stop me, bitch. <laughs> and Civil War, they, they got told this is the new legal order yeah. and Cap said, nah, I'm not doing that. Hmm. And then, like I said, the only alternative, the language there, it's like, no, it's the presented one at the time. He's going to want to fight against yeah. fucking Ra's al Ghul's goal to blow up Gotham. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Of course he will. He's going to defend against Joker's just just doing crazy shit for shits and giggles. What a, what a nutcase Batman must be to do that. Worse. What a lib. Trust me. Well, what if, what if you had a Marvel movie where in the political system you had a candidate that the superheroes didn't like? But he got elected, and he got put in power, in whatever branch or in whatever position, and that. And then they lived under a political system they probably maybe didn't like. But you know, they still have to defend people. They still have to defend the earth. They're still going to save innocent people, remember, even um, if they're not too keen on the, you know, the president or whoever. The opening of X Men Two, right? Nightcrawler is. Well, he's mind controlled into attacking the president, and the knife mm -hmm. says uh, "mutants freedom now" or something like that, right? I can't yep. remember. Mutant freedom now, yeah. That and so, like cool. the obviously the implication being of what the power of a superhero can be, they can get to the Oval Office and knock out all the security. That seems pretty fucking cool, and it still is to this day. The uh, nature of that is something that this fucking idiot is advocating for, essentially. Like, you need to make some significant difference in this world. You need to change it up. They even have a press conference in the first X Men where they're discussing the abilities and like. Yeah, know, of course, X Men covers this all the time, like uh, how we, and it's all with push and pull. You have to work together. You can't just inflict your fucking interests on everyone else. Exactly, they covered this years ago in the the movies and the cartoons. I'd argue even so, just watching this, this guys be so simplistic in twenty twenty four is like just burning my brain. <laughs> Every time something gets better for one group, it's it worse for another. A cool that's, genius. Uh, not even true, but okay. That's <laughs> not true. No, yeah, it's not, not even true. <laughs> is it? You know what? I Success buy like fucking like a, a six pack thing. of donuts and I provide five to my five friends. It's like, yeah, but you've lost now. You have five less donuts. I'm like, that's okay. Yeah, how <laughs> terrible was it when indoor that. plumbing was invented? Five yeah. groups uh, got better as one group didn't. Mm. That, that's okay. how it goes. According to the ideology of Marvel, then. The status quo is the best we can hope for. No. It's oh, not at all. No, not when heroes are actively not. changing the world for the better. He's already, yeah, how he's do you already have Age of Ultron on that. screen when the whole fucking point of that movie is looking to the future? And how do we make it better? Mm -hmm. I just had an idea on the screen. God damn. It's, the it's world may not be perfect, Age of Ultron. but trying to change it will only lead to catastrophe. Nebula, save us. Um... But this oh, was successful geez. change from Thanos that annihilated everyone. Perspective, yeah. Like, uh, why? This why are we treating killing, we th like killing millions and billions and trillions of people trillions. as we like? Well, it's a change. It's a change. It's a you different know, it shakes idea. Things up, you know, spice a life. This, you know, this this guy A over there, he's gonna build a big old bridge between two places that have hoped to have trade. You're like, that's what idea. What's your idea, Thanos? Kill half of life. That's yeah, one idea. What about you? And it's like, the, I'm going to open a stall that sells vegetables. He's like, all three of you, I hope you really have good luck in changing the world. Vegetables one of you is endlessly healthy. creative. Yeah, one, one of you is really going to change the status quo. And you know what? I hope it works out. Legendary comics writer Alan Moore has criticized the rise of superhero blockbusters. Listen, before you pull out any quote from him <laughs> just gonna he says, warn a, lot he he said he says a lot of crazy shit, shit. He like, a lot of things. saying the trend speaks to a denial of reality and an urge let's see out uh, they seem to speak to some kind of longing to escape from the complexities of the modern world to go back to a nostalgic yes. remembered childhood that seemed dangerous it was infantilizing the population this may be entirely coincidence but in 2016 when the american people elected a national socialist satsuma and the UK voted to leave the European Union. <laughs> Six of the top 12 highest grossing films were superhero movies. Um, <laughs> Not to say one causes the other, but I think they're both symptoms of the same thing. A denial of reality and an urge for simplistic and sensational solutions. Can you say that America's about... Civil War caused Brexit? Why, why wouldn't that be applicable to all uh, action films? 
Yeah. The, Why the superhero movies game. even? Why couldn't it just be? Because like a Is lot it of the just time, because they were pretty popular at that time. I mean, oh, my country elected Trudeau things around things that around time, time, so. I mean, well, but like 2016 was the, wasn't the, the only year world, that uh, they had hyper success, superhero movies, right? No, that's right. Yeah. Like, I, like, I don't. This just seems like he says not to say that one causes the other. It's like, I hope you wouldn't, because that would yeah, be really it's silly. Insanely <laughs> stupid. What a, what a worthless quote. Yeah, there's nothing to work with here. Um, and to be like. What about 2017? You know, 18? Simplistic? What about 2020? Is it simplistic in Civil War? Is that, is that what we call a simplistic solution? It doesn't even fucking get solved by the end. Urge for simplistic and sensational solutions. And he's right. Uh, yeah, well, of course, if you, you agree with you it. Said that, oh, you said man. Batman should be Robin Hood. You also said Batman works within the law. Yeah. <laughs> it's, isn't true. it fucking wild? <laughs> He's like the poster child for being a vigilante yeah. superhero. Mm -hmm. Most of the pressing issues facing our society today cannot be solved by finding a few bad individuals and punching them in the face. Yeah, lucky Obviously. the MCU isn't making that fucking point, is it? Why are we doing this? What's the point of this? Like, uh, uh, yeah. why is anybody even... Come on, Neb Come on Nebula. <laughs> Nebula. Nebula. Let's go. Come Come on. You. Nebula. As cathartic as that fantasy might be. There you so go, let's video pause over. for a moment oh, no. and talk about how social change is actually accomplished <sighs> here in the real world. Violence, say oh, violence. Fuck we shall nice. boldly challenge the status quo. And social change is made when people proactively organize themselves into mass movements. That then agitate and disrupt the status quo. What is that? So, what is that going to look like? In would it be like the, the idea that Tony Stark just I said. like a civil rights? I am to go to protests and he has to organize. I don't know, fucking door knocks. But only for the right causes. <laughs> only for the right causes. I don't know the fuck. Uh, like in the world of the MCU with these films, this is what we were talking about earlier. It's like, what? What are you envisioning? Why would they make the film this? It's, they can barely make money now, as it is. They can barely make money with the films that are, like, the good guy fights the bad guy, which is one of the most, like, just normal sort of well, archetypal narrative structures. It feels like that you bell know, curve thing. Be for them. Um, yeah, how, if there was, if we just said, yeah, the heroes, they're actually horrific totalitarian villains, but at least they're fighting for socialism. That'll make a bunch of money. You know the Wojak, uh, bell curve image? Feels yes. to me yeah, like yeah. the starting figure is just, I like... You know, or, or rather, it, it would be about analysis of why these movies are this way. And I guess the brain dead caveman sort of position I is like the... the explosions. I like the fights. I yeah. Like when they fly around. And go well, no, I was going to go with the, not I necessarily. I like when heroes fight villains. Not necessarily the um the. Can I get this on fucking screen for people? It keeps downloading. Why? Uh, hang on. The, the I, guess I could just fucking you wouldn't you'd be surprised the amount of times a light shot has solved my problems. A light shot is a <laughs> must have. Got to have light shot. Yeah, that's a easy recommendation for everyone. Has an extension. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, I love this image because it applies to so much of thinking in real life. So the point of this is, you come to position A as an idiot, and then you realize when you're getting smarter and across the board, like it's actually position B. But then when you get super smart, you go back to position A. Um, exactly. <laughs> so caveman position of analysis of why this all happens and why it works this way is just they're making really cool and awesome movies that match you know the basic like understanding a, of what things are good yeah. and then I like the, when good fight evil the developed one is like actually they advocate for bad positions and the people don't even realize and they're tricking you and the it's the libs and you got to stop them that's why he's got tears because he's representative of this video and then you go all the way back over to Dude, I think they're just appealing to people who like explosions, really. <laughs> like, they really are. It's, like, it's, it's, it's nothing you need I'm to worry at, about. You don't need to go nuts I'm looking at this. that guy down there. The and I'm like that that you said that perfectly. <laughs> These pictures are perfect. It's a great meme. It's it a really, really, really good, good meme. meme. I like it a He's a better alien than anything that was in the Accolade trailer. That guy on the left. <laughs> I like the guy on the left. He's chill and honest. <laughs> he's funny. He's, yeah, exactly. And he's not pretentious, goddammit. He knows what he is. And the middle guy is just making it. shit up based on his misunderstandings. <laughs> well, and he's crying. Nice. He is crying, all right? Every, he is perpetually in tears. <laughs> this and is his the, mouth looks like that all the time. This is the supplementary meme graph that goes along with the... What? What is the... What's the phenomenon where people start off and they 
in, in, in something and they don't actually know a lot about it and they feel like they don't know a lot about it. But once they start to get a bit of knowledge in it, Oh, they Dunning Kruger. Like Dunning yeah, Kruger. Kruger. Yeah, this is yeah, the supplementary yeah, Dun draft to Dunning Kruger. Yes. Uh, it is kind of supplementary. Um, yes, kind of. Yes, I see what you mean. The people at either ends of the spectrum of knowledge have a pretty accurate <laughs> grasp of how much they know, but people kind of in the middle-ish to lowish middle-ish, they have they overvalue how much they know in that field typically. Oh, I thought uh, I thought the Dunning Kruger was that, like pretty early on is when you are very confident, and then it eventually hits like a pit in the middle when you're actually starting to get good. And you then learn how much you don't know. understanding this something. Yeah, yeah, pretty much that. And then it and then it never gets know. quite as high as when you were hyper confident at yeah, the beginning. Yeah. You're never quite as confident as well, you were at the start. It would re yeah, I assume what Rags is going for is it's representative of the, if you look at these three images, the nature of their expressions, right? First guy's like, I'm smart, I got this. When he, yeah, when, yeah. He, when he absolutely doesn't. Second yeah, guy, oh perfect. god, I haven't got this. This is all horrible. This is what's <laughs> And then third guy, like, yeah. I'm at peace. I understand what yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm at peace with what I am. This it's is why I wear this hood. Yeah, I'm <laughs> smart. I've put in the work. Yeah. I've done my studies. I know what I'm talking about. Oh, it's such a good meme. Confidence. I love it. I love like the, the faces. The subtle difference between guy one <laughs> smile and guy number three smile. Just the, 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 the subtle, the tiny, tiny change in that curve, man. I think someone, <laughs> oh gosh, what was it? I, there was a Helldivers meme someone made with this. I think it was with the... Uh, uh, probably asked with, uh, everybody talking about the, the like Starship Troopers political commentary. Was that? I, was it, like, no, it wasn't any of that. I think it was just like the disposable rockets were on the left and the right and the railgun was in the middle. Right. <laughs> but you start off the uh, game knowing nothing <laughs> with your little disposable rockets and then in the middle you try all the new things and stuff and then, and then at the end of the day the you go get back yeah. to the old reliable good old disposable eat 17. That's how it goes. Yeah, that's the plasma pistol in Dead Space. Or the plasma oh god, yeah, the plasma cut is fucking boss. But if we have to fight again, it'll be to take these steps. These movements apply pressure and raise social costs until the powers that be have no Why you choice but to give like in to how the political so, movements work. Yeah, this point, yeah, the, the Marvel movies. Yeah, the what formatting of this is irrelevant compared to what causes need to be addressed this way in the Marvel universe. Which, to be honest with you, you don't even have a footing to actually address because nobody knows what the fuck's going on in that world anymore. Well, and also, how does he think these protests would change if one of these people had superpowers? Might get a lot more bloody, especially nowadays. Yeah. You see a lot of violent protesting. Public's demands, or be replaced. This is how transformational social progress has always been made. Outside but, of the other but ways, you, you believe you believe that the Marvel movies aren't arguing in favor of social progress. So why would they put this in there? The, I guess, is his you know point I mean? that this would have been in here if they were making a genuine effort, and that's um, what you can tell. Well, I feel like the better point would to make of this as a point would be if you took a story that was advocating for social change, but it presented it in a way that's just not realistic or useful. Well, for you know, me, like did you rack your brain. Have we ever seen this in the MCU? What protest? Something that could at least be considered akin to this in any way. Yes, we have. We have a couple of times. The one that comes to mind first is in Age of Ultron with uh, uh, Maximoff. They, that's where they both first yeah, fired right. on footage, like mm -hmm. they're protesting. And then you have it, uh, isn't yeah. it the, the Ultron bots that get shit thrown at them when they're trying to control the crowd that's from right. protesting? So, yes. I just, I just find it amusing because I'm assuming he's not going to reference that at all himself either. It would be on brand. As Frederick Douglass famously remarked, power concedes nothing without a demand. That's literally not true. Power concedes nothing without a demand. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the first, uh, our first president literally did that. He's like, nope, two terms is good. I'm Break it out, down. folks. Doesn't matter if they apply or not. And that's a good example, actually, actually yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, whenever you come across a quote that's bullshit, you just be like, well, I prefer a more famous quote of quotes is stupid. From, wasn't uh, that the way that it was? <laughs> doctor, like doctor quotes. Until, wasn't it one of the amendments that got passed? Wasn't it like Truman's uh, time? Wasn't that when they passed a thing? Otherwise, it was just you have two terms because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, I don't know when it's. I don't know the year on it, but I don't it think it became the, official policy until. I'm not sure. Until I think Truman. I think so. 
Anyway. When did two terms become law? It looks like it was in 1947. It was passed by Congress. Ratified in the States on February 27th, Yes, that was Truman administration. Yeah, it was yep, Truman. 22nd Amendment. Limits an elected president to two terms in office, a total of eight years. Mm. Is this mm. guy wrapping up with his politics shit, or is this I think so. Uh, that I think fact we, we presents close to something of a... Had. Oh, wait, this is the protest thing. Let's see what he's saying about this. Why doesn't this count? Nothing without a demand. That fact presents something of a problem for the MCU. Because there is no public to speak of. That opinion. There is no public to speak of. You're showing them. Yes, there is. What? What do you think Civil War is if not a demand that the Avengers have oversight? But then some of the Avengers didn't agree with that. For reference to people, like, he's got like two minutes to, because I'm assuming there's an ad in here, so he's got to explain this. Like, he's got barely any time. We are here to help. There are only innocent victims, unruly mobs, and. I'm sorry. (laughs) Unruly mob? So what do you say well, the this public? One was what a, what is the public like? You like well, what do you see people? The they're just victims. They're not when the a public. Bunch of people stand together. If the governments of a whole bunch of democracies present some sort of solution, that's not the public. That doesn't represent the public. That's interest. fascinating. Yeah, no well, remember, every elected official is an expression of the public's will. Just because no. you don't have a mob mm. in the streets, you're right. All those people in power, well, they essentially were all voted not- there. It's not like a, a mob came into the Avengers headquarters and gave them the Sokovia Accords, but it was obviously, in the film's perspective, the will of a good have amount you, of the public. Have you noticed, though, that oh, like he does this the throughout the whole fucking thing, where he'll make a statement that's definitive, and then you'll throw in a caveat that cancels out any and all possible counter-references, but like in a really weak mm-hmm. way. It's like, the public never raise any kind of attention to this. You're like, what about all the times that they do? It's like, well, yeah, but every time they do, it's either a mob or right. a victim. Yeah, I, every time it supports the hidden politics of Marvel movies. That's insane, man. It's like, yeah, of course there's no fucking yeah. proving you wrong. You, you. It's like if I said the whole world is made of cheese, except when it isn't. I, I think he must have just conditioned his audience to be able to accept these things. Like he knows he's bringing this. They, this is what they want to hear. So it doesn't the facts don't really matter? He's been able to get away with this because this is like. This is shockingly similar to the video I was describing of just like this is all this guy does, just twist shit up to incorporate his politics. And of course, godlike super beings who monopolize power. I mean, it's good that you showed so Captain you... Marvel, because that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously, <laughs> godlike be super beings. Power. How can you demand that the Avengers, like, how can you really demand it? Like, if they want to do whatever they want to do, they just will. Well, wait, you highlighted right? the, the funny part again where he's like, yeah, godlike person with infinite power, do what I want. I know, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought we said that they don't relinquish power because there's no actual way to get them to stop they're they're too powerful there's nothing well how does vision relinquish his power what does that even mean it just means <laughs> you know? it's so crazy because like a lot of all the comments people, he makes in civil guess, war that are so introspective about the nature of his own power why he well, stays out of the fight for so there long a, there's a stunning lack of civil war clips in this uh mm. in this video it's almost conspicuous how few civil war clips are in this curious <laughs> And if the public does not exist, then what Graeber- But they do, you crazy do. womble. They do, what are you doing? And they present an opinion on the affairs of the MCU. Calls constituent Come power on, Nebula. also cannot exist. We're then left with a situation where a small group of powerful, unelected- Look for you, Civil War. It's Civil yeah. War. Did but Superman we're not gonna talk about it. and a few superwomen hold all the cards. Why didn't you just say superheroes? So this film is explicitly about how they do not hold all the cards, that these this group is even having this fight because of a different group of people who hold power. Mm-hmm. That's because right. Because they're willing because it, one of the groups is willing to submit to that other person, even though they technically don't so, have power. Well, it's fucking I mean, funny that we the pretend. The majority of the people on frame right now get arrested by non super people yeah. because the non super people have said that what you were doing we don't like. Well, look, they, terrible you know, to, I love how brazen we are down, with the notion more. that we can just reject the UN and reject the world. We're like, yeah, we can we can just inflict our fucking shit on all of it. Like, you know, Captain America, he's he's pretty strong, but if the like the military try to stop him, they're probably gonna, actually. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hi, would you mind taking a picture with us? Oh, that's not the public, that's a victim or a mob. Sure. The only role left for the citizens of the MCU is in deciding which powerful super being to worship. I'm 
like they would in real life. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, like I mean, like that we, would happen. It's funny you use the word game. worship when he's been spending this whole video talking about how some of the villains are actually pretty cool, though. You know what I mean? Like you could just switch it out for appraisal or love or like or interest or appreciate. Yeah, worship is a strong word, but yes, people would appreciate in the same way that people like and respect and appreciate great figures in history mm -hmm. or in present day. Yeah, this is absolute yeah, horseshit because he's been doing the exact same thing and he's criticizing the world for doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my vote is on show you. Oh, Boom! Play with this guy. Yeah, he's a big fan of Tony he's Stark. He's a snake. Yeah, yeah just that's, like people that's bad. nowadays are big fans of like specific celebrities. Classic like neoliberal Daddy storytelling. Uh, it's pretty neoliberal. True. Come on, In Nebula, let's go. Way the public is stripped of any power and reduced to passive fandom. Yeah, except all the times like, they're not explicitly just. I love how you're fandom, showing clips of a fucking case. fan meetup for for superheroes. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty that's funny. That's just stupid. Mm. I mean, the the Hulk imagery he just showed us, that was all people appreciate him as a fucking warrior, like, in an alternate culture. It's not even, like, how can that even count? Yeah. Whatever this shit, from that's Ragnarok, not yeah. That's, yeah, not that's a planet with a completely different society. And they're worshipping him because he's a fucking fighter. Liar. It's just, like, he's boxing at that you're point. So, oh my god, you're so right, I just agree. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it'd be like saying, that, you know, like, people... People worshipping, like, I don't know, like, the, the Yankees or something. Yeah. It's like, it's like, you mean people being fans of a sports team? <laughs> They're watching okay. gladiators yeah. fight each other yeah. in an alternate and crazy culture, of course. It's yeah. Hulk, not Banner being, like, worshipped on Earth by, like, you know, Earthlings. But it's, it's meant to be, fucking... like, it's, but again, he's trying to make the border point of RC. The whole point of these films is to condition you into believing that you can't uh. achieve shit. Might as well bow down to your corporate masters or something. Even though Ragnarok's uh, built on the idea that Hulk yeah, yeah. ran here because he was afraid of his impact on e Earth. Exactly. I made that point like, mm -hmm. like two hours ago. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. power, doesn't, yeah. Yeah. Just, power yeah. doesn't step down. Power doesn't step that, down. That's right. It's the first time he's destroyed something or gone nuts based on oh. like uh, his own rage. I think that's interesting, like in the fact that he made that choice. But this fucker is not going to talk about that. Yeah, Public is stripped not. of any power and reduced to passive fandom. They reduce. And that means there's simply no way to achieve the kind of fundamental transformation that's necessary to turn the planet into an equitable or sustainable place to live. Is he referencing that this Dr. is what that is? That this this world in Multiverse of Madness has achieved that? We don't know anything about this world. No, we don't. It's just weird fucking flowers grow. Well, we know as far as well, as far as we know, this could be inside of a hero. dome, a massive dome, mm -hmm. uh, outside of oh, which notice. there's a wasteland. Everyone's wearing gray. Yeah. Yeah, fuck that. Mm-hmm. I don't like this that. This is the Illuminati world, and the Illuminati are horrible. Yep, they're evil. Uh, they're very evil. So it's free in most universes, actually. Isn't that so fucking weird, though, that everyone wears gray and it doesn't get addressed? I didn't even. By the way, that. our world has free food. What are you fucking talking about? No, she's I work a dumbass. Every Saturday, she's an absolute fucking dumbass. It's like dumbass. literally free food. She's it wasn't free. Right, she stole it. Yeah. <laughs> also, she stole it. Yes. Yeah. It's weird. You guys have to no, pay but... for it. Again, I'm not suggesting the Avengers are wrong. Really? Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point of this fucking video then? What do you want? Stop He's making them. That... It's not bad to save the planet. <laughs> Again, I'm not suggesting the Avengers are wrong to stop megalomaniacal conquerors or roll back the apocalypse. You should already realize that the fact you have to clarify that is, is evidence yeah. that your yeah. script is in trouble. Yeah, man. This Hello. is him going Hello. over the script and realizing, you know, this is kind of fucked. Maybe I, I need, need to clarify. <laughs> Mass murder is not exactly that. right. <laughs> we all do re we all do re -clar re clarification lines, but it's not because your video's fucking nonsense and you need to fucking, like, you know. But you've driven yourself to defending, like, <laughs> killing everyone. You're like, oh, boy. Well, yeah. The big problem that he's had is he's, he's created a scenario, like, th the thesis of his video has to ignore that in all of these situations, the heroes are trying to stop villains who want to kill people, generally. They want to kill people either discriminately or, very or willing to, like, yeah. mm -hmm. on massive numbers. Uh, for unjust causes, <laughs> like the, the massive destruction, and then he has to keep acknowledging it's like, hey, look, it, it doesn't fit. Like these films aren't as there's the hidden politics. It's just they're just fucking movies where the heroes punch the bad guys, and there's explosion, they fly around, and occasionally they have something a little bit more to say. 
Obviously, that's the moral thing to do within the narrow context of these stories as they were. That's written. right, but the context is not. It's, yeah, well, see, I mean, that's, if you're gonna that's if you're gonna, gonna admit that, right you there. have to admit everything else that and comes with it. All the other context, you can't just be like, well, to be fair, I guess they do have to kind of kill the mass murdering psychopath. Mm. He's it, right now, though, he's showing a scene that granted it's like it's an artificial depiction within the film. But the scene that's being represented there is Steve Rogers going to save a bunch of people from a like a World War Two prison camp. Like, well, why is this him doing something wrong in any way? Because it's the status quo for people to not well, be. He's starting to admit that. The war. Yeah, I guess they are right to do what they do within the narrow context that they are provided, which is still. Not something he's mostly acknowledged anyway. There's so many parts of the context he's not, like, he's just ignoring. That's him admitting, admitting what that I this video's nonsense to me. Like, he just, it, you wanted to say all your political crap, but then you have to add this in, because it's a bunch of fucking, none of it. Is that, that line was for anyone who, like, said, wait a minute, and actually listened to what he had to say and thought about it. I'm arguing, the rest is that the... Absorb it. Mm. The looping story formula underpinning Marvel's billion dollar media empire leaves us with a bleak, oligarchic worldview. I have successfully. No, it leaves us with a, a world of existential terror and dread. I was gonna say, he's... that any day yeah. my dimension could be snuffed out and trillions would be destroyed. Mm -hmm. There's directions. Countless multiversal timelines would just cease to exist. Yeah, there's directions to take this that are representative of the reality of the MCU world, but he just wants to make it political. Yeah. And it's funny because you'd be like, is it not political when the whole world is going to get sucked into oblivion? You're like, well, I guess so. <laughs> it's not a, it's yeah. not a policy I like, but not in the way that I'm saying he is. He's trying to make it about his own brand of shit. We privatized world peace. Where might makes... You mean the movie where he's like proven to be inadequate in that notion from the beginning to the end? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. And also it's like really early on in his major arc, practically fighting himself by the time we get to Civil War. Well, it's a bleak worldview, unless you happen to be a member of the ruling class. Oh, say you should need to be a member of Nebula. Oh Come on. Oh my god. Come on, Nebula. Like those who own or control Sex. media conglomerates. Like those who own or control Nebula. Come on. <laughs> Unlike YouTube, so to fight back against YouTube... Just yeah. To the... For them, a worldview promoting the status quo is probably quite comforting. It's a towel. But for everyone else... But for the Nebula. rest of us, when we walk into these movies... <laughs> We are transported oh, yeah, to a universe over. where the mere idea of challenging systems of power. No, I, I just like I just don't want to hear nah. your fucking dog shit politics all over my entertainment everywhere I go. Well, I just want to go to a movie and see some fun this and some fun that. I want to see a Godzilla. Uh, he's saying that anyone who challenges anything about any system is like beaten down and showed to be wrong. It's not even true. On the okay. fact that superheroes are going beyond the conventional like law enforcement, already evidence that the system itself doesn't have a way to deal with these people or creatures or whatever they are. Well, how does he come to terms mm. with the fact that, uh, hate him or love him, that's what Trump did. He was like a super subversive slash crazy wild card thrown into the political system that shook up the establishment and like half of the American parties. Like, yeah, he's, like if, if are you, one would I assume admit he the doesn't approve of him. The machine Donald Trump certainly changed the status quo, but he's never going to be in favor. That's the thing. That's what this all comes down to. It's not about changing the status quo. It's changing anything doing to, to closer to what he wants, yeah. Because it sounds more defensible well, when you simply want to say, like, there is a, a negative nature that's, a, that's, that's occurring and we need to do what we can to move past yeah, it, but it, never it. naming it specifically because it's just what he wants. Yeah, the hidden politics in Marvel movies, Defenders of the Status Quo is a better title than Why do Marvel movies not support my worldview? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> working to change the Working to change the world automatically makes you a villain. Yeah, that's just dumb no, as fuck. That, Definitely. The thing that automatically makes you the villain is when you just kill Remember, innocent um, people. That's, uh, that's generally the Remember, binding element of all the villains there, in the MCU. There are characters he's just not addressing, like T'Chaka, who are actively trying to change the world in a different way, and yeah. you know they get killed in a very tragic scene. Like mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not a villain, you idiot. You're just talking about all the, the elements, the characters in the worlds that are just not, you're not addressing any of the ones that are trying to help. Like, what about Odin when he made his significant change with uh, Hela, right? Like, he decided to alter all of that for the better of, like, all the realms and stuff. He's like, that doesn't count. Like, okay. You just run through all the stories, find all the side characters who are doing things that aren't necessarily uh, pushed back on, that are generally good. You're just like, we're just not going to talk about those ones. We'll only talk about people like Loki and Thanos. Like, yeah.
Uh, Those ones. Uh, they were just trying uh, to change the world, man. And Killmonger. I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into the meaning of oh, the bigger. And uh. messages in the MCU. Now, if you like these kind of long form critical video essays, man, he makes a lot of money critical. on Patreon. Critical. I'm telling you, man. Someone ought to someone ought to redistribute his uh <laughs> Please consider <laughs> going to Patreon. I am man, get going, bud. Patreon to help Iron fund man, the project yeah. there. I've also left a link to PayPal and a wish list below if you prefer. You, you get capitalizing, buddy. Because now, everything people on this are channel retarded. is 100% funded by viewers Sarah like G, me. Sylvia no S, ads, what is wrong with y'all? Like, no sponsorships <laughs> yeah. and no pay. Emma! Yeah. So anything you can give Billy is Steel, very cool. Wait, is he not on Nebula? Very much appreciated. I will see you all again very, yeah. very soon not. for another video essay. Get this man this one on colonialism screen. in modern board games. Jeez, colonialism in modern board games. We are truly the scourge of our age. Oh my age. god, that's perfect. <laughs> this oh, one no. on colonialism oh. in modern board games. That's so fucking <laughs> funny. God, what a fucking loser. <laughs> colonialism <laughs> in modern board not even Not even all board games, just modern ones. play a goddamn board game without being lectured by some fucking lefty about colonialism. Settlers of Catan told you that settling is good, expanding your territory. Oh, man. The tragedy oh, of droids and everyone needs a moment. Oh, my God. Terrible. Awful. Stop. Awful. What a, what a shit to your video. Oh, my God. Ooh, that, that was, was rough. Awful. Fucking terrible. I was ready for that. Times. I got a oh. headache. Yeah. <laughs> that was pain, man. Dang well, that man. about wraps it up, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yes, it does. <laughs> I need to go take a nap. Before we go, Jedi Brooks, why don't you tell everybody what you're up to when they can find you? Oh jeez. Um trying to get back to slightly longer form videos. I um been working on this MCU video for quite a while now. The top five top about five, the status quo. To top five status quo <laughs> in the MCU. <laughs> top five obliterated MCU characters. We've gone through a lot of them. Like this was definitely a good like refresh for certain things. It just pissed me off all over again. And um me and Mark, we're gonna be doing some work soon. He's helping me out with the thumbnails and I'm yeah. helping out his wife with the editing. Oui. You should be able to, yeah, yeah, he makes uh, very funny edits. Yes, yes. I, I, it's a clip of um her first time playing Nightingale, which we ended up being entertaining, and then uh, Hell Riser, Hell Divers with her and Az and uh, Quarter Black Jarrett. So just a few things are in there. I'm also thinking of another um channel idea. It's going to be like um classic cocktails and media inspired drinks. I recently took like a mixology course, like studying for it for like over the last year, but right, just trying cool. to incorporate that over oh, the next certified while, alcoholic. So. Yeah, mm. no, no, no. Got a big ass, but yeah, Mark's supposed to come by for a drink. I'll show, I'll show you soon, and then we'll go over some ideas. But yeah, like I said, yeah, just let me know when you got time. some free time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, that'll be up for now. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mark the cyborg. What are you up to? Hi, I guess I'm on Sundays at 11 a.m. Eastern, or I think it will be 11 a.m. again once Germany goes ahead in time because daylight savings is the worst. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a show called Metals Forge that I'm the co-host of, and um, yeah, in the, my off time, I, I stream video games, and because this is the future, I guess I don't know what I'll be playing, but Helldivers is a pretty safe bet because that, that's, that game's a lot of fun. I feel like I will be playing it in the future. Yeah. Well... Awesome. Uh, Rags and Frank, anything you guys want to mention before we head off? No, not right now. Nothing to say. You know the deal, just working, out in the way, working, working, working on good old Halo. As am I. Well, I hope you enjoyed yeah. this very special offline made online episode, those who are listening to it on this fine Saturday, whenever that Saturday may be. Thank you so much for, for keeping company, and we shall see you on the next EFAP-related thing, whenever it may be. Bye-bye! Yeah, goodbye, everybody! Yeah, everybody, see you later! Bye! See you later! <laughs>